Do you know, I've had, had a wink of sleep. What are you going on about? He's landed on his feet. Landed in jail, more like. So what? We wrote his own references. <sighs> Forgery. Forgery, that's what it is. No, give over. It's just like you ringing old, just saying you're a bit bilious, isn't it? Oh, don't mention Oldsworth to me. I've been burning my bridges in bundles of ten. Look, Vera, for once in your life, would you take a chance? Look, it's Nutsford, it's cushy, it's driving a big Merc. They've seen us with suits. Yeah, well, the staff's very hard to come by. They're always telling you that. Probably you know. won't even read his references anyway. It's not reading them that bothers me. It's when they start checking up. That's when we're done for. Look, Josh, will you tell her there's no what they can do us for? No. Well, I don't think they would, but they could. They definitely could. What? Well, <laughs> obtaining money by false pretenses. I mean, when you touched them for your expenses, that's where you went wrong. Oh, I'm going to phone them. Where's that number? No, no, no. Wait, 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 Vera, Vera. Vera, think, will you think? I am thinking. I'm thinking where we're going to end up. Why was it a good idea yesterday and it's not a good idea today, eh? Because it was never a good idea. Oh, no. It was always deception. Vera, Vera, no. Vera. Stop. Stop. Shh. Hello? Oh, is that Mrs. Maxwell Glover? Oh, is Mrs. Duckworth here? Look, I'm ever so sorry, but we won't be able to set that job. I know. I know I'm upset. Well, my husband's upset. It's just that, what well, we've had a bit of a family crisis, you know. So if you could send his references back. Well, they're no good now, are they? There's no point in checking on his previous employers, is there? Oh, well, yeah. Well, if you could send them back here. Uh, yeah, we're still in Coronation Street. Thanks. That'll feel very well. What do you want me to do? Write a note to your teacher. I just can't seem to wake up. Angie cannot come in today because she hasn't finished hibernating. Hey, I see. People think Toss is up very bright and smart enough to come up with hibernating. Well, I don't like to tell you this, but it's May and the tortoises are springing about eight feet off the ground. Oh, I was just wondering if there were any chance of a lift. Yes, Vera, I'm nearly ready. Come oh, in. Tala. Well, to be honest, I, I wanted to have a little word with you, don't we? You know. Oh, I. Yeah, well, I've had a bit of a spat, you know, with Oldsworth. I know, Vera, I know. Well, hey. Well, I, I, I hope uh, you don't think I random me noticing it out like that. Vera, when you're near enough to tell your branch manager where he can stuff his job and to ask the nearest monkey for more precise details, I think you'll find the niceties of handing in your notice would have been waived. Well, I would end my tether, you know. Oh, I've had that much on my mind. And, as it looks like I'm the nearest monkey, I take it, if asked, you don't want to pack your job in. Oh, you're a good lad, Curly. He is, though, isn't he? Well, Vera, I'll do me best, but for all I know, he's probably got your cards ready for you now. Oh, God. Look, he wasn't very chuffed, you know. Mm. Um, well... <laughs> Come through, we're, uh, we're just... Uh, this is my wife, Bet. Uh, this is uh, Mr... Uh... Waring. Ah, yeah, he's a reporter from the Gazette. Oh, very nice, love. And you've come to watch me choose wallpaper? <laughs> we had a tip-off, and it makes a change from watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, uh, I mean, if you'd given us warning, I'm sure Councillor Roberts would have been delighted to be here. Oh, I didn't realise the election was already over. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> a slip of the tongue. Well, he was in the past, and he will be again. Oh, yes, with every confidence. Come Thursday, they'll be voting Roberts. You mark my words. You've more faith in the democratic process than your candidate, then? I don't know why you say that. I hear he's told one of his tenants to take down a poster for one of his opponents. Now, wait a minute. What's this one of his tenants? Don't try and make it out he's some sort of bloated capitalist. He's only got the one tenant over his shop. And but... ordered him to take down a poster, or else, is what I'm told. No, no, something or nothing. I mean, it's hardly worth mentioning. Giving him notice to quit? Now, I don't know where you've heard that from, but there's no truth in it, I'm sure. Oh, I heard it from Mr Barno. Ah, ah, well, I mean, uh, you must know there's a peculiar sort of relationship there. Him being the ex-husband, you know, it's all a bit... Uh... Complicated, <laughs> to the point of being fascinating. That's why I'm asking you to shed some light, Mr Gilroy. Uh, well, I, I don't know that uh, I'm not... Look, I advise you to choose your words very carefully. I was. I was carefully avoiding the phrase, threatened to evict him. I'm sorry, I, uh, I won't be drawn. I have no comment to make. The words threatened to evict and no comment make a fairly loaded combination, Mr Gilroy. Unfairly. Unfairly loaded, I would say. Now, look, I'm perfectly happy for you to see the candidate uh, this evening, if you care to hold your fire till then. As far as leaflets are concerned, we've pretty well coloured in all the squares and joined up all the dots. And Percy's finishing off this morning. He's doing from Baker Road on and then Hammond Road as far as the bridge on Albert Road. 
<laughs> the other side of that, and he's leafleting the next ward, but give him his due, he is tireless. Well, we always knew he was tireless. We've just found a use for it, that's all. <sighs> Question is, what am I going to do with my energies today? Nothing much is my advice. I think Alf's making a fair job of demolishing his own campaign. <laughs> Couldn't just give him a little extra shove. Do we need to? One woman followed him halfway down Gas Street, I believe. Her shouting she was a single parent and him shouting back she wasn't. She was a widow. <gasps> well, oh, a vote for Roberts is a vote for family life. <laughs> Don't be goaded. Don't stoop. Sweetness and charm, even if it sticks in your throat. Sweetness and charm and knocking on doors. Yes? It's a public liability. It's ours, it is that. What? The springs on that letterbox are far too strong. Nearly had my fingers off. You were? I mean, there's a post office. I'm complaining to you about that. I mean, it's almost torn of blood. Look at that. You some kind of nutter. There's no need to take that tone. I'm just putting it out for your own good. Paddle your backside, will you? Now, I take exception. I mean, you don't have to use your own letterbox, do you? Other people do. Well, nobody asks you to, so on your way, cos I'm on nights, me. While we're about it, I've stuck two together in there, so if you don't mind, you can give me one of them back. You're an head case, you, you know that. You'll come back and you'll be a stretcher case. Has he seen you yet? Who? That reporter fella. What reporter? Oh, thank God for that. Only they've got hold of the fact that you said you're going to kick Ken Barlow out. Got hold of oh, what? Over the poster business. Now, come on, is there any truth in it? Did you say you were going to chuck him out? Well, I don't know. I said all sorts of things oh, to him. Come on, I'll switch this on. You're Look, not thinking, man. He did a dirty great poster saying, Bought Barlow right over my shop window. said you got aerated about it. Well, naturally I did. Yes, well, that's just what they wanted, isn't it? Now, look, I've got that reporter coming round to the Rovers tonight. Now, you're going to tell him that it's all a load of nonsense put out by your opponents and you never said any such thing. Look, do you mind if I tell him what I want to tell him? Do you mind? Look, Alfred, there are two things that can make you unelectable. One is the use of the word eviction, because for some strange reason, the voters don't seem to like it. Yeah, what's the other? The other's your agent retiring the day before the poll. Now, I mean it. See Ken Barlow tonight and make your peace with him. Or else. Come in. Uh, Mr. Holdsworth, I wondered if you could spare a minute to have a chat with Mrs. Duckworth. Mrs. Duckworth? It might not take a minute to say what I have to say to Mrs. Duckworth. Yeah, well, before you have a word with her, she did uh, lose her mother not so long ago and she's under pressure and she has expressed to me the sincere wish to make her apologies. Well, if she's minded to give me some assurance about her future conduct, I might just be interested in listening, yes? Well, I'm sure that will be forthcoming. She's just very worried about her future. Shall I bring her in? Why not? <clears throat> Vera? It's about yesterday, Mr. Allsworth. I, I weren't myself, you know. Oh? I thought you were very much yourself. Very much the Mrs. Duckworth that I've come to know until now put up with. Excuse me. Yeah, well, you do an apology off me. <laughs> oh, it's not me. It's not me, Mrs. Duckworth. All I require is an explanation and, and certain assurances. But when you go around expressing contempt for the job that you're lucky to have, you're expressing contempt for your fellow workers who are doing the same job and gladly. Not to mention the others outside who would be glad of a chance. You owe them an apology, and a grovelling apology at that. But it is my unpleasant duty to accept on their behalf. I can't tonight, not really. Why not? I've told you, I'm getting my photos done. This photographer, just how legit is he? What do you mean, he's a photographer? You know what I mean, Raquel, and if you don't, well, I'm coming with you. 
He's a photographer. And I want to be a model. Oh, yeah, that's great. Well, he... then, people are going to take photographs of me. Yeah, well, not just you, though. Of course it's just me. Well, probably you and a few other things, like clothes, for instance. Oh. Well, you don't think he'll ask me to take my clothes off, do you? He's a photographer. He's nothing but a well-equipped peeping Tom. Norman, he's a professional. He squints at girls all day long through a camera. <sighs> oh, is that all photographers do? Don't trust him, Raquel. He wants to sell you your body to Rupert Murdoch. It was what you said, Al. You said those words. Yeah, on the spur of the moment, maybe. Yeah, and cast your mind back. It's not the first time that you've said it. And you have been known to throw out a tenant or two. Well, I don't know what you're trying to drag up. Well, you were seen throwing their stuff out of the first floor window. Well, that's got nothing to do with it. Look, let's stick to what we're talking about, shall we? Which is the fact that you said, I either take it down or I go. Well, if I did, I would take it too far. Ah. Yeah, and you talking to your pal on the newspaper, so were you. Well, I was in that business long enough to know a good story, Alf, and you offered this on a plate. It was irresistible. Look. I'm withdrawing anything I said about you quitting. Now, are you withdrawing anything you said to that reporter pal of yours? I think that's reasonable. Uh, no, no, I don't think it is. Oh, come on, Ken. I don't want to fall out with you or anybody. Look, you don't want your name in the newspaper, do you? You're a school teacher. It wouldn't be right. So I agreed. On what? Well, no more nonsense. Look, I have apologised. Let's start from square one. No more nonsense, right? All right. <laughs> Oh, is it, Jack? Is it Paul's nan? Uh, no, no, Vera. It, it's the police. They're, they're looking for a Mr and Mrs Duckworth. Oh, this is Mr and Mrs Duckworth. Oh, These yes. two. Thank you. So, that's the father-in-law, sort of, you know. I see. Is your father-in-law you're staying with? Have well, you got a warrant? Yeah, ask him if he's got a warrant. Just keep out with this one, Paul. No, we, we both live here. It's our house. Really? Well, must have been some confusion. Well, if you could just tell me what you were doing between about 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock this afternoon. Well, we were... Well, we'll have been at work. But she's very highly thought of at work. Keep out of it. I, I work at supermarket, you know, better buys. And, uh, sir? The, hold on, I work at the pub just down the road. The road's return, anybody will tell you. And you were there this afternoon, two to three. Oh, aye, right. I say nothing, you're entitled to a solicitor. Keep out of it. Right. You know why I've called on you, don't you? I knew it. I flaming knew it. Do you know, I've never done out wrong in this life. Well, I haven't anyway. Oh. Most I've ever done is steam a stamp of an envelope. I mean, that's no, is it? Here, here, thirty pound ticket. No. What's this? Go on, take it. That's what we, that's money we took off. No, no, come no, on. no. Come, on, come on. You can look, boss. You can see how she is. I mean, she's very upset. I mean, okay, I'm the villain. It was, it was my idea, but come on, fellas. I'm not exactly Jack the Ripper, am I? How long do you think I'll get for this? I well, can't say, can I? Don't know your form or nothing. Could be looking at six months. Oh. You could be looking at six years. Oh, six years. God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right. Well, it's obvious you're working with somebody else. Make it easier for you if you make it easier for us. Are you going to tell us who? Yeah, dead right. Yeah, it was him. Me? Him. Yeah, hey, him, wait, him, wait, because wait, he knows wait, all yeah. the tops and what yeah. they say, where they live and what they do. Yeah, it's him. Him. Do you mind telling me how old you are, sir? I'm 72, come September. Well, you're obviously very... Uh, well, lieth for a man of your vintage, sir. Well, I've looked right after myself, you know. Getting in and out through pantry windows like that. I was fairly certain we were looking for a youngster. Oh, no, he, he walks in and out a door like everybody else. Hang, hang, about, hang about here. What are we confessing to here? House in Nutsford was burgled this afternoon. House you've recently paid a visit on, saying you were applying for a job. Oh. At least you and Ken are civil again. I mean, that's good. Yeah, but he gets right up my nose. Is that blooming superior? You think he's superior? I do not. Yes, you do. If it was only his opinion, you'd laugh. I mean, Annie Walker used to think she was a step above a duchess. It didn't bother you. It's because he's got the education. I mean, who do we know that's educated? Well, he's not that smart, cos I know where the reporter is. He doesn't. Oh, well. I do, don't. Uh, give us a don't. packet of strong men's oh, gloves. Right. So, Glasnost, is it? Is that what it is? What is? Well, I see it's back up there. Bought Barlow in one window, bought Roberts in the other. Tribute to democracy, is it? He's never put it back up. That two fit. We agreed. Ow. I said to him, put the. Ow. 
I didn't mean this nonsense sorted out. We're back exactly where we started. Well, you are not going up there taking it down. There'll be ructions. Now, just forget it. Leave it alone. I will not. You are not going up there, Alf. You are not going into that flat. You've no right. You know that. Now, look. He's got a post on the inside. I'm having one on the outside. I mean, it's my property, isn't it? Oh. Now, who's got a ladder? Who's got a ladder round here? Hi. I have Oh, shall I move some of this stuff? No, no, you're all right. Well, I'm up to my eyes in it. Yeah, yeah, carry on, carry on. I want to have a really amazing portfolio. I'm redoing some of my working sketches to make them a bit more spontaneous. I want them to look at it and think, yeah, this girl's really got it. <sighs> How do you become a photographer? Huh? Well, she's having her photos took tonight. She thinks she's going to be a famous model. Her head's full of it. Full of it. Well, I hope she's right. It's just that... Just? Well, you know, this modelling world, it's full of beautiful people. Flash blokes with Porsches. I can't see old Curly's photograph taking much time in the locket, can you? I suppose you'll blame me and all. You see, there you go. You didn't say no, no. She'll think you're wonderful, Norman. Look, there's a lot more to being a model and getting your photo took. Anyway, there's plenty of really attractive people who just aren't photogenic. So there's still hope. Oh, she's photogenic. I'm sure she is. It's just that... Well, I don't want to be disappointed, you know. It's just... I just hope the photographer comes down with a, a case of shingles, that's all. Well, we just thought it'd be a nice day out, you know. Your idea of a nice day out, is it? Applying for a job? Well, we never thought we'd get it. I mean, we, we would like to live out there, you know, I mean, just to sniff the air, you know, because I do tend to be a bit bad in the chest, you see. So when they offered you the job, you were a bit... We were taken aback, yeah, yeah. But you see, we'd lied. We didn't think they were out wrong in it. We just thought it were a bit of fun, you know, but, well, it just shows you we shouldn't have lied. So this lad here did you a bit of copper plate. He must have been a scholar, Dad. I don't see much handwriting like that. Well, that's very nice of you to say that. Uh, well, we were taught handwriting in our day, you know. We got our knuckles wrapped if we didn't get the loops all the same. And you, you know? got a bit worried and rang them up and talked yourself out of a job. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I may or may not call on you again. Probably only if I get uh, a bit depressed, like. Because you can always do with a laugh in a job like this. Oh, any time you're passing. And don't go flashing money at CID officers, love. You want to give it back, you give it back. You talk nicely, you might still get the job. I can't face them. Well, they didn't want to believe it was you. Said you looked so honest. Salt of the earth was the phrase they used. I can't go there again. No, I'll send him money. Look at the time. There's no sign of him. Well, you're not exactly mowed down, are you? No, but I mean, Alex in there, no use at all. It's all this election. He's having kittens. You can go off democracy, you know. Hey, you want to get him together with Mike Bowen? He'd have it abolished altogether if he could. Oh, heck. I don't think you're supposed to be in here. Why? What's wrong? Well, Alf's coming in a minute. Oh, well, apart from the fact that he's a, a hypocrite and a liar, I've got nothing against him, but don't worry, I won't tell him here. Well, we'll see who gets talked tomorrow, won't we? Ivy, if I promise not to campaign in here, will you? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. He'll, uh, he'll be here in a minute. No, like I was saying, you know, what the press should be going for is all this corruption, backhanders, all the ins and outs, just a bunch of it. I'll tell you the story I'm always on the lookout for. Sex scandal at the town hall. No, no. There's one story. Eric knows what it is. It'd make you, absolutely make you, worldwide. Never mind Woodward and Bernstein. <laughs> This'd be big, and it could be round any corner. Oh, is it, uh, is it political or what? No. Dog with two tails. Yeah. If you ever see one, call me, day or night. I dream, dream of meeting a dog with two tails. Serious? Uh, mm. Big money. Oh, like, like I say, he'll be, he'll, be, he'll be here in a minute. His wife just phoned up to say that he'd gone to borrow a ladder. <laughs> Don't know why. I'll give him another ring, haven't I? <laughs> 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 
Where have you been? Never mind where I've been. Well, you've got no head for height. They're waiting for you in there. Yeah, well, look, I just want to get my thoughts together. Give us a pint. I'll take it through with her. Yeah, I'll have a gin and plenty of tonic. And I'll be here when you've done, right? Hey, my hair's not sticking out again, is it? No, no, you've beaten it into submission. What time do you call it? You'll never believe me. Don't try me till I ask a pint for help. Well, actually, I've got a perfect alibi. I've had the police at our house. You're my alibi for them, they're my alibi for you. Sort it out between yourself. Are you making sense, or is it me? Well, you see, there's a fatal flaw to all my plans, Ben. I think it's being called Jack Douglas. How Vera has gone to bed now with a gin and a water bottle. Ice for Audrey. Oh. Hold the four. Right. Oh, so we're pleased then, Jack. Well, what do the police want with you? I'm here. He's here, ain't he? Not arrested him. He'll tell you if he wants to. If he doesn't, he won't. Yeah. Oh, never mind, never mind. Ivy, can you tell me in a few simple words how to stop being daft to myself and find the road to happiness? Because if he can, leave it, eh? I mean, why tell me now? Why bother? <laughs> What do you think you're playing? Oh, Ken, please, no, not this, now. What exactly do you think you're playing I at? I could ask the same of you. You have glued, glued a poster on the outside of my window. Have you gone mad? Look, can we go? You, you go? The fun's just about to start. Oh, oh it's no I fun for me. What, your two favourite people about to knock cobs off each other? What's wrong with you? <laughs> just wetting his whistle, you know. Tell you what, we'll have a picture. Man of the people supping a pint. Did you say Mrs Barlow was in there? Oh, I... They're both in there. Well, what are we waiting for? You swore you wouldn't. Oh, no, I did not. And I can stick whatever I like in that window and you have no right to paste over it and block my light. Block your light? Ridiculous. Look, uh, my post is exactly the same size as yours. How would they block your light uh, anymore? I want it down. I want it down well, now. I'm very sorry Look, for you. you must have had a ladder to get it up there. You can just go and get that ladder and take it I've down. I've got better things to do with my... Oh, life. have you? Yes, now, I'm telling you. Yeah, but I want it down. You're blocking my light. I'll do more than block your oh, light. Oh, will you? Yes, don't uh, you shut uh, it. Gentlemen, get out of here. Not quite the dog with two tails, but by heck, it'll do. Morning. You were up bright. Didn't you? Well, who wouldn't be a day like today? I could have done with the next shower. What? With mankind poised at the crossroads, about to call upon a man of destiny to lead it into a brave new world. What man of destiny? Alf Robert. Oh, God, it's election day. Yeah. We're off in half an hour. The nation holds its breath. Well, all I can say is the sooner it's over and done with, the better. Oh, look what it's been doing to folk round here. What were they like last night, going at one another like fighting cocks? Well, that's democracy, isn't it? Free speech, open debate, it's what's made us the envy of the world. Besides, it were their lot that started it. I don't know who started it. I'd say they're all as daft as one another. Well, well, that's as maybe, but you haven't forgotten what this is all about, have you? What? Well, stopping Deirdre Barlow, getting her off the council so she can't help her boyfriend open that club across oh. from our front door. Of course, Ken was in the thick of it, going on at Alf about posters. Alf's going on back at him. Everybody's going on at everybody else. And then suddenly, as if by magic... What? ..a newspaper reporter and a photographer pops out the back. Really? Now, am I being paranoid or were we all being set up? Oh, I'm sure Alf wouldn't do anything as underhand as that. Oh, thank yeah, you. thanks, love. Well, maybe I am being paranoid then, but I wouldn't like to see the pictures he got before everybody realised what was going on. I'll get it. You see, the thing is, Emily, a week ago, I was saying to myself, so what? What does it matter? What if I lose? I mean, just think of all the free time I'll have. No more letters to write, no more folk ringing me up, telling me the rubbish hasn't been collected. Well, yes. No. I want to win, Emily. I can persuade myself all I like, but I want to win. Ah! Hi, hello. Oh, hello. Not for the first time, I'd like to apologise. I should never have gotten to a shouting match with Alf in the Rovers, I'm sorry. Who was that photographer? I think it was the Gazette. Convenient, wasn't it? Yeah, I can't think it'll matter, though, not at this stage. It's at this stage that everything matters. Yeah, well, uh, if there's anything I can do, like, uh, you know, going around knocking on doors? No. Sitting outside a polling station? No. I think. Well. If you feel like voting for me, I certainly won't stop you doing that. <laughs> OK. Well, good luck. She doesn't need luck. She's going to win anyway. Yeah, you're probably right. Am I? Good. Of course you are. So you'll not be back at all, then? Well, I'll pop in from time to time, like. In other words, no. Oh, Audrey, on a day like today. Out. Well, now, how's the people's champion today? 
Well, not too bad, you know. Well, it's the people's champion's wife that's got the sticky end of this outlet working in here all day. Uh, well, I, I just wanted to wish you luck and say that uh, you know where I am if you need me. Oh, well, you could do a bit of driving backwards and forwards, you know. You could take some of the old folk down to the polling station. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I mean, what if they vote for some of the others? Well, that's the chance you have to take. Of course they you will, know. you know. Hey? Oh, a lot of them old beggars will take a lift off you and then vote for it to the side just for devilment. Mm. No, I think they're best left where they are. Well. Hello, Alfred. Vivian, good morning. What a surprise. <laughs> Mrs. Roberts. Mrs. Alfred, I haven't seen you for a while. No, I, I've been ever so busy. But I thought, well, I can't leave him on his own on election day. So, here I am. My car's outside and we're both at your service. The answer to a prayer. I gather you were mentioned on the radio to the day. What, me? Uh, just a misunderstanding, love. I'll tell you about it later. Anyway, we'd better get off. I'll see you later, love. I hope to ride on your shoulders, Alf. Yeah, well, I'll do the best I can, you know. <laughs> Big woman, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Get her and Alf on the same platform, we could have a political landslide. <laughs> <laughs> Said it were a natural. Said he'd never known anybody take to it so quickly. And he's a bona fide sort of photographer, is he? A what sort? Well, you know, a, a professional. Oh, yeah, you should tilt cameras. He has to keep changing them from one to another while I'm stood there not able to move. Then I'll say, oh, can you just look this way? Then, can you look that way? I'm telling you, it's hard work. I'm a worn out by the time I've finished. All that smiling? Oh, no, no, no. No, he don't like me smiling. He says I'm not sultry type. Oh. Oh, and he's very considerate. He keeps asking me if I'm warm enough. Warm enough? Well, bikinis and underwear, I mean, they're not going to keep you warm, are they? Oh, I see, and that's his, um... Speciality, mm. yeah. Swimwear and lingerie. Dedicated professional, then, is he? Oh, yeah, I think so. Anyway, he wants me to go back for another session, so I said I'd, I'd ring him at dinner time. Oh, right. And, um, do you want me to, uh, to come with you? Well, I won't mind, but I don't think he'd like it. No. Oh. That was one of the first things he said. He don't like anybody else, that just has to be him in the model. That way, you see, you get a really close relationship. No prizes for guessing who I voted for. Well, they all count, you know. <laughs> now, just a minute, wait. Now, uh, do you think I need a flash? Uh, they won't let you use that in here, love. No. No, you get it both locked up. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll take one of you outside then. Ah, oh, surprised to see you haven't arranged for your tame newspaper photographer to be here. Ah, oh, you again. Yeah, well, I am entitled to vote, you know. Yeah, well, carry on then. Come yeah, on. Oh, look, look, Al. I don't want there to be any hard feelings. I mean, we're all going to have to live together when this is over. Well, you don't need to tell me that. I mean, I wasn't the one that started it. Well, that's arguable. Yeah, well, it would be to you, wouldn't it? I mean, everything's arguable to you, isn't it? OK, forget it. Just forget it. I've tried to be civil. You obviously don't want to be. Fine. Yes, it is. Yeah, and if you think you'd have voted for me, don't bother. Well, I wasn't. And should I tell you something else? I don't think many other people will be either. Uh, Barbara, yeah. Come on. What a rude man! <clears throat> Are you not at college, then? Well, I'm working at home. Got to finish my portfolio. Pardon? My collection of design. Ah. Well, you know that fashion show we had last week? Well, there was a big manufacturer there from Manchester, like some of my stuff, said, can we have a look at some of your designs with a view to buying them? Will you still talk to us when you're rich and famous? I'll even come in for a hot pot. But not if I don't go and guess at you right now. Do you want red cabbage, Cot? Yes, please. What I don't understand, who is it that buys all these daft clothes you see at these fashion shows? Well... Because you never see folk in street wearing them, and if you did, they get locked up. A lot of the designs are modified before they're mass-produced. But you're always trying to change things, aren't you? Whereas you get something like this, I mean, that is perfect. You wouldn't design a better one of those if you tried for hundred years. Well, I just thought I could slip out, you know, and, and, and vote, you know, while it's a bit quiet. Well, that depends. On what? Well, who you're going to vote for. Well, I can't tell you that, can you? It's a bit secret, isn't it? I guess you can go in your own time. Who were in his own time? To vote. Vote? You've never voted in your life. I've been half. What happens? What do you mean? Well, when you go to polling station. What do you do? Well, you, you get the piece of paper and you, and you stuff it in the, in, the, in the box, don't you? You could have seen that on telly. Yeah, but what I want to know, Jack, is where are you going to put your cross? Which name? What, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, cross? I can flip him right. I can write as good as anybody you else. It, Jack. Why? What for said? What for said? Well, can I have my dinner first? I'm supposed to take it one. Yeah, well, yeah, I suppose, yeah. All right, and then I'll do cereals after. Well, yeah. Curly. Miss Wolstead, you. Hey, it's Mr Watts, too, if you don't mind. All yeah. right, Mrs Dugquick, please, go and have your lunch now. Well, Kimberly always called you Mr Watts. What's got into her? Oh, never mind her. She's a stickler for protocol at the moment. Listen, I've just been talking to Frank. Who? My photographer. 
Oh. And you know I said we had to do another session? Well, he said, can I be at the studio before o'clock? And I said what I'd have to see because it would mean finishing early. So, can I? Well, company policy clearly states that employees can only give them time off for emergencies or family. I'll make it up to you. Yeah? Well, if you made it up personally to me, haven't you? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'll make it up to you personally. Very personally. Well, I don't see why not. Off you go. Oh, fuck. If, if I can see you tonight. Well, of course you can. I'll show you some of my modelling poses, shall I? Ah. Uh, pint a bit of please, look. Oh, sorry, Vivian, what would you like? Uh, and an antilado would be very welcome. Yeah, and a sweet sherry. Mm -hmm. Ah, Alf. Hello. Snatching a few moments' respite from the fray. Yeah, well, I suppose you could say that. Well, yes. I don't blame you. And how are things out on the streets now? Battle's finally been joined. Well, it's hard to say. You know, people don't vote till the evening, so it's a bit early to tell. You know what I'd do if I were in your shoes? I'd get drinks all round. You'd get more support that way, you know? Hey, that's an idea. Yeah, it'd be corruption, though, wouldn't it? It'd be expensive in our way, aren't it? I'll tell you what, let's go and sit over there, shall we? And take a few moments to discuss the campaign thus far. The canary, <laughs> Yes, thanks. Yeah, they say power's an aphrodisiac, don't they? I don't yeah, too bad to be. Look at him. He's not even won the election yet, and he's got women following him all over. So that's why men go into politics, is it? That's why they go into everything. Why should politics be any different? Yes, Don, lad. Ah, uh, give us a pint, Jack, lad. Come on, young one, Percy. Oh, thank you, but I think it's time I was moving because I'd like to go and see how the days are going on with the campaign. Oh, well, you might like to warn them. There's a, a publicity they probably hadn't thought of. What is it? Some of them. It's a follow up of the Argy Bargy in here last night. Can I borrow it? Yeah, go on. I'll bring it back. Hey, what was that all about? Uh, well, Ken Barlow was rowing with Alf in here last night, and right on cue, this photographer turns up. Seen the latest, have you? Not latest, what are you on about? Councillor's husband threatens opponent. Lovely okay. photographic you here. You what? Tempers rise in local election Let, battle. Let, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. would you credit it? Well, that's marvellous. Hey? Well, you know, you said most of them haven't been out to vote yet. Only one way they're going to vote after they've seen this. Oh, no. I don't think the picture really incriminates you. But have you read it? Allegations were flying along with the fists in the Rovers' return on Coronation Street last night. It all started when Councillor Barlow, independent candidate for St Mary's Ward, was said to have spent more time jet-setting to Paris and back than working for her constituents. Oh, that's terrible. You only went once. Perhaps this is what upset ex-husband Ken, seen here threatening the ward's other independent candidate, local shopkeeper Alfred Roberts. Well, that's it, isn't it? I thought you'd like to see it. Oh, I'm not sure it isn't libelous. Well, so what? They've said it now. Even if they retract it tomorrow, it'll be too late. Yes, they seem very pleased about it next door. Oh, I'll bet they are. Do you know, I have a good mind to go round there and give them something they won't be so pleased Mom, about. Don't. That'd only make things worse. Oh. Do you know what I feel like? I feel like giving up. Just telling them I don't want to be a counsellor anymore if this is all the thanks you get. We are doing no such thing. No. Not after the work we've done over the past few weeks. Oh, come on, dear. Who's going to want to vote for me after reading that? Lots of people. Yeah, they all know the newspapers don't tell the truth. They do, and they also know that you've worked very hard for them. Oh, one single weekend in Paris. First time I've been out of the country in four years. This makes it sound as if I'm never here. I'll tell you what brought this on, shall I? Mixing drink and politics. Yes. Well. Now, you know the Jolly Hatters down Waterside? Now, the landlord there has a rule. No politics, no religion, and he never has a bit of trouble. Ignore it. You know it's a lie, and everybody that knows you knows it's a lie. How did they find out about it? Somebody must have told them I've been to Paris. It doesn't matter. Whatever damage it's going to do, it's already done it. And now all we're doing here is wasting time. Yeah, come on, Mum. You can still win. Of course you can. Here, here. In fact, you've got to after this. You've got to win. Do you think I should carry on? I'll never speak to you again if you don't. I've got a lot of choice then, have I? So, I will be able to see you tonight. Yeah? Well, what time and where? I'll give you a ring. Right, I won't leave the house until I hear from you. All right, bye-bye. Hey, so can I go and all, then, if I say our Jack's going to take some snaps of me? I don't know what you're talking about, Vera. This Wollstone Hume is leaving it early for personal reasons. Oh, get away. It's this modelling business. You've been telling everybody. 
Oh, well, well, she is Miss Better by, and who knows, these photographs could come in useful, you know, for f future promotions. So you're happy about it, then, are you? Yeah, of course, yeah. Why shouldn't I be? Well, nine times out of ten, you know where this modelling business leads to. It can lead anywhere. Yeah, top shelf of a news agent, or some, I don't know, mucky club in Soho. I think she's got more sense than that, Vera. Look, all I'm saying is if you cared about the girl, well, look after her. I will. Of course we will, yes. Well, we don't want you to have to iron dry, do we? We know what happened with Kimberly. Wearing you out in it, all this electioneering? Oh, oh, oh I, I was only, only just having five minutes. <laughs> Shouldn't you be knocking on doors, helping to get the vote out? Oh, I'll leave that to Alf and his aide de camp. No, I'm more your backseat tactician, the unseen hand. <laughs> One of them men in grey suits? Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Did you collect did, my share? Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I think I'll go down to town all tonight, being at the kill. Well, Alf should be odds on. I mean, after that newspaper article about Deirdre, jet setting off to Paris, they won't like that round here. Oh, she's only herself to blame, hasn't she? That's her past catching up with her. What puzzles me? How do they get to know? Who? Newspapers. Oh, well. They have the ways, haven't they? And you have yours? Me? You told them, didn't you? Me? Yes. Yeah, I did. And aren't you ashamed of yourself? No. Well, you should be. Look, it was Phil Jennings who set the tone of this campaign. The day he cheated me out of that club. It doesn't mean to say we all have to descend to his level, love. Oh, I wouldn't say I've descended to it. I think I've got well below it. Um, I'll leave you one of these leaflets if that's all. I do have uh, a teenage daughter of my own, so of course I'm aware of the problems that you like to encounter. Uh, excuse me, anyway. Thanks for your time. Hiya. Like it? Not really, no. Oh, your daughter does. I've just seen her in the next street with Emily. And have you seen today's Gazette? No. Somebody's been feeding them stories about me flitting over to Paris. Oh, and did they say who flitted with you? Well, they made it sound as if it was a different fella every time. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, is there anything I can do? Well, don't take this the wrong way, but if you could just lie low for a bit, that might be best. <sighs> Lying low is one of my specialities. You know, I'll bet a pound to a penny Alec Gilroy's behind this newspaper story. I don't know. If he is, I'll kill him. Well, if you could wait until after the polls have closed. <sighs> sure. So, good luck for tonight. Thanks. See you soon. Vote Barlow. Ignore the newspapers. Vote Barlow. So, you'll be going down to the town hall tonight, then? I dare say. Ah, I suppose it could involve you quite a bit if it gets elected. Functions and such like. It'll involve me standing here a lot more. That's the only function I seem to have nowadays. Have you been to vote yet, Ivy? I have, yes, and don't worry, my cross is against Alf's name. Mm. You just like the thought of me working. Very fun. Shh, is it your name? Here he is, the man hey, himself. Hello. hello. Oh, where's your lady friend? Managed to shake her off, have you? If you mean Mrs. Barford, she's dropped me off and she's gone home for a tea. Mm, I believe she's keen on her food. 2.35, Ivy, please. How's it all going then, Alf? Been conducting an exit poll, have you? Oh, nothing so scientific. Let's just say I'm quietly confident. Well, we both for you, Alf. Is she going to be at the town hall tonight, your precious Mrs. Barford? Well, I should imagine she will be, yes. Oh, well, you won't be bothered if I'm there or not, then, will you? Well, of course I'll be bothered. What sort of a comment is that? Uh, we'll be seeing you. Yeah. Come on. Oh. I mean, I hate to get in the way. You seem to be getting on so well, the two of you. Oh, for goodness sake. Look, Vivian has been a big help to me, and I'm very grateful. Especially as I get so little support from some quarters around here I could mention. What time is it? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. She's not going to ring, is she? Do you know this photographer, this, uh, Frank? No. I wish I'd let her go now. Well, you could hardly stop her. Well, attractive young women and photographers, we all know what that equation adds up to, don't we? Why don't you ring her? No. She said she'd ring me. She promised. She's probably tired. She'll be having a hot bath and an early night. Well, I'm not. I'm going out. You fancy uh, an hour down the Rovers? Sorry, I've got to finish this. Well, if she rings, uh, just tell her I've gone out. Right. Don't say where, just say you're too late, he's gone out. 
I'll give it to half past. I don't know how you can keep so calm. I'm as nervous as a kid. Yeah, well, I've done it before, you know. <laughs> well, I can't think of anything more boring all this county. And I hope you're going to give us a speech after they've announced how you've won. Well, just a few No, words. actually, there is one thing more boring. That's at the end when they all get up and make the same speech, saying thank you to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Whatever you do, I hope you're going to spare us all that. <laughs> sure about that, Tracy. I mean, the thing is, it might be ages yet. I'm not bothered. I'm stopping till the end. Of course she is. Good evening, ladies. <laughs> well, it's been a good contest. If you're into blood sports. Oh, tough but fair. I think that's how I'd describe it. My dear, I'm only a novice. I don't have the tricks of the trade that you people have. Well, I must say, you're a fast learner. You ought to stand yourself next time. Well, oh, don't know about all this cut and thrust. I think I'd be up to it. No, I prefer the quiet life. Why didn't you say anything about the newspaper cutting? Ah, uh, there's no point. Anyway, none of that matters now. All that matters is the way those votes are piling up. Now then, ask Comic Bin on. Oh, hello, Alec. <laughs> <laughs> Any news yet? No, no, no. It's a low turnout, though. There won't be. Oh, by the way, I've made a little supper at home, if uh, anybody would like to come back afterwards. Oh, you should. Have oh, fun. yes, I should. And uh, if you'd like to uh, come back as well, Ali. Oh, oh, yeah, that would be very nice. You've never seen our house, have you, Ali? You uh, No. Well, we must remedy that. Come back and have a drink with us after, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, we'd better see how votes going first, don't we? Uh, large scotch, please, and whatever Ken's having. No, no, I'm all right, thanks. I just thought we were on the same side for once. Yeah? And which side's that? Deirdre's. You were loud enough in the support last night. 180, please. Thanks, love. Well, if we are on the same side, I suspect it's for very different reasons. And what's yours? Well, I happen to think that Deirdre makes a damn good counsellor. Same with me. Pint, please, Jack. Thank you. Where's your girlfriend tonight? Oh, probably stood around with very few clothes on in a series of provocative and suggestive poses. Eh? Hey? Well, you know, underwear, swimwear, that kind of thing. On a packet of cheese and onion crisps. Where's all this posing going on in, in, in your digs, like? No, Jack, all this is happening in a photographer's studio. A sordid, evil-minded photographer's sordid little studio. Oh. Suppose Alex down the town hall, is he? I believe he is, yes. Could you give him a message about the graffiti club? What about it? Well, I meant to tell him a while back, only I've decided to pull out of the whole idea. Well, it was never going to be the profit, so... You mean you're not going to open it? Never was, really. Just floating the idea, you know. Hope Alec didn't take it too seriously. Anyway, see ya. Didn't take it too seriously. He's been lying awake thinking about no tells. That's why he pushed Alf into standing for council. Well, a game for our fell, isn't it? All one big game. Edward James Andrews, 284. <laughs> Susan Bedell, 37. <laughs> Deirdre Ann Barlow. 904. <laughs> Sylvia Jessup, 284. <laughs> Thomas David Kiernan, 289. <laughs> Alfred Sidney Roberts, 1515. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, I would just like to say thank you to all those Thanks. loyal helpers who once again return. What do you think you're doing? All those. Oh, 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 I don't know why I could be doing oh, this. I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you. Audrey! Thought you were having a line today. Oh well, this lot needed doing, and as I'm a lady of leisure now. You shouldn't be doing anything. It's supposed to be a holiday today. Well, every day is a holiday for me now, isn't it? Anyway, I thought if, if I get finished early, we could perhaps go out somewhere. Oh, sorry, Mum. I promised Graham I'd meet him. We're going to Alderley Edge. Now you tell me. I told you on Saturday. Did you, love? I'm sorry, it probably didn't sink in. I can cancel if you like. No, no, you go. Have a good time. Ah, oh, right. Do me good to have a day in. I probably need it after all that racing about last week. I don't think you should just sit inside brooding. You make me sound like an old hen. I know what she wanted to win. Yeah, well, I didn't, did I? Oh, I, uh, I thought we might go out today. Did you know? Yeah, a nice run in the country. Yeah, Find a pub, have a meal. It'll make up for all that time I spent canvassing and that. Yes, well, it's the and that bit that interests me. Oh, we've been through this a thousand times, Audrey. My relationship with Mrs Barford was never more than professional. Mm, so you keep saying. Yeah, well, let's forget it then. Let's bury the hatchet and go out together and have a lovely day in the country, eh? Well, I hate to disappoint you, Councillor Roberts, but I am otherwise engaged today. Otherwise engaged? What are you talking about, otherwise engaged? We're not opening the shop. <laughs> I do have a life outside the rather narrow confines of this somewhat rocky relationship, you know. Look, I want to celebrate. I want to share my good fortune with the lady who made it all possible. Then may I suggest you phone La Bella Barford? I'm sure she'll attend to all your needs. Look, I'm not having this. Not having what? It exactly? was you started all that trouble with your pushing and shoving. It was your petty jealousy that got on top of you. I was just trying to type my rightful place by your side. There was no need to make all that commotion. Listen, she wasn't budging. She's a loyal supporter. She persuaded me to stand in the first place. She'd every right to be there. Then why don't you ask her out and not me? Hmm? Just see the two of you in the back of her mini. Be like one of them elephant jokes. I will not be ridiculed like this. No, look, I'm back in public life now, and I won't be talked. <clears throat> Listen, if you if you continue with this childish behaviour, I'll have no alternative but to go to the Rovers for my dinner. And a bit of respect and appreciation and all. Oh. Oh, yes. Behind every successful man bet, there's an even more successful agent. Is that right? The king maker, as they say. King of comedy, by all accounts. Oh, that fracker had nothing to do with my handling of the client. More to do with Vivian Barford's, from what I hear. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I can't comment on my client's personal life. And there was I, thinking you'd set it all up. Well, it's me. You must be joking. Well, I mean, you're that used to handling vaudeville turns. I mean, we won, didn't we? Oh, nobody's criticising you, Alec. From what I hear, you made a dull event watchable. Oh. Mind you, folk must be wondering what they're letting themselves in for. Yeah, well, I'm not. We've scuppered the good ship Deirdre Barlow. There's no way that pirate she hangs around with is going to get his club licence now. <laughs> Actually, Alec, I don't think he'll be too worried about that. Well, of course he'll be worried. Uh, nobody on the council to see it through. No, I don't know. It's money and time well spent, all this. Look, love, I know I should have told you sooner, but I didn't want to ruin your weekend. Phil Jennings gave up all ideas of reopening that graffiti club weeks ago. Three days, Angie. Three days. She walked out of Better Buys to see that photographer. I've not seen or heard from her since. Have you tried ringing her again this morning? Yeah, nothing. Well, maybe she's gone out for the day with her parents. Well, why didn't she tell me? I don't know, Kat. And why didn't she turn up for work on Saturday morning? She's a free agent, I suppose. I had plans for this weekend. I was going to take her somewhere. Somewhere romantic. Where? I don't know, somewhere. Did you tell her? No, it was going to be a surprise. Look, uh, you don't fancy coming out, do you? I mean, nowhere romantic, just, you know, out. Sorry, I'm busy all day. Doing what? 
Well, this morning I've got to work, and this afternoon I'm going to see a man who can make me a lot of money. Hey, Fashion manufacturer. I won't be working on Bank Holiday Monday. He will. He's got a collection coming out next week. What good is that going to do you? Well, he can put work my way if he likes my designs. You mean I'm going to be on my own all day? I'm sure you'll come across somebody if you pop into the Rovers. Anyway, don't run any hot water. I'm off for a bath. How the Weatherfield public can elect a man to the position of councillor when he can't be bothered to open his shop in the morning is beyond me. Yeah, well, it is a bank holiday first. Everybody's entitled to a rest. I have never known Alf Roberts, Mr Chanter, making a bit of spare cash, especially when he knows there's no competition. Yeah, well, like you say, he's a councillor now. Happen he's got more pressing business. Aye, happen he's rising above his station, but what's more important is where am I going to get my bread? Uh, well, it's Patel's in Inkerman Street. He'll be up now, uh, why don't you try it, Rovers? Better have some in deep freeze. I'll tell you what, the regret voting him in before much longer, mark my words. I mean, Mrs Barlow was a woman, but at least she was there when she was needed. Ivy. Ivy! What's the matter? What's up? What is it? You've turned tap off. I've not touched the tap. I'm dusting. Uh -huh. Hey, what's going on? My water's just gone off. Hey, that's an all. Do you know how we're halfway through running a bath? Oh, well, you're the lucky one, aren't you? How do you make that out? Well, you've got water standing by. The rest of us have got no warning. Jack, stop fiddling about in that sink and come and get these glasses washed. You can't wash glasses without water on Well, then turn the tap on. It is on and there's no happening. Nothing happening. What do you mean, no tap happening? Can't you even perform the simple tasks of life any longer, Jack? Come out of the way, minute. You're in it. Yeah. Get down to the cellar. It must be the stopcock. Go and have a look. Dozy apathy and turned it off by mistake. Why I have to employ morons, I don't know. Could you spare me a minute? Yes, what do you want? Oh, that's a fine greeting for some professor to be a public servant. Percy. I'm a landlord, not a public relations consultant. Half, is it? No, I'm not come here to partake of alcoholic beverage. What have you come for? A loaf of bread. Percy, I don't sell bread. But I was reliably informed you kept some in your deep freeze. Well, that's for pub use. It's not for sale to the general public. Oh, I see. Last week you couldn't do enough for folk, could you, when you were trying to get the votes? Now, it's a different matter now, is it? Now, look, Percy. Isn't it... that wrong with the stock pump? It's the water. I reckon they turned it off. That's all I needed, isn't it? And what I need is a loaf of bread. Percy, if you mention bread once Rob more, isn't it? They've turned the water off, haven't they? They turned that way, well, didn't they? Oh, well, don't worry about that as a minor matter. No, much more important. Percy wants a loaf of bread. Now, I've told him that we're a pub and we sell beer, but it doesn't seem to have had any effect. The problem is, you see, uh, Alf Roberts hasn't opened and I've run out. And I thought you might let us have a loaf of bread out of your deep freeze. Of course we can, Percy. Won't be a minute. Oh, thank you very much. I must say, your attitude's very refreshing, Mrs Gilroy. Unlike some I could mention, who, when they get the man elected, they wash their hands of all responsibility. Percy, if I could wash my hands at this precise moment in time, I'd be a very happy man. Now, why don't you go and sit over there, wait for Mrs Gilroy to bring you a loaf of bread, whilst I get on with the less important matter of how I'm going to keep my pub open? Hello, Ivy. Well, what can I get you, love? Uh, no, I'm not come for Aunt Rita. I just wondered, has your water gone off at all? Well, not as far as we know. Why, has yours? Yeah, about a quarter of an hour since. Oh, eight maybes. Would you go and check that, mm. love? I wouldn't mind, but Don will wash in his taxi. Ah, well, it's probably summerton now. Be on again soon. I hope so. Well, I mean, they usually give you a warning if they've got out planned, don't they? Well, unless there's been an accident, eh? Mm. No, ours is still on. Well, it must just be your side then, Ivy. Oh, I do hope so. It'd be most inconvenient to be without it today. And so it's definitely still on at your house. And the Wiltons. Derek's watering his plants. He's watering his plants and I'm in danger of shutting down. Look at the draw, Alec. So it must be just this side of the street that's off. Well, it looks like it. We must be on a separate main. What am I going to do? I've got a pub full of customers. I'm fast running out of clean glasses. I've just been on to Waterboard's emergency number. It's not just us. There's Rosamond Street, Inkerman Street, Maudsley Terrace, all off and off. So what are they proposing to do? Well, it's not due to routine work, so they're trying to locate the problem. Here we are, Percy. But I just hope that they don't cake the problem before I run out of clean glasses. Excuse me, Mrs. Gilroy, but this is white bread. That's right, Percy. Well, I prefer oatmeal if you've got it. What? 
If I was you, I'd take what's offered, Percy, love. Uh, well, you see, I'm very loath to pay good money for something I don't really well, want. Well, then regard it as a gift, a present, a gesture of goodwill, all right. Well, thank you. I'll take it home, then. Well, you do that, Flower. I'll be back for a drink later. Can't wait, Percy. Hey, has he paid you for that, love? Never mind the bread. Concentrate on the glasses. Well, what am I going to do? Well, what about Alf? Can't he do summit? I mean, he's our councillor now. You spent time and, and good money getting him elected. Yes, you're right. You're right. It's time to pay the piper now. Right. Good morning. 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 Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. How do you do? Ah, Councillor Roberts. Oh, Alex. <laughs> and how are you? Oh, very well, thank you. How do you do? Um, what will it be? Oh, uh, just a pint, I think, please. You know, it's a great thing back in the community again to be, you know, the man that can credit, a, a man that they you know they can rely on in an emergency. Oh, I'm so glad you feel like that, Al. Do you? Yeah. Well, not just me. The whole of this side of the street. <laughs> you see, they shut the water off an hour ago. Yes. Yeah, so and if something isn't done about it soon, I'm going to have to close, which means I shall lose a great deal of money. <laughs> so get that pint down you and start making something happen. 98p, councillor, please. <sighs> Realise the joy of something as simple as a cup of tea till you're deprived of the water for making it, do you? Maybe it's you're not deprived. It's them across the road that's deprived. I can imagine what it's like. I can put myself in their shoes. Can you now? Yeah. It's important to feel the suffering of others. Even if you're not suffering yourself, it helps you to understand their problems better. Don't get water on any quicker, does it? Cup of tea. Well, there's a sight for sore eyes. You can have one if you want one. Ah, oh, no, Tarita. Just a paper will be fine. And how are you coping, dear? Under the circumstances, that is. Oh, fine, thanks, Mavis. Mind you, it was a bit of a shock. Oh, no, I was just saying to Rita, I mean, I just think it's terrible. And these things always happen when you're least expecting them, don't they? Well, I did my best. I can't control the way people vote. Well, I wasn't talking about the election. I was talking about the water. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just shows you what a narrow life I lead. Oh, hey, I'm looking for summer. Uh, you're very welcome. Percy's just been telling me they used to suck pebbles at desert when they were short of water. Oh, I'd rather have a cup of tea than any pebble I might pick up round mm -hmm. here. I might do with one of these. Any road, we're hoping it won't be off for long. Alex dispatched Alf down to Town Hall, see if he can't pull a bit of weight. Poor Alf. He's only been elected five minutes and everybody's expecting minor miracles. Yeah, it's all right for you. Your toilet's still working. Busy? Uh, well, it's this water business, you know. It would be a councillor, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the answer is the cactus, eh? The cactus. Now, to all intents and purposes, a prickly, hostile creature. They like Alec. When you cut a cactus, you get milk. Now, mix that milk with gravy browning and bingo. Get the trots for a week. I know the water's of them. <clears throat> Give us a pint, will you? There's no drinks without an empty glass. Now then, what did they say at the town hall? Well, the town hall's closed. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with the town hall. It's the water company. Well, have you been on to the water company? Well, of course I've been on to the water... What do you think I've been doing? Well, and? Well, they say they have got a fault, yes. Well, surely they've got an emergency squad. Well, I think it was them that turned it off in the first place. So what you're saying is we know as much now as we did before you set off? No, we now know that there is a fault and it's being rectified. They're doing the best they can. Look, you see this? Yes. Well, you see more than I do because there's no coming out of it. And without what comes out of this tap, Alf, I'm finished. Well, that doesn't affect your beard, does it? Means we can't wash it down as much as we usually do. Look, we have to wash the glasses, haven't we? We've got to provide male and female toilet facilities, otherwise we close. Look, 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 it's not going to take all that. How long? Well... How long, Alf? Well, a day. Two days, maybe. Two days? Well, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. You realise two days could cost me a whole month's profit? Look, I'm doing all I can, Alec. Now, look, I have spent good money and time getting you elected onto this council. Now, you just get out there and start living up to the reputation I've built for you. Now, look. Yeah. 
Neighbours said they've gone away for the weekend. There you are, you see? What did I tell you? Well, they didn't take Raquel with them. Oh. So where is she, Angie? Can you tell me that? I don't know, Curly, and I really don't have time to talk about it now. Oh, yeah, you're going to see that bloke, aren't you? Yeah, wish me luck. Yeah, of course. This could be really good for me, you know. If he likes my designs, I'm in. I'll go in there swinging, kid. Thanks. Oh, could you just... Yeah. Aren't you going to ask me in? Excuse me, see you later, Curly. Yeah, yeah, good luck. Come in. Really like to bother you, maybe. Oh, don't be silly. If we can't be of assistance to each other in an hour of need, well, there's not much hope for the world, is there? Well, thank you very much, oh. anyway. It's greatly appreciated. Oh. 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 oh, thank goodness you're in. Do you know, for a minute there, I thought you weren't. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll leave you to it then, and thanks, maybe. Oh, anytime. Bye, love. Hey, can I use your low? Oh, do you know I'm desperate? Use our toilet? Y yeah, go on. Please. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a very personal thing, a toilet. Yeah, well... Besides which, I, I, I think that Derek's in the shower at the moment. Oh, please, Mavis. Look, I promise I won't look. <laughs> Hello, Beera. Daffodils have come up a treat this year, haven't they? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> in the shower. You're very welcome to a jug of water. I'd rather die of thirst. Fulham. It's in London. I know where it is. Frank's mum and dad live down there. We stayed with them. He's got a studio. I see. It were all very respectable. It doesn't look particularly respectable to me. Well, it was. Frank's very professional. I bet he is. I want to know why you went to London with him for three days. Well, he says that a photographer has to have a relationship with his subject before he can capture its true light. And what kind of relationship does he have with you? Well, it's sort of complicated. Looks fairly simple to me. Yeah, but if you've got assets, you've got to show them off. Oh, I suppose Frank said that, did he? Me mum, actually. Oh, and your mum approves of you taking time off work and going to London with a complete stranger. Curly, it's my career we're talking about here. And I'm talking about our relationship. What kind of weekend do you think I've had? You disappear for three days, and then you walk in here like nothing's happened. And all I get is Frank this and Frank that. Look, I'm sorry, Curly, but you don't get a chance like this every day. So, what are you saying? I'm saying... I'm saying that from now on, we'll be moving in different circles. And I think that... I think that we ought to split up before one of us gets hurt. I see. Oh, I mean, you, you're great when it comes to duty rosters, uh, displaying tins of soup. In fact, you're probably one at best. Just not for me anymore. Look, I'll see ya. No, oh, you're back, are you? Yeah. Thought you'd gone to live with a merry winter. <sighs> I'm sorry. There was a bit of a panic today. All the water's been cut off in Coronation Street. And who's the blooming idiot who's about when it happens? Joe Muggins here. Oh, dear, well. What's the penalty of being a councillor? Yeah, well, I know now why Deirdre Barlow has looked so blooming gloomy. I'm not kidding, I've passed from one constituent to another all day long. I feel like one of Boris Becker's tennis balls. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it if I were you. If they can't get water out of a tap, they can always drink bottle, can't they? Aye. Aye, they can, can't they? Raquel's gone. So I see. You didn't like your designs? Oh, I liked them all right. Then why the miserable face? Nothing's ever straightforward, is it, Curly? <sighs> no. Been ripped off. And I never even saw it coming. Eh? 
Oh, it doesn't matter. You ain't got enough problems of your own. Ah, oh, go on, tell me. Well, I got to this bloke's office and I showed him my designs. And he didn't say anything. Just asked me to follow him. So he led me to see the new collection, you know, that's been made up for release next week. So? So, I'm standing there looking at a terrific set of clothes, three of which are made up from my designs. What do you mean? I mean, they were my designs. They're identical to the ones Raquel wore last week. Well, that's great. You'll make a fortune. No, I won't, because somebody stole the ideas and sold them to the company three days ago. But he must have seen the originals. Well, that's no proof. As far as he's concerned, he's legally bought them from somebody else. But who? Well, he wouldn't say. Somebody who's at the show, obviously. And there's nothing you can do? Well, I can have a drink. That is, if you're offering. Yeah? I've been playing with that all afternoon, wondering when to open it. Now. Open it now. Get a corkscrew. Well, here's to you and your plastic cups. <laughs> well, to be honest, I didn't relish sitting at home on my own drinking vodka. Mind you, looking round here, I think I might have. Oh, no, you were right. I mean, it does you good to mingle with the crowds. <laughs> well, always one for improvising, Deirdre. Well, I wish you'd teach me. Well, it's something you've got to teach yourself, love. If it's something that takes time, I've got plenty of that on my hands, haven't I? Well, you just have to get yourself a job. I mean, it shouldn't be too difficult with your contacts. Oh, come on, sup up and let's go to my place. I can't stand looking at Alec's face anymore. Come on, Alec, let's close up, love. We can't do out without clean glasses. Never. I'm losing enough money as it is. Yeah, but what's the point? We're not making out by stopping open. We can't serve anybody, even if they ask. Bye, girls. Thanks for trying. Well, yeah, really, well, thanks. Well, it makes sense, boss, doesn't it? I mean, three of us stuck here twiddling us. Yeah, well, you go then. This is going to save me a night's wages. Oh, boss, I don't know about oh, that. No, no, no. But you'd go if I paid you, oh, wouldn't you? Oh, come on, Alec. Don't have a go at Daft Jack. It's not his fault the water's off. You go, Jack. Don't worry about your right, wages. So. Look at him, eh? Look at him. Like rats deserted a sinking ship. It's only temporary love. Ah, you try telling me that when the takings are down for a month. Oh, I'm having somebody for this. Well, oh. I want compensation. Yes, and Alf Roberts is the man that's going to get it for me and all. So, she said we'd be moving in different circles. Mind you, she thought I was all right when it came to duty rosters and displaying tins of soup. <laughs> but I wasn't what she wanted anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, you know what I shouted after her? No. I shouted, Andy Warhol, he used to paint tins of soup and he's a star. <laughs> Did you? No. <laughs> I didn't think of it fast enough. That's my problem. By the time I've thought of the good answer, it's all over. <laughs> do you like Andy Warhol? <laughs> well, according to Raquel, I must do. Apparently, me and him get turned on by tins of soup. Raquel's a fool. Is she? Giving up a nice bloke like you for some nerd of a photographer who'll take it to the cleaners and back. I think he will. Well, he's not doing it for charity, is he? No, well, I can't really blame him. I mean, where is the future on a cheese camper? Well, it's nothing to do with your job, is it? I mean, success is what you do with your life. I might have had my designs pinched, but they are mine. And when I see them on the street, I'll know I did them. And I did them as well as I could. You really think that? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. No. Oh, that shop's put years on me. All the lines, all the wrinkles. Don't go blaming the shop, it's time does that, and time like customers wait for no man, so come on, get your skates on. They'll wait for you, Alf. Thirsting for blood and a drink of water. Yeah, well, I've told them. Burst pipes are no longer the responsibility of the council. Not directly. A councillor can only exert pressure through the Department of Environment. Exactly. Mm, that's been the situation ever since they sold off water to private investors. Well, you've been listening anyway. <laughs> you've been saying it's in your sleep. Still, it's not me you've got to convince, is it? Yeah, well, I've got plenty of experience of public life, you see. Lay your cards on the table and make sure there's no comeback. That's my motto. Honest Alf, the people's friend. Hey, now, don't be sarky. No, I'm not. I'm just wondering how friendly they'll be when you lay your shares on the table. What shares? In water. Hey, less of that. Oh, oh you're up then, are you? You should be doing this. Because there was only one bucket and you had it. 
Where did he get it from? <sighs> that stand pipe on Rosamond Street. Oh, get the kettle on. I'm gagging for a cup of tea. Looks a bit murky, this. Well, you're going to boil it, are you? Are you open? Also, won't have time. You know, isn't it funny how we take this for granted? And when, when it's not there, you realise how you can't live without it. Well, I won't take it for granted again, I promise you. You know I me, mean, my love? Do you know, Vera, there are some parts of the world don't even know what it looks like. Everybody knows what water looks like, daft. Even them in desert know what water looks like. Oh, yes, I mean, that. Water, yes, but I'm thinking more your, your end product, aren't it? You're your, your bitter, your lager, your pale ale. Oh, booze. Do you know you've got a one trap mind you have? Ah, my livelihood of it. I hope Alex's going to pay me for that layoff. What makes you think he's going to lay you off? Well, there's no glasses, no bog facilities. He won't be needing me, will he? This gas is taking its time. You're going to be late, you know. Right. Your turn in. Don't give Alec any excuse to dock your pay. No, and you make yourself useful round here. You don't go standing in that betting shop. Right, fill the bath, want more buckets. Well, that's all in, Vera. I've told you, more buckets. I thought he's gone. Ah, uh, no. No, so if you get back into bed, I'll bring your toast up to your boudoir. <laughs> no. No toast? No boudoir. Bed. No breakfast, sorry. Angie? Forget it, for God's sake, forget it! Morning, boss. Where's Alec? He's starting a fire in the cellar. It's an insurance job. He reckons with no water. Fire brigade's got no chance. Oh, well, he won't be needing me. Well, he will he's on a call, presenting myself, you know. Where have you been? Jack, you're late. Well, I, I didn't think you'd be opening. What do you mean? Of course I'm opening. Where did you get that coffee? Rita's. I carried it across. I couldn't bring two, I suppose. I didn't need two, Alec. I've caught down, remember? Yeah, but you, you've got no water, no glasses, no nail boss. No, they're all stacked in the yard, waiting for you to wash them. Pray for rain. Look, I'll try and get back for opening, but if I'm not, stall them. Come on, you. Yeah. What's he up to? Grand larceny, Jack. He's pinching late wind in here. Don't let on at all. Jack, come on. Come on, Jack. He can't manage it on his own. As an elected councillor, it's his bounden duty to make representations on our behalf. We just want news, Audrey. Look, some idea when this blasted main's going to be repaired. He's trying, believe me. He'll tell you himself when he's off the phone. Alfie! When I ask for a delivery, I expect it pronto. Yeah, I don't care if you have got problems. I've got problems. You... Can I expect it today, then? Good. When I get some news, I can spread it amongst the troops. Well, make sure you spread it proper, Purser. And what's that supposed to oh, mean? I'll give over, Percy. Look, this helps nobody. You're not the most reliable town crier we've ever had. I resent that, Mrs Roberts. Oh. It might surprise you to know that there's some people less mobile than yourself are very grateful for what I can tell them. That's all very well, Percy, old lad, but you can't wash and shave in gratitude, oh. can you? Uh, uh, about to uh, trust there's some good news from the waterfront, Councillor. Well, no better than we can expect, Percy. I mean, that main collapse was a disaster, you know. Well, what did they say on the phone? Eh? Well, they said you were on the phone. Oh, yeah, aye. Yeah. Out with it, Councillor. Now, come on, don't hide the truth. It's bad form. No, no, of course not, Percy. Well, I mean, the standpipe situation is the same as last night. Viaduct Street, Rosamond Street. Well, we know that. Everybody knows that. All right, Audrey. Brilliant. All right, then. I repeat what they already know. It's a disappointment, but I'll try and convince them you're doing something. Oh, that man, he's all gob. Uh, he's not the only one. What? Nothing, love. I'm just clearing my throat. <clears throat> Hey, what's up? Is there something wrong? Enigmas, all of them. Well, don't blame me. I only did the sprouts. <sighs> women, Vera, I meant women. I told you, I suppose. You told me what? Oh, yeah, I had a row. It's my fault. I should never have felt him in the first place. What him as such. More what he stood for, if you know what I mean. You packed him in, haven't you? Well, most women go for looks and personality, don't they? With me, it's always been. Power, influence, intellect, muscles of the mind. My mum's the same. If you tell yourself the only reason she married my dad was because he were a charge hand. Photographers are powerful, aren't they? Look what they did to Marilyn Monroe. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Sorry, Ivy, no sign of him yet. How's the repair going? Well, electrician reckons it's going to be another hour, but he's had to turn the machine off while he's doing it. Mr. Bob is going to hit the roof. I know he wants the order out for today. They can't hold you responsible for a broken 
What was it anyway? A uh, circuit panel or something. I'd be obliged if you were telling me to say that. Well, we're both telling. He's here at last. Well, wherever you've been, it did you good. Ivy's about to change all that. Uh, we've had a delay, Mr. Wallen. Yeah, I know a circuit panel's gonna differ. A fellow with a screwdriver just told me. So the spike your guns, Ivy. I know you like spreading the good word. Mrs. Ingram, in the office. Got some real news to tell you. Was it business or are you seeing someone behind my back? The latter. Before you start tearing my eyes out, it's about my age with a very dodgy French accent. He? Yeah, match with D, Furswood Hall. What's now? How many did they cater for? Furswood Hall? For that cost a fortune. Within the year, I told him, look up the biggest order you've had so far and double it. Oh, you're crazy. Because I'm in love. That's why. Mm. Listen, uh, I'm getting married on July the 5th. Play your cards right. I might invite you along. There we are, ladies. Oh, 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 thanks, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Contradiction in terms. I know, Jack, lad, but I can't say I like these plastic glasses. 98, please, Don. Me and Alec got them this morning. 300. Blimey, he's not going to go under, is he? How much did that cost him? Next. And now he's got a mate on the market, fellow with showbiz delusion. Thinking jungle or something daft like that. He works him like a glove puppet. Replenish the gents, Jack. I just heard it flush. And check the ladies while you're at it. Oh, not again. Look, I can't be lucky water from that flaming bath. It's doing my back in, Alec. Oh, so I have to do it all, have I? Fill up the bath, top up the cisterns. Alec, it was me that filled up the bath and you just put the plug in. Do you know, eight trips I've had from that standpipe this morning. Eight! Yes, and don't scratch the enamel on that bath. You're a better man than I am, Gunga Din. Oh, you don't say that. I didn't think it is badly done to. Well, it's nice to see you not bearing a grudge against Alec. You know, for helping Alf with the election. Rita, my feelings towards Alec are unchanged. I know. You've never liked him either. <laughs> oh, thanks, Alec. <clears throat> so tell me, what do Depot's councillors do when they're no longer counselling? No. Work, I suppose, eventually, when my ego comes back from the menders. Oh, I'll manage. Well, whatever you decide to do, love, I wish you all the best. Cheers. Hey, it makes you feel proud, Bet, doesn't it? What? Well, the bulldog breed, still supping in the face of adversity. Oh, it brings a lump to your throat, not to mention your wallet. You know, there are possibilities here. A few sandbags, a couple of Glen Miller records, we could have a blitz night. Like that. Good idea. Flatten out Rice Street, they'd be over the moon. Uh, oi, Paul phone. Who is it? Answer it with my teeth, do I? What's in the beer? Not today, sunshine, flat cat. Well, about the best bitter. What's up with him, anyway? Damn pipe-itis, Percy. If he bites, you go straight to casuals. He's not gone on notice, you know, the way you and Mr Gilroy are uh, surmounting your difficulties. Well, somebody's got to look after him while Vera's at work. No, I'm, I'm not referring to Duckworth. I mean, the way you're carrying on business under uh, siege conditions. Very commendable, is that? Thank you, Percy, but it'll still cost you. So tell him to cheer up. He's a hero in my book. Thought we might clear up. I've been talking to Nigel Ridley. Well, I did more listening than talking. Um? Well, he reckons without running water, we're in danger of prosecution by the health people. So? So he's instructed me to close before the brewery gets a bad press and I inflict plague and pestilence on all my customers. So, that's it then. Will you tell him or shall I? Well, that I'm closing? Huh? Never. If Nigel Ridley wants running water, I'll get running water somehow. Yes, Don, same again. Hey. Have you had any dinner? Uh, no, no, Vera. I'll get some later. I wish I could think of something fresh to say, but, well... I think you know I feel. I mean, there's a word for people that keep trotting things out, isn't there? Boring. You know, like there's plenty of pebbles on the beach, plenty of fish in the sea, stuff like that. Cliche. Yeah, that's right. That's where I am, a walking cliche. But I just want you to know that I'm on your side. You know, if, if you want somebody to talk to or sound off. It's not your problem, Vera. I'm fine, honest. But I know all about it, look. I know what's happened. Mm. I'm sorry. You can't know, Vera. Even I don't know. That Angie, she's got a lot to answer for. Angie? Yes, Angie playing a silly student games. If she hadn't have had Raquel dressed up like a clothes horse, she wouldn't be out there now, lording it up, would she? 
No, you'd still both be together. But well, I know what I'm saying now. Well, it doesn't help much, but I'm right, you know. It's, it's not your fault sometimes. No. Hey, I love, come on, I'll give you a lift. No, it's OK, I'm getting used to it. Yeah, no, it's fella's work, is that? No, I said it's OK, thanks anyway. How do you get? Kevin's a lucky man. Yeah, he'll probably tell you that himself, if he hasn't told you already. I don't know, you can't help some folk, can you? Some folk could help me, Don, you know, I swear my arms are a foot longer than they were this morning. My back is killing me. Just been to Alf's, got some of this herbal stuff. Maybe that'll ease it a bit, eh? Yeah, well, you look a bit jiggered. <sighs> you feel better when Vera rubs some of that in. No, no, you don't, you don't rub this in. This is what you, you, you pour this in, in a bath full of... of uh... <sighs> Soak yourself. What are you looking for, love? Inspiration? Eh? No, I'm just thinking, that's all. Admit it, Alec, you're snookered. Bathroom's like a swamp. Panic breaks out in Ladies Lou every time Jack the Yak barges in with his bucket. There's no disgrace, love, chucking the towel in. That's if you can find a towel Jack hasn't walked all over. Listen, a Gilroy fights to the death. You should know that, Bet. There must be a way. I'll be back in a minute, OK? Right. Home. Can't wait to put the kettle on. I have a proper cup of tea. That stampipe stuff tastes as soil. Oh, well, it'll be different tomorrow. You wait and see. Oh, have you heard something then? Is the water going to be back on? Uh, well, not in so many words, no. But what are you talking about? You know you're in a very funny mood, aren't you? I don't mean funny. Well, oh, mysterious. Thought we'd been like mysterious men. Not when it's your own husband. <laughs> Actually, I think you've got off very lightly. I had visions of someone putting a bucket through your window. Oh, well, it just shows how little you credit people with common sense, because they know where the fault lies, not with this council, with the council that Deirdre sat on. If they'd repaired the roads, there wouldn't have been a main collapse. Look, it won't be a case of party politics if this thing lingers on. I mean, if the longer they're without water, the worse it is for you. Not if I make provision. Right, what? Oh, there you go again, being all mysterious. Actually, you're right. I could get to quite like that. Oh. Well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. <Bet. clears throat> you bet. You up to? I'm not up to anything. What do you want? Milk, two bottles, coffee for the use of. Alex taking to street watching. He's up to now to now, I don't think. No, no, what, what, what I'm saying is it's at times like this we all need to lean on each other, don't we? <laughs> Your hardship has been alleviated, hasn't it? I mean, standpipes at each end of the street. Oh, that's true, yes. Oh, wrong knives, Derek, uh, uh, it's yes. fish. Oh, must observe the proprieties. <laughs> Back in a tick. Yes. Yeah, well, go but, on, Mr. Well, Miller. what with you being unaffected, you know, water-wise, I thought perhaps that we could engage... Oh, well, excuse me, Derek, will you just check that sauce? Don't want to overcook it. Yes, will do. I mean, not that I want anything with nothing, you understand. No, ready money is my middle name. I thought we had <laughs> six of these. I can only find five. Oh, six, surely, Derek. Not that we use six that often, just being the two of us, but there should be six. It was a wedding present. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was just Thank saying you. to your good lady, though, perhaps we could come to some arrangement, you know, that's mutually beneficial. <laughs> it's a bit vague, isn't it? I mean, I'm not sure where Mavis and I fit into Oh, well, this. I'm coming oh. to that. Yes, <laughs> the fish knife's all present and correct. Oh. Want to drop down to the drawer and oh. delay. Now then, what were you saying, Mr Gilroy? Well, if you'll stand still long enough, perhaps you'll find out. I've come to make you a proposition. Oh, I must say, your attitude is not exactly tailored to persuade. You said no yet. Precisely, but the very fact that you're in our house. Shifty and evasive. Shifty and evasive? You are being evasive, Mr Gilroy. I still don't know why you're here. Neither do oh, I. Oh, you don't, don't you? Well, I'll tell you then, shall I? While you're over here basking in the land of plenty, counting your cutlery, I'm stuck over there with no glasses, no carses, and the threat of closure. Now, I had come with the honest suggestion of piping what runs free over here to what we haven't got over there. But you can stick it. I'll say good night and leave you to your fish, your sauce, and the trivia you surround yourselves with. Now then, how's that for shifty and evasive? Oh. You did it, Ivy. Quite setbacks. Oh, well, somebody's got to keep this place going, haven't they? It'll be an invite for you after this. Press your glad rags for July the 5th. <laughs> you must be joking. Wild horses couldn't drag me. Right, Charlie. That's a consignment note and invoice, OK? OK. You know, I can forgive Bo with a techie plunge. He's always had his eye on main chance, but her... Ivy, 
Bob's been hardly cold and she takes another man to her bed. Book's a swanky place for reception and all. All shown, no shame, that's her. I I'm off in now. Hey, I just hope that she's got a few friends, cos Baldwin's got none. Could put all his friends into a phone booth and still have room for a buffet. <laughs> My office, Mrs Brennan. Now! Right, much obliged. I should be wearing a big black cloak and a tall hat, you know. Charging rent for a hovel without proper facilities. Sorry? Like silent movie landlord, you know, twirling me tash and shoving pregnant heroines out into the snow. Who's pregnant? Are you all right, Angie? Fine. Why shouldn't I be? I don't know. You seem a bit uptight. No trouble, is there? No. The water's still off, if that's what you mean. Oh, I know that. Still, you've got curly on hand, haven't you? I mean, to do the necessary. Carry buckets and what have you. Is he behaving himself? Ah, talk of the devil. Oh, hello, Rita. Hello, love. I've done a stew, OK, for after you can suck a pebble. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. Right. Ah, yeah, you have an effect, don't you? Hey. Yeah, she had not two words for me. Then you come in, she's all smiles, and it's grab a knife and fork. Right. Well, it's not easy cooking without water, Rita. You know, I mean, you've... Got to remember that the taps are just ornaments. Still, we wouldn't expect you overprivileged types to understand, would we, Kelly? Oh, OK, OK, I apologise. I'll leave you to get your tea. See myself out. Right, bye bye. Ta love. Ta -da. I've had an horrible day at work. Imagining all kinds of things, you know. I mean, I realise that uh, breakfast in bed isn't everybody's cup of tea. But it's the main meal, you know, in, in those health books. Well, maybe they don't read all the same books, I suppose. I'll just go and, um... Right. Wiltons, eh? <laughs> hey, pull that ladder pint. It'll not be your last time. Hey, good hey. news for me, boss, I'll tell you. <laughs> That's the spirit, Jack. Hey, Des, knit back and turn your tap on, will you? And in a minute, Jack, I want you to take this hose pipe upstairs and fill up the bath. The bath? Well, of course, the bath. We've still got to prime the cisterns, haven't we? I'll still be logging flaming buckets, won't I? Come on, Jack. Be glad we're back in business. Yes, I am. It's been back in traction I don't want. Go get yourself a drink, Bet. Oh, and pull us an Irish. This is cause for celebration. Hey, hey, hey. hey wait till the water... Go on! Oh, Jack. Jack. We both weren't ourselves. You just lost Raquel and I'd had my designs pinched. Neither of us was in a position to think clearly. I wasn't anyway. What you're saying is you uh, regret what happened? Yes, I do. I mean, it was something I'd never thought of. It never even crossed my mind that you... I was vulnerable, upset about what happened. Oh, and I took advantage, I suppose. No, no, you were as vulnerable as I was. Look, it was just as much my fault as yours. And I'm sorry if you think I led you on. I value your friendship, but I don't want to lose that. Look, I'll move out. It's the best thing. No, no, I don't want that either. We're both adults. We can cope. I mean, we can't forget about what happened, but we can agree it was a mistake. And I don't think we should talk about it, either to each other or to anyone. I'm not like that, Angie. No, no, I'm sorry. 
So what do you say? Well, it's forgotten. That's what you want. Never happened. Thanks. Just in time. The cup that cheers. Hey, have you seen that Heath Robinson contraption that Des Barnes has fixed up at Rovers? I bet there was some horse trading went on there. Hey, yeah. And poor old Jack's arms are coming out of his sockets. Alex running him ragged. What's up, love? What's to do? <laughs> Jackie Ingram done. She sacked me. Right there on the spot. She just sacked me. Tell you what, mate. For my next birthday, will you buy us an electric razor? <laughs> You'll be lucky. No tea, I see. <laughs> We've no water, have we? I told you, I said, if you want a cup of tea in the morning, get down to that stand five. Yeah, well, he could have got that, couldn't he, if he'd have been here, your so-called flaming father. Well, he is my father. There's no so-called about it. Showed his true colours, didn't he? Eh? As soon as the going got rough, he got going. Off like a rat up a ginnel, back to his own pad. Well, I'll tell you what. For two pins, I'll be joining him. Promises, promises. Now, look here. Get yourself dressed and get down to that stamp pipe. Why is it always me? Because I'm doing work, aren't I? Where does you don't start till God knows when? Now, the first bucket, I want you to wash these pots and then fill the bath up so we've got a good supply Whoa, of... Whoa, hang, hang on, hang on. I am not trudging back and forth to flaming Rosamond Street. We've only got one bucket, anyway. Well, I'll tell you what. Here. Get yourself down to that shop on Rosamond Street and get another bucket. Here. I'll tell you what. You can call that your next birthday present. Well, that's last at water. I'll get up to that stamp pipe when they turn it on. Yeah. Tell you what, I might as well take care there. Eh? Load it up as much as I can, save my legs. Yeah. No, love, you're not still moping, are you? Don, you've told me often enough, haven't you? Watch your mouth. Well, you were right. Oh, come on. No, you were right. And it's cost me my job this time, hasn't it? Not a bad job either, the way things are going. I must want me head feeling. Oh, come on, you're unlucky, that's all. Look, we've all said things out of turn. We've all said things we don't want overheard. And let's face it, what you said about Baldwin is no more than truth. He is a bad beggar with women. How many times have you said to me, engage your brain before you open your mouth? Well, I didn't. <laughs> and I'll tell you something, shall I? I like that job. I tell you what. She's probably cooled down by now, Mrs Ingram. She might be sorry she's given you a push. I mean, they don't know you're a good worker. No, Dan. You're right. Forget about her. Go see Baldwin. You've done him enough good turns in your time. I'd only be wasting my breath. Mike Baldwin couldn't care a toss about anybody but himself. Just like I said loud and clear yesterday. What about Laura Collins for the supervisor's job? She knows what it's all about. Or she should do by now. Yeah. Hang on a minute. She was Ivy's psychic, wasn't she? She may have picked up a few tricks. Let me think about it. True. Well, I'm going to do the monthly accounts today. Lunch, then? Yeah. Listen, these monthly accounts, you don't want to be bothered with them. Leave it all to me. Well, you know me. I like to pull my weight. You do, you do. But, I mean, the monthly accounts, every now and then it's OK. But you don't want to flog through those every month, do you? Well, it makes me feel virtuous. Yeah, listen, why don't you get that Laura Collins? Talk about the supervisor's job. You could be right there. I mean, a little chat won't do any harm, will it? Yeah. Tomorrow, maybe. You'd better think about it first. See you later. Yeah. Well, you know me. I mean, I call Alec Gilroy as much as anybody. But you've got to admit, he's all there with his cough drops. Uh, but he's not very intelligent, Rita. Not really. It's more a low sort of cunning. They were all saying you'd have to shut the pub, weren't they? But here he is with his hose pipe supply from Des Barnes' bathroom. He's just looking after number one, as usual. Of course he is. But we're all getting the benefit from him keeping the pub open, aren't we? Quite right. It's good for morale. 
I remember during the war... Alec Gilroy has not got one ounce of community spirit. That's why we turned him down, Derek and me, because he came to us first, you know, wanted to pipe our water across the road to the Rovers. <laughs> well, we gave him short shrift. And you turned him down? Yes. I don't believe it. Well, we haven't got much time for Mr Gilroy, Derek and me. That holiday business left a very nasty taste. When a man asks for water, you don't ponder his criminal record, you do the decent thing. Like in time of war, all personal grudges suspended for the duration. Oh, really, Mr Sugden? Mr Gilroy just wanted our water so he could wash his glasses and flush his toilets and sell a lot more beer to a thirsty population. I'm surprised at you, Mrs Wilton. I thought you had more feeling for your fellow man. And, and I'm saddened and all. It's sad to think your idol's got feet of clay. Drop her, sir. Oh, you didn't know he had a fan, did you? And now he's gone off you. It's just like life, isn't it? You never know what you've got till it's gone. My word, Councillor, take me out of to you. Oh, hello, Percy. That's the stuff to give the troops, eh? Are we downhearted? No, but the water, eh? I've just had the occasion to rebuke Mrs. Wilton, which I didn't enjoy, on account of her refusing uh, oath pipe privileges to our dear friend Mr. Gilroy. Yeah, well, he's, he's getting off desk now, isn't he? Yeah, so what you were doing is putting it to shame and all. Anyway, uh, I'd like four bottles for Mrs Bishop and myself. That's if I'm not exceeding my allocation. Yeah, it's first come, first serve, Percy. Help yourself. Right, you? thank you. Morning, Mrs Roberts. Oh, hi, Percy. I've just been complimenting the councillor on his public spirit. You must be very proud of him. Who else? Yes, I thought he'd pull out all the stops on this one. Oh, well, you know Alf Percy lies in bed at night, racking his brain. Well, you have what you do in public life, eh? Well, uh, I won't keep you. Uh, hang on, Percy, that's four bottles you've got, right? Four, yes. Right, well, that's uh, £1.40, please. £1.40? Yes. You're not charging for water. Percy, would you just take it up with Alf? Have I got this right? You're charging what? 35p a bottle for water? Yeah, that's the standard price, Percy. Water that falls from heaven? I did down for a decent man, a man trying to help his neighbours. Well, look, I've got to charge for it. I don't get it free, you know. It's profiteering, is that? Exploiting human misery. Well, you can keep your water, and I hope it chokes you. What did I tell you? What did I say? These poor Percy. <sighs> it's got to be hell in here today. Give over. Who else but Percy would think I could give it away for nothing? What's he think I do? Sit up all night, filling bottles from tap? But they're all going to come in here moaning. 35p a bottle. That's the retail price, woman. Well, you can tell people because I'm not. Where are you going now? Oh. Look, I want you here. Your place is here with me. I'm Paulie. Oh, That's yeah. why I'm going. Paulie? What do you reckon's up with you? The same as was up with you. Water on the brain. You won't be on your own, Vera. I've got you some assistance coming. Well, here she is now. Do you want me? Uh, yes, Miss Wollstone-Hume. I wouldn't have summoned you here if I didn't want you. Well, I'll rock hello. Uh, will yeah. you help Mrs. Duckworth stack these shelves, please? Right, ladies, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. According to Frank, they've come out wonderful. Beg your pardon? My shots, my portfolio. Oh, yes, yes, Frank. He's, uh, he's your photographer friend, isn't he? Would you like to have a look at them, your photos? Oh, yes, by all means, Miss Wollstone. You bring your snaps in. I'm sure they'll while away a few quiet minutes in the canteen for lunchtime. Do you know he puts me in mind of Roger Moore? No, he does. They're blase when he wants. I don't get it. What, love? When Kimberly Taylor packed him in, he went all to pieces, didn't he? Oh, he did, yeah. He don't seem bothered about me packing him in. No, he don't, does he? You'd think he'd make a bit of effort, though, wouldn't you? A crack on his desolated. But no! Oh, they're dead fickle, aren't they? Men. Get off up to that back room and make sure everything's ship -shape. I don't want any mess. I'll give Des the nod. Anything you say, boss. Roger will come out. Hey, less of that. She's paying your wages. If Des Barnes is watering my host pipe, you'll be laid off. Well, I wish I was laid off, but even on. I'll give Des the signal. All systems go, Des. Taps on. Des to Boozer. Message received and understood. The taps are going on now. Roger. Des. <laughs> Excuse me. Where, where, where do you think you're going? Well, I'm going into your public house. Oh, don't... yes, yes, yes. That's typical, that, isn't it, eh? You feel free to go in there and use my facilities, and yet when I make a polite request to use yours, I'm given a very dusty answer. Are you referring to your request about the hose pipe? Yes, I am. Well, that's totally different. Yours is a public house, ours is a private one. Yes, well, mine's private now, as far as you're concerned. 
Are you saying I can't go in now? What I'm saying is, you're about as welcome as I was when I came over to you in my hour of need. Deirdre, did you hear that? What? Mr Gilroy, I, I was just going to go into the Rovers and he started abusing me about the water. Oh, sorry, Mavis, I've got my own problems about water and other people's too. I'm just on my way to take it up with Councillor Roberts. I believe you've uh, parted company with Mike Baldwin again. Yeah. Mind you, it weren't him like it were her, Mrs Ingram. We, uh, we had a bit of a fallout. Oh, well, same difference if she's the Mrs Baldwin to be. Anyway, I'm back on job all the time. Yeah. Still, if I hear of anything. Oh. Hello, Deirdre. This isn't a social call, Alf, and I'm not shopping either. I've just come to ask what everybody else round here is asking. When the hell are you going to get something done about our water supply? Now, just a It's a fair question, Alf. Three days we've been without. You are the councillor for this ward. How about getting off your backside? Hang on a minute, dear. It's not Alf's fault that water's off. No, but it's his fault it's not back on again. If I was still councillor, I'd have had a bomb under that water company by now. Oh, sounds like a bit of sour grapes to me, does that? Yeah, well, it's very easy to talk. Yeah, I'll tell you what's even easier. Twiddling your thumbs and cashing in with your fancy bottles of mineral water. You have a mother with a young baby right next door. What's she supposed to do? Bath the kid in this stuff at 35p a bottle. Look, I'm doing all that's humanly possible. You might be doing a damn sight more if you still lived round here. But the water's still on in Grasmere Drive, I gather. Hey, hang on a minute. What do you want him to do? You want him to buy the water and then give it away? I'll tell you what I want him to do, Ivy. I want him to spend his time fighting for the people he represents instead of standing in his shop and coining it. Oh, take no notice, Alf. I mean, we're all wanting water back on, aren't we? But it's like I said, sour grapes. Anyway, I'll see you. Hey, just a minute, Ivy. Uh, thinking about you wanting a job. How do you fancy working in here? Here they are again, boss. Come and go Hey, don't leave that hose pipe. You'll have the house flooded. Oh, don't worry. That's on hose pipe duty. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Here, yeah, just, uh, just go and serve Mrs Roberts, will you, before you go back? Oh, yes, sick of course. Stay up with trousers. leg. I'll sweep the floor as I'm going along. Yes, go. Another gin and tonic in there. Right, uh, would you like another one, girls? Uh, no, no, I'm all right, though, thanks. Right. Hey, is it right that he's banned me this week? Oh, she's been asking for it. Do you know, she wouldn't let me and Alvera use their dog, you know? It makes you wonder, doesn't it, what she's hiding in their toilet? Mm. Derek's rubber duck will be my guess. Or at worst, it's Frogman's outfit. Has <laughs> <laughs> um, Alf been in here at all? Oh, not while I've been in love, no. Oh, I walked out on him this morning, left him on his own. So if he wants to go out for dinner, he'll have to shut shop. Fell out, are you? Do you know, I'm just so sick of all this argy-bargy about water. Well, there is some bad feeling. Mainly about this mineral water I'm selling. That is nothing to do with me, Emily. I told him there'd be ructions. Well, it's wherever you look. I mean, Mavis had a set to with Percy. And then she's some sort of row with Alec Gilroy in the street. So I hear. Oh, she come charging back in the cabin, spitting fire. Straight on the phone to Derek, come and sort Alec Gilroy out. She wants Derek to bash him, does she? Oh, don't think <laughs> Derek can resort to physical violence in any circumstance. Yeah, I don't oh, Jack, thanks. Plenty of ale, Oh, we are that. We're well, only just saying to check. Who's on the old spine? We don't want the bath overflowing. Calm down, Alec. Don't get your boxes in a muddle. Bath's less than half full. Anyway, there's no coming through. It's stopped. Death must have turned his tap off. Well, they've not given him the signal. What the devil's he played? I'll see about this. Look, I'm, I'm standing in free pints, and in return, I want a free flow of this water. It stopped. There's what the hell are you. Hey! Hey! You talking to me? Uh, would, yes, would you would you mind shifting your boat and you're parked on my horse pipe? I think we'll leave the car here, Mavis, and uh, walk down to the flying horse for a leisurely lunch. No, hang on, hang on. There's no need to get nasty. Me get nasty. Nastiness is all on your part. Now, against my wife. Look, look there's obviously been some misunderstanding. Yes, indeed there has. You've misunderstood the kind of people you're dealing oh, with. Derek, Mavis, will you never learn? It's uh, it's my sense of humour. I'm too straight-faced with it. The wife's always telling me that. No, no, no. 
Oh, no, I was just uh, pulling your good lady's leg. You were most unpleasant. No, no, love, it was, uh, it was tongue and she was that. You made it very obvious that I was not welcome in the Rovers. Not welcome, not welcome. No, you of course, you're welcome any time, and I'm prepared to prove that. Uh, come on, I mean, we are neighbours, aren't we? My wife will, of course, require an apology. I keep telling you, there's nothing to apologise for. I mean, it was just a leg pull. Uh, no, all right, all right, all right, look, I'm... Uh, I'm very, very sorry that my light-hearted banter has been taken the wrong way. Now, now, come and have a drink on the house. And lunch, of course. Mavis? All right. Good, good. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. You know, I'll tell you what, uh, Derek Oman, though. If, uh, if you are going to be drinking, knowing how easily you fall into the arms of Bacchus, uh, don't you think it would be a good idea if you, uh, if you move the car first? You know, better to be safe than sorry. Eh? Yeah. <sighs> I know I've just had a delivery. I want another one now, yeah? And you can double the order, yeah? I'll tell you what, make half of it um, sparkling and half of the ordinary, yeah. I say, there's no chance uh, today, is there? No. No, right. First thing in the morning, then. OK, great. Bye. Ah, the Wanderer returns. You're still in one piece, are you? Surprised nobody's put your window through. Now to come in out there taps, you flogging bottles. That's the most popular line we've ever had. I've just put another order in. Hard-faced, how? Give over. That's my role in life, isn't it? Give the people what they want, supply and demand. Anyway, you're stopping. Mm, I suppose so. Good. There's your cup of tea, Alfred. Oh, Ivy. Oh, well, you can see the wife's back now, so if you want to get off and make your arrangements. Yes, OK. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Half past eight. Half past eight. Right. right. See you then. Tra. Tra, Roddy. Yeah. See you. Yeah. What's she doing here? Oh, been helping you out, has she? Well, actually, she's been given the push from Ingram, oh. so uh, anyway, I've set her on. Oh, <laughs> you're kidding me, aren't you? What do you say? We always need a, an assistant, so now we've got one. You're not kidding me? Oh, my Lord. Ivor. It's going to the last one to go. What's the matter? A couple of billion, Mrs. What are Alcazar holding? Who are they? Alcazar holding. Oh, that's us. Well, Ingram's, that is. It's just uh, a little holding company, that's all. Well, I don't remember seeing the name before. Because it's recent, that's why. It's uh, just a shell company, you know. You put money in, take money out, maximise tax benefits, that's all. I see. But we've never... Yeah, listen, I've been thinking about that idea. What? Well, Laura Collins, a supervisor, you're really set on it, aren't you? Not necessarily. I mean, does it have to be a woman? I think we need new blood in there, you know. Get people thinking differently about the way we do things. And that is another thing. What? Taking you out tonight and somewhere different. Hiya. Hello. Don't suppose the water's back on yet? No such luck. What's this, something new? Oh, just a glimmer. But this time, nobody sees it. Nobody. Except people I can trust. Oh, how you know who that is? Ah, well, that's where you have to use your judgement. But I'll tell you this. Where emotion gets involved, judgment goes out of the window. What brought that on? Yeah, well, I've been thinking today, haven't I? Ooh, you want to watch that. Could get to be a habit. I was thinking that in life, you've got to be aloof, controlled. I mean, Raquel came talking to me today, and at one time, I would have got myself all worked up. But I just detached myself, stood on the outside looking in, amused by life's little ironies, if you like. It's the only way I can handle it. Well, I agree with you. Detachment, avoiding involvement, Including us, Curly. I mean, we both know what happened the other night had no meaning. It was just an accident. A purely one-time thing. Of course. Um, are you in tonight or out? Um, in, I think. Unless you've got any plans. If you've got someone coming round, I can always make myself scarce. No, no, I'm just working. Do you want to eat together? Yeah, why not? I'll tell you what, I'll do it. How do you fancy, uh, beans on toast? Fine. I can definitely stay emotionally neutral about beans on toast. She's a good worker. I mean, look at their house. She keeps it like a clinic. Yeah, about as much fun and all. Well, it's not about fun, is it? It's about the shop. I mean, she's, she's honest, she's reliable. You can that always... tongue of hers can do as much damage as a chainsaw. Listen, she's always putting people's backs up. She'll do the same to your customers. Yeah, look, let me worry about the customers. Well, I think you need your head examined. So, it's not me that's got to put up with it. It's not me that's got to put up with her all day and every day. 
Just don't come moaning hey, to listen, me, it's please. not just me that we're working with her, you know. In fact, mainly not me. Uh, what are you trying to say, Alf? What are you trying to hint at? Well, now I'm back on the council, of, I won't be there as much, will I? Hey, Well, no, it's right, it's right. I will be out a lot more. So I didn't get in as a replacement for you. I got in as an assistant. So now you can well, make Well, we'll get one thing straight right away, Alf. I'm not working with either. Oh, now, oh, come on, love. Oh, no, Alf, never. I'd rather work nights at a sewage farm. <laughs> Good evening, baby. Derry. Uh, Derry, lad. Uh, hello. Um, single malt, pet, please, and uh, medium sherry. Alec, are these on the house for maybe some Derry? Uh, oh, certainly, certainly, by way of compensation for my little joke with Miss Fadden. He loves a little joke, you know, my husband. Mind you, I do an all. Would I have married him if I didn't? Well, we laughed about it in the end, didn't we, Derry? In the end, yes. Oh, we were chuckling all afternoon. <laughs> Me and Alec, weren't we? <laughs> About the way you squashed his little horse pipe. <laughs> it's given me some ideas, I can tell you. Hey, you're supping that like there's no tomorrow. Why not? I give you free water, you give me free ale. Well, I hope this little arrangement doesn't turn you into an alcoholic. Well, we can always pack it in if you like. Uh, no, 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 no. We'll be needing a top up in a few minutes. It's <laughs> a half this time, is it? I'll tell you when I want half measures, Alec, thanks. Half a bed better, please. What's your man playing at? I'm gunga in it. What do you think I'm playing at? Water's been back on, best part of an hour. You what? Hey, Alec Water's on! Hey. Hey. Flaming hour, and I've been carting this all the time. 98 p Desmond. Only one and a half, Alec. Well, I'll say this for you, you certainly dish up a mean bean. What about the toast? Lightly browned, not a hint of charring. Organisation, detachment, objectivity. That is the secret of good cooking, as in all human endeavours. And they are going to be my watchwords from now on, Angie. Organisation, detachment, objectivity. Good for you. Mm. Well, Shakespeare do you know. Oh, yes. Show me the, the man that is not passion's slave, and I will show you a, a something, something to the heart's core. Oh, notice this about you. You love Shakespeare, don't you? Ah, well, the only comment I can make at this precise moment in time is Mr Shakespeare and myself are just good friends. Don't like him myself. Of course, we're in ram down our throats at school. Exactly. And you reacted against it. One emotion begets another, equally violent. Hence the ebb and flow of human passions, making waves, throwing up human wreckage upon life's beach. So, cool and calm, detachment, objectivity. Right. Only fools rush in, and we have to admit, the other night, we were foolish. Yes, we were. Totally unplanned. Say that again. We just weren't thinking straight. It's a good job we have the ability to analyse what happened, put it into context, not get all uptight about it. Right. Hey, that was great, kid. Cracking on your back. We're bad, so you can get off work early. My back is bad, woman. Well, you have to have a bath when you go in. Now, water's on. That immersion will get water red off. No, I thought you were having a bath. So there's no law against it, is there? Two's company. No, that's not right, that beer. Look, we've got the house to ourselves. My dad's not in tonight. Eight hey, ages since we had a bath together. No, I've got my pigeons to feed, love. Yeah, well, I fed them. Yeah, you know, with me back. My back, you know, I'm, I'm sure I've I'll try my gym. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hang about, hang about. What? Can you hear that funny noise? Oh, I can hear out. Oh, Lord! Oh, Lord! We've had a flood! Oh! Vera. Uh, you won't believe it. You won't believe what's happened. You're going to ask me for the day off, aren't you, oh, Vera? Coming home last night and find it. We're a nightmare, a nightmare. You won't believe it. Try me, Vera. I'm in the middle of my breakfast and I'm late for work. Well, I'm a coming in a walk. Uh, no, uh, not really. I don't think Angie's decent. Anyway, you were saying. Well, we left the taps running, didn't we? 
Well, it's the one I thought, but I know it what it is. But what's the point in arguing? I mean, it's done. You left the taps ring. Oh, of course they weren't, because the water were off. But then it come back on again, and well, water right through. We're flooded. It's still running through now, and it's waterlogged in the ceiling. I don't know where to start. Yeah, sounds a bit uh, inconvenient, Vera. Oh, I can't bear to look at it. I, I feel like killing myself. Uh, look, Vera, take the day off. Oh, you'll tell all's with for me. Yeah, uh, he's not in today, so you've done all the telling you need. Well, I'd sooner be stacking shelves and stacking that stuff in my backyard and wringing me carpets out. Yeah, well, uh, you, you, you'd better get on and um, uh, I'll, uh, look, uh, just, just don't worry about it, all right? Oh, you're a good one. <laughs> hey, what do you mean she's not decent? Oh, it'd make life a lot easier for you anyway, because you find she's got a very quick grasp of things. Oh, aye, right, well, if she's half as quick as she is at taking a fan. Yeah, well, she's got it up here, you see. And I haven't, I suppose. Yeah, she's one of life's workers. Oh, well, if she's in Russia, she get a medal. Yeah, and another thing. I don't want to know how. She's honest, is Ivy. I mean, oh. you trust her till the crack of doom. No, we'll not find anyone better. Say what you like. Oh, I will say what I like. Don't you worry. I shall definitely feel free to say what I like. <sighs> I've got nothing against Audrey Roberts. What? As long as she don't leave me to do her washing up, she can do what she wants. You see what I mean? Christmas, that was. Christmas, and you haven't forgotten. No, and I've not forgot Christmas before, either. She's getting too fond of them sort of tricks. I get on all right with her husband. I don't ever remember having a crossword with Alf Roberts. Yeah, all right, OK, Angela, but just remember one thing. What's that? I got sacked from last time. Oh, thank you very much. Now, why do you have to go dragging that up? You ended up on paper because you got right across the boss's wife. Yes, well, she's not his wife yet. And she'll regret it when she is. You just remember who it was who told you. Out of love, just keep your opinions to yourself. What are you going on about? Them two, I think they're both on the primrose path. But what do you expect all young people on a house on their own together? I mean, it's just too strong. Well, never mind their house. How is he like a swamp? You can't make a cup of tea, can't cook breakfast, probably wants rewiring, and look at the carpets, look at the carpets. Don't you think I don't know? Yeah, well, go going on about Curly's place. You've got enough to think about with his place. I don't want to think. If I start thinking, I'll start screaming. Screaming will be a damn sight more use. Ah! Do one for me. Uh, can't do all for yourself, you, can you? Why is it always so? Why is it always so? Because it always is. Yeah, well, I don't care. I have had it up to there, and I don't care. Where are you going? I'm going to chuck myself in the cot. Oh, I go on, leave everything to me again. Yeah, well, it's, it's all too much for me. It's too much on my mind. It's too much. Anyway, we both can't have a day off work. But you've got hours yet. Going in early. Oh, Ivy, now we're quiet. Let me just tell you about this till. Then I can get off to my committee meeting. Now, have you any experience of these things? No. Hey, but Alf, don't tell me here. It's been her big ambition to get on checkout. <laughs> anyway, um, this thing, it's not just a draw for putting the money in, you see. It tells me all sorts. It tells me everything. It Well, anyway, it's the pulse of the entire business, is that? Hey, you're beginning to frighten me a bit here. Yeah, having said that, though, it's a very stupid machine because it tells you nothing unless you tell it. Now, say we're checking this stuff, please. Uh, I think yes. I'll just go and pop over to the cafe, get this thermos filled with tea. Pop over and see Alma, you mean? Well, you want a cup of tea, won't you, when you've got through the lecture of the marvels of your till? Have you not got a kettle in back? Uh, well, the water's off, isn't it? No. Back on again, it come on last night. You what? I've got a big order for mineral water. i better go cancel that. Thanks for telling me, though. Uh, listen, will you show Ivy how to handle it? Look, I've got to go on the... I'll just go on the blower. Oh, well, oh, yeah. Ivy, go to the top of the class. I'm sorry, I suppose you wanted to go to the cafe. <sighs> Never mind about that. Now, pay attention, and by dinner time, you'll know as much as I do. I don't think so. Oh, I would. And if there's any questions at all, Ivy, any questions, don't hesitate, just ask. I, will. I mean, whatever it is, ask, and ye shall be told, and we'll all get on very well. Well, I'm willing to be told. And I'm willing to tell you. Sorry, Phyllis. Oh, it's all that, love. I'll have this and I'll have that. Hey, how do you do it, Phyllis? How do you mean? Stay so cheerful. <laughs> oh, simple. I've no imagination. Ah, oh, that's it, is it? Hey, it can be a curse imagination, putting yourself to death over things that might never happen. Mm. Me, I'm daft. I think everything's going to be nice. You've got it. I mean, take Mavis. Cinemascope her imagination and she's a misery. I'm not 
not a misery. You are a misery. I mean, you're going round like, like I don't know what. Oh, dear, your powers of description do seem to be waning. Along with my powers of conversation. These things need stimulating. Who needs stimulating? You said three words all morning, all miserable. Same with Percy. He can be right gloomy. Same thing. Too much going on round here. Hmm. Now, me, I'm a physical person. Entirely physical. Always was. To that, love. See you, love. To that. Hey, this will cheer you. I don't need cheering up. Have you read this article on parsnips? Oh, what do I want to know about parsnips? Oh, do wonders for you. One week it's fibre, the next week it's carrot juice cures everything. What are parsnips supposed to do for you? It's what they do for your fella. According to this article, the ancient Egyptians believed them to be a powerful aphrodisiac. The ancient Egyptians didn't have parsnips. A puzzling picture on the tomb of thingy, however you say that lot, could well be a parsnip, according to Jocasta Knowles Denby. It is explicitly connected with the hieroglyphics for desire. Very explicitly, she says. Oh, she says all sorts. She says there's some doctor in California says it's true. Says he prescribes parsnip extract for the stars when they fear they are losing their virility. There you are, Mavis. The parsnip path to passion. Feed him up. There's recipes. Jocasta knows Demby. Where do they get names like that from? Go and put kettle on. Do you want a chocolate biscuit? Uh, I wouldn't mind. Um. Yeah, it is. That? Yeah, you just press that one. Well, I know which one to press, it's just knowing when to press it, oh. so... Right, that's seven pound and five pence, love. Oh, that's what Rosie weighed when she was born. Oh, ain't it funny how you never forget how much they weighed. Oh. Eight? Eight pound four hour, Brian. Thanks, love. And how much do you weigh now, then, little judgy face? Eh? You're a big fat lump, you now, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> Listen, you haven't come here to get your eye on me, have you? No, it does seem a bit funny seeing you there, though. Sal, you don't think I'm trying to take your job, love, do you? No, I feel like I've burnt my bridges a bit, but... Well, let's see, I might not last. <laughs> Hi, Sal, there. Oh, oh Rosie. Oh, oh. oh, there's your tea, Ivy. Oh, have yeah. you? Do you know, Sally, I would have said you were irreplaceable, but I haven't seen Ivy. Honestly, she's picking it up that fast. I'm sure she is. This time next week, we will have made Alfie redundant. She will know more about his business than he does. Right, now, if you want anything, Ivy, I'm in the back, repricing the cat food. Yeah, but Ivy noticed it were priced up wrong. She hasn't even got a cat. <laughs> so, how are you getting on with Madam? Well, fair does, if she's going out of her way to be nice to me. If you find me safe. Yeah, but I mean, think about them people in the... Oh, where was it? Um, Tawin. It's the Irish Sea we're on about, you know. There's no stop cocks on there. I don't know how they ever get over it. No, I'll tell you what seems to be the worst thing for me is earthquakes. I mean, Armenia. Think of it. Whole cities just rubble. You can't imagine it, can you? Look, you can tell when the flood's coming, mm. but with an earthquake, it must be the shock of it. Yeah, but there's people living under volcanoes, aren't there? Yeah, what was that thing in America? Just blew up a big mountain. Mount St. Helens. Oh, and Tim Arbus ignores everything. Look, so all right, it was only our house, and it's not an international disaster, and nobody's rang for the Red Cross, but to me, it's my little home. And all our bits and pieces were scraped together over the years, right? Yes, well, we know that. Yes, well, if somebody had come round and told us the water was back on, we might have gone and checked before the bat overflowed. Nobody deliberately kept it from you. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not. No, I'm not. I mean, the Lord, he went and told Noah, didn't he? Well, no beggar came round and told us. No, the Lord took pity on Noah because he knew the lad didn't have any insurance, but he had to build an ark. All you have to do is make out a claims form. You are insured, aren't you? Well, we we'll would pay it in, yes, but I think it's violent theft. Don't talk, said Daft. Go and check your policy. Love, thank you. Bye, Echo. Okay. You rattle through that like a good dog. Thanks. Born to it. Do you know that some at Alfie especially mentioned intelligent is Ivy? That's what he oh, said. Well. And honest. That's another thing he said, Ivy. Well. Do you know he said you could leave Ivy on her own? You could be perfectly happy because you know she is so totally honest. I mean, them were his words. Are you going for your dinner? Oh, so there you are. I mean, I've got total confidence in you. I've taught you everything I know, so I mean, there's no point in me interfering with you. I love it. Well, I just again. would. Uh, 
So I am going into town, are they? Right? Think of yourself as a manageress. It'll all come totally natural, eh? Off. She went off. Where's off? Well, I can't rightly say. I think she went for a dinner. Well, when was this? Well, now, if it's not up to me to be keeping track on everybody what time they come or go. Yeah, well, it's not right. It's not right, Ivy. You should not be left in the shop by yourself. Well, we did all right. Uh, did you get any dinner by yourself? Uh, no. no, you didn't, did you? Three o'clock, you've had no dinner. Well, I had a pasty off, but I put money in too. <sighs> Look, I can only apologise. It won't go on like this. Look, take an hour now if you want, love. Well, it's all the same to me. I'll stop on. All right. Hey, Alf. You know, uh, how did your committee go? I mean, it's your first one since your election, isn't it? Ah, it was, you know. I felt as if I was back where I belonged. I did. Oh, well, I bought it for you. Yeah, well, you won't regret it, love. Now, if we could just get my wife to stay where she belongs, we'll get somewhere. Feed up! Where are you? Fiona, what are you doing? Waiting for the sun to come out. Oh, no, come on. I mean, but what about the state of the place? Oh, you don't have to tell me about the state of the place. Oh, now, come on, Vera. Never mind, come on, Vera. You're not the only one that can feel sorry for herself. You've been sat there all day? No, but I'm sat here now. Do you know what I'm thinking? I've spent all my life cleaning up. Even my mother kept me off school to clean up. I mean, you must be feeling sorry for yourself. That's going back a bit, love. Everything from cat's mess to Christmas. Yeah, it's always there for Vera to clean up. And then water bursts. Oh, I'm just sick of it. So, it's Jack clean up then, is it? I don't care. Yeah. Brought you some hot pot from the pub. Thought you might like it. Tell you what, me and you might clean up if we play as cards, right? I don't know what I'm going to do, Emily. No sort of plan at all. I live in hopes, that's all. Oh? If I knew that, my troubles would be over. No, one thing. You should find it easier getting a job than most people. Well, that you can't have spent four years on the council without making contacts. Or enemies. But I can't say the thought hadn't crossed my mind. Afternoon, ladies. Hiya. Hello. Well, you know what they say? It's not what you know, it's who you know. Put in the hours I've put in on that council and you end up knowing a few whys and wherefores as well. Mm -hmm. I wish you luck anyway. Oh, I just need to pick myself up off the floor. What are you doing here? Looking for kidney beans. Oh, yes, around there. No, I don't go around there. Why not? Well, there's people. So? No, there's people from our street. Well? Well, if they see you, they might think that you've come here because... Well, you know, that we've... Uh, it doesn't show you, know. Even your own mother wouldn't know. Yeah, but I dropped a clanger this morning with Vera. Oh, yeah? Well, I said you weren't decent. I just didn't know what I was saying, because she was all worked up about something. And anyway, she didn't twig it until I shut the door. Is that all? Well, she'll tell everybody. So she does. Oh. <coughs> Hello. Hello. <coughs> Would you just mind moving on to frozen veg or something, just for a minute? Only well, we're having a difficult uh, exchange of intimacies, and I may be about to cry. Oh, sorry if we're intruding. And if you're driving past Polly tonight, I've got a big bag spin every on the bus, all right? Right, yeah, right. Uh, kidney beans, down there. Give the supervisor go to check out four, please, immediately. Thank you. Polytechnic. <laughs> They're all mad. <laughs> Where they find the nonsense to put in these magazines, I really don't know. Folk like nonsense. I do myself. Oh, but people believe it. You've been reading that article about parsnips, haven't you? No. Yes, you have. You think your Derek could do with a bit of g and up? Oh, Derek doesn't need any g and up. There's nothing wrong with Derek. So I'm wondering if, well, perhaps it could be me. Oh, Mavis, love, I'm sorry. I was only joking. I didn't think I know, for a but minute. It was... Well, it's not the sort of thing he can discuss. Well, maybe Derek's been under a lot of strain at work. Oh, he has, I know. Well, well then, why don't you take him away on holiday somewhere and unwind him? Well, we were talking about that very thing last night. And Derek said he'd like to go to Scotland for a week and just sleep. Oh, well, I don't know what to say to that, love. 
The funny osset is, you know, fellas, you could try parsnips. Keep the change, Bob. Ta-ra! No, no. But they bring them Thanks. to that. <laughs> so, how are we all getting on, then? You've been gone all afternoon. So I have, same as you were gone all morning. I had a planning meeting. Oh, isn't that funny? So did I. I was planning how to make the best of myself so that you would be proud of me when we went away on holiday. Which reminds me, is another planning meeting we ought to have. I mean, all work and no play. Yeah, well, I think we've got other things to discuss before that. Is that right? Well, just remember, you're not the only one that puts things down on an agenda, you know. Ivy, love, I think you can uh, knock off now. Oh, if that's all right. Yes, and you? I won't forget you never got any dinner hour. Nice, I'll get me caught. Yeah, and thank you very much. You did very well on thank your first you day. Well. I don't know how you managed, love. In fact, I don't even know where some of us were. Have a night, my love. Right, love, I'll see you tomorrow then. Okay. It's not good enough. Oh, is it? Good enough for you, love. It's good enough for me. You just left her. She'd never worked in a shop before in her life, and you just walk out and leave her to it. Evening. So, how did you enjoy your first day at work then? Well, I don't know if it's madness or a little streak of wickedness, but um, I think I might have enjoyed it. Honest, Phil, I don't think I'd enjoy going to a club or anything, really. But you need cheering up. What I need more is sitting down to get myself straight, work out where I'm going to go from here. OK, we'll just go for a drink. You do your thinking out loud and I'll listen. Well... All right, then, but we give next door a miss. Oh, you can't boycott the place just cos Alec worked for Alf Roberts. I wouldn't say boycott. Anyway, it's handy. What about you, any road? Me? Yeah, Alec reckons you diddled him or cut him out or something over that club business. Oh, that's pathetic. He was never going to do anything about any club. It was all talk. Oh, I've still not forgiven him for all that family value stuff on his leaflet. They cut that up between them. Forget it. There's more to life than sitting on Weatherfield Council with a bunch of fat grocers. Yeah, that was personal. You're bigger than that. Look, we walk in there, we shake hands with him. You know, you could do it in a nice civilised way that'd make him look about that big. Come on. Oh, I'm going to write to the Borough Engineer, the Department of Transport, the Rhodology Association, the Royal Society for Prevention of Accidents and the noise abatement people while I'm at it. Yeah, well, what you need, Percy, is a fax machine. On the other hand, you could have just put a knot on fella's windscreen. Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Yes, and I told him I was going to write to and all. It ended no business to be parking there in the first place. Hello there. I've not seen you for a while. I thought you'd emigrated. I'd no country you'd have me. I wrote to all of them. Oh. Is uh, Alec in the back? Uh, no, no, he's not in trouble. He's better. Uh, no, no, they've given themselves a night out. <laughs> oh, well. Well, in that case, we'll stop and have a drink. <laughs> Is that funny? No, no, no. Just, uh, just tell him we were in. Yeah, I will. Fear that must have been awful. Oh, well, I'm over it now. Yeah, it takes the art out of you, though, doesn't it? Oh. Especially if you've just decorated out. Oh, wait, well, listen, why didn't you call on me? I could have <coughs> given you a hand. We well, were took... working. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I took the day off, you know. But then I took one look and I thought, I can't be doing with this. I went and sat in the yard. I just ignored everything. But... She did, you know. Yeah, I went in the trams. For all good I were doing, I might as well have gone into work. Well, you seem to have cheered up now. Ah, well, she's seen the silver line, aren't she? The insurance. Oh. You are insured, then? Well, I didn't think we were. Oh, you're dead right. I mean, look at it the right way, you know. It's a godsend. Yeah, I've just been saying we could do it all, do we? Never mind the all. What about the living room, the coal hall, the lots? Oh, flip it, <laughs> next, Jack. What was it? An overflow or a remake at Dambus? Like Niagara, pal, like Niagara. Oh, it were, it were. Anyway, we're going to have the place furnished, carpeted, decorated. It'll finish up looking like Buckingham Palace. Well, good luck to you, mate. You'll be able to read it on a black outside. These magnificent premises refurbished by Lloyds of London. <laughs> oh, yeah, look on bright side, eh? <laughs> you know... I'd be glad to crawl into my bed tonight. Do you find yourself getting tired these days, Derek? Well, I must admit, these days I do think it's a young man's game. Mm, you'd say that, wouldn't you, Derek? Well, it seems to get on top of me more than it used to, I tell you that. Do you find that you get headaches? Headaches? No, he doesn't get headaches. Well, no, it's funny you should say that, Rita, because these days I find I do tend to. Comes on when I'm driving home, then I can't get rid of it. Yep, it's only I... been once or twice, Derek. Well, I think it's been a bit more than that. You see, it starts around oh, the back. Look. See who's back in. Who? Them. Oh. No, it's funny you should mention it, Rita, because I feel it coming on now. Derek, and... I think we ought to be going home. The fact is, you're in stuck. Oh, I wouldn't say it was all that bad. <laughs> However bad stuck is. 
Well, you've got nothing to live on. I've got my house, and there's what he pays for Tracy. She won't go hungry. My mate Tomo, when he was weighing things up, deals, anything, used to make two lists. Cheers and tears. The cheers list included all the good points. The tears list, all the grief. His cheer list included not paying rates, not having to go out in the rain for coal, and never having his in-laws round for Christmas. Mind you, he was doing five years at the time. So he didn't need a job either, and I do. Still, I do have some hopes. You think someone's just going to offer you a job? Well, no, not just like that, but I mean, I... What do you mean? Well, I mean, I know people. You know me? So? So? Are you going to ask me for a job? No. Why not? I'd employ you. Don't be daft. If you say that to all the people you know, you're not going to get very far, are you? Are you serious? Sure. I could do with a personal assistant. Oh, Phil. I'm really... But no, no, no. Why not? Oh, I like us the way we are. Anyway, you're just being mad. Lovely, but mad. I'll get a job. Ain't that easy out there, sweetheart? But don't you worry about me. I'll manage. Oh, bills, bills. Have you seen my new netboard sharp? Ah, uh, yeah, here in your bag. How much? It can't be. You've not been using those chat lines again, have you? Of course not. It'll be all them council calls of yours. Oh, well, there won't be any more of those. Can I have the rest of my French trip money? I still owe £75. You must be joking. Oh, Mum, there's a meeting today. Nearly everybody's paid already. Yeah, well, maybe they haven't got single-parent, unemployed families. I will be able to go, won't I? Of course you will, love. Look, I'm going to the job centre today to find a job. Just tell your teacher the money's coming. I promise. OK? OK. Well, it's dead embarrassing. Householder. Jack. Duh. Oh, my flaming biro's running out. Have you got one? No. You'll have to go get one from cabin. Ah, no, don't worry. I'll nick one from the bookies later on. Look, I want that scene to today. I am sick of looking at this mess. But we've got to get an estimate first, haven't we? So phone somebody up. Only we don't want any cowboys like last time. Don't worry. There's going to be no spur marks on your line. No, I am going to take this insurance company for all I can. I pay enough flaming premiums. Right, as long as it gets done. No, no, you see, you're missing the point, B. We could milk this for all it's worth. That's what insurance is for. I mean, you, you could have the decoy you've always wanted, no expense spared. Well, for a start, you can splash out on a new buy row. Right, old boss. But don't forget, electric man's coming. You need to check wiring. Oh, hell, I'll, I'll, I'll ring Alec. I'll tell him we'll be in late. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Well, am I? Morning off work, decorating, don't for note. And do you think we can milk them? Sky's the limit, kid. You start dreaming. <laughs> We'll just have That's to see how she gets on. I mean, it's early days yet. Yes. Bye, Mrs. Lacer. Love to Mr. Lacer. Morning, me. Good morning. Are you listening, love? Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Good, because I'm in a hurry. Now, look, you always put your stock out. Never have stock in the back when you can put it on the shelves. That's the cardinal rule of the grocery business. Uh, yes, Mavis, can I help you? Oh, well, I, I was looking for parsnips, but you don't seem to have any. No, no, well, they're out of season, you see. Uh, I've got some lovely carrots. Uh, no, no, thank you. No, it has to be parsnips. Oh, what about uh, tin swedes? New oh, line? No, sorry. Uh, Mavis, you probably get them from Better Buys. Mind you, they'll be expensive. Yes, Better Buys. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll try. Oh, I thank know. you. Ivy, love, you can't do that. Pardon? Recommend another shop. I mean, better buys are bleeding us to death than it is. Well, was only... When you get that sort of situation, you try and sell them something else. I was only trying to help you. Well, you won't help us by sending folks to better buys, will you? I mean, they don't pay your wages, do they? Well, there's my lunch hour gone. Come to having to traipse all the way to better buys for something as simple as that. As what? Oh, nothing special. It's a long way go for now, special. I was hoping to get it prepared at lunchtime as well. Now it shall be all of a rush. Well, why don't you nip to better buys now while we're quiet? Oh, that'll be a help. Well, off you go, then. Oh, all right. Well, I won't be long, then. Um, is there anything you want while I'm there? Well, I'll have a bit of ginseng and a jar of royal jelly and ask them if they've got any extract of monkey gland. Fish, <laughs> 
Monkey gland? Yeah, it's a great pick-me-up. So busy. Oh, I could do with some of that at present. Oh, no luck job hunting. I'll let you know when I've been to the job centre today. I mean, somebody like you, with your experience on the council and that, you'd be a real asset to anybody. Well, I hope so. Anyway, uh, how much do I owe on my papers? Uh, two weeks, I think, love. Yes, two weeks till last Saturday. Can it wait till the end of the week? Of course it can. End up month if you want. I'm not pushed. Oh, thanks. Listen, have you tried any of your old council contacts for a job? A lot of them are in business, aren't they? Well, I'm sort of saving that as a last resort. Mm. I hate all that string pulling malarkey. You know, jobs for the boys. Yeah, well, sometimes you have to swallow your principles or stuff. Mm, that's what Phil said. Is he still around? Yes. I know folk thought he'd drop me as soon as I lost the election, but actually, he offered me a job. Oh? Well, I don't think it was a proper job, really. I think he just felt sorry for me. And the last thing I want right now is charity. Ah, it can backfire things like that, can't it? And if you jump when you're desperate, you sometimes leave your parachute behind. Well, I'm in free fall at the moment. I just hope it's there when I pull the cord. It clearly says special offer. You've checked up full amount. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sogden. What's this? Have you got a problem? No, no, it's just a mistake. No, it's got to be a special offer, you see. I never pay full price till I've tried things out. Of course, Percy, of course. I just oh. didn't see it. Oh, we'll have to keep our eyes open, won't we, in future weeks? 3P, Percy. Much obliged. I mean, uh, I know it was a genuine mistake, but had it been an old pension, I'd have spotted it. Right. It'd have been out of pocket, wouldn't it? It's hard enough coping on a pension as it is. Quite right, Percy. Thanks for spotting it. Oh, that's all right. Well, uh, bye-bye, Mrs. Roberts. Bye-bye, bye -bye, Percy. <sighs> Lots of fuss over nothing, if you ask me. It may be nothing to you, either, but they happen to be our customers. We have a reputation to keep up. You don't mind taking a late lunch, do you? I've got some shopping I want to do. The green. Might go with black, yeah. Problem, Mrs. Duckworth. Hey, what do you think? Does that go with that? Baked beans and pineapple chunks. I don't think even your Jack could stomach that. You know what colours I mean? Do they match? Yeah, do we don't stack by colour, we stack by produce. Look, it's for my living room, I'm decorating. Do they go together, you know? I'd prefer it if they went the separate ways to the shelves where they belong. Which side of bed did you get out of this morning? Just what are you implying, Mrs. Duckworth? Well, somebody's rattled your cage. Look, my sleeping arrangement's my own affair. I mean, my own business. My own business. Uh, excuse me. Ah, well, yes, Mrs. Wilton. What uh, can we do for you? I was just wondering uh, where'd you keep your parsnips? Ah, well, the fresh parsnips weren't up to our standard, I'm oh. afraid. But we do have some frozen in. Follow me. <clears throat> Here we are. Frozen parsnips. They come in a uh, two-pound bag. Ooh, very expensive. Ah, you see, but they're exceptional quality. Oh. They're, they're picked very young and immediately frozen to retain that, that goodness and freshness. What you're looking at there is concentrated parsnip. Oh, well. So, uh, just the one bag or two? Uh, uh, just the one, thank you. Well, there you have it. <laughs> yes. Oh, is there anything else? No, no. Well, thank you. Mr. Watts, to bakery, please. Mr. Watts, to bakery. Oh, thanks. Hey, uh, how's it working out with you and Curly? Hi. Behaving itself, is it? How do you mean? Well, him being a man and all, you know. Dirty socks all over the place, vests stuck under cushions, that kind of lark. Oh, no, no, it's quite tidy, actually. Well, I go, me must have changed. You must have got a right grip on him, eh, Purse? Um, how's your uh, flood repairs going, Jack? Oh, magic. Got the decoration coming round tomorrow. Give us our an estimates. I think we make a killing on the insurance. Oh. Typical that, isn't it, eh? Deceit and deception is running rife in this country. It's full like you to put all our premiums oh, up. Oh, give over. Insurance companies are raking it in. You want to be careful how you step, I'm telling you. You could fall right into it. I mean, if your estimate's over a certain amount, they send an assessor around to check. Oh, and that's given you so much to think about, hasn't it? And for the last four years, I've been uh, doing my council work and bringing up my teenage daughter. So no proper job? Well, I call those proper jobs if you do them right. Mm. And the secretarial work you did? A year at a secretarial bureau, and before that, five years as a secretary with a building firm, Fairclough and Langton. Right. Word processing skills? Ah, uh, no, it was only a small firm, just shorthand and typing. Mm, it's a bit out of date, all that, I'm afraid. Even the small firms would like word processing nowadays. 
We do get the occasional filing work, but employers like to use teenagers for that. Yeah, so they can pay them peanuts and sack them when they like. Ah, uh, look, I'll try anything. Well, with a recession like it is, there isn't much about for people without skills. I do have some skills. I'm, I mean, I'm good on the phone. I can talk to people. Probably a bit too well for some employers. They might be a bit wary of taking on an ex-counsellor. Look, your best plan would be a retraining scheme, really. A word processing course might be a good start. Those schemes only pay the dole, plus travelling expenses. I'll need more than that to live on. Well, there is income support, of course, but you'll need to see Social Security for that. The parsnip path to passion. Good grief, what will they think of next? You don't reckon it then, Andrew? I ask you, can you imagine anybody swallowing that? I mean, the story at parsnips. <laughs> well, I suppose there must be some mugs who fall for it. We don't know everything, do we, about vegetables and such like? I mean, well, there's herbs for everything, isn't there? Mavis, if parsnips really were an aphrodisiac, do you think they'd be selling them for 30p a pound? But why should a perfectly respectable magazine print it if there isn't some evidence to support it? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? It's a gimmick, sells magazines, doesn't it? I take it you don't want to buy it, then? Not I. No. Don't want to give curly ideas, do we? Not that you young need recipes to get you going. There we are, look. Tempe. All right. I would call that the arrogance of you. She put a bit of a dampener on your menu for tonight, Mavis. Oh, for goodness sake, Rita. I haven't been scouring Weatherfield for exotic love potions. I wish I'd never mentioned it. So what's the recipe tonight for Derek? It's a surprise. Well, let's hope it is for both of you. Dear, good to see you. Bye. Coffee? Please. Sarah, two copies, please. Well, this is a surprise. I haven't seen you since... Oh, rotten luck about the election, by the way. Oh, well... Sit down, sit down. Oh, I know we didn't always see eye to eye in committee, but you were a damn good counsellor. Thanks. And a hard taskmaster, I may add. So, what brings you here? Been buying up property you want us to survey? Hardly. No, I was, uh, I was just passing, actually, and... Well, if you want the plain truth, Clive, I'm looking for work. Work? I hate using the old boy network, but things the way they are at the moment... Yes, uh, times are hard all round. I mean, I'm, I'm not fussed what I do. I can turn my hand to most things. Typing, filing, receptionist, switchboard. Well, truly, I wish I could help. But we're practically fully staffed, I'm afraid. Practically? So there is something? If the only vacancy we have at present, I wouldn't insult you by mentioning. Force yourself, Clive. Insult me. The only opening we have at the moment is for a cleaner. How much does it pay? <sighs> Deirdre, I couldn't employ you as one of my cleaners. You were my boss on the welfare committee. Incidentally, I was voted chairman after your unfortunate departure. Congratulations, Clive. I need a job. Look, Deirdre, I, I'm sorry, but it's out of the question. You're way overqualified to be one of our cleaners. Not according to the job centre. And goodness me, you'll be organising crashes and strikes. And goodness knows what in no time. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a pretty girl? Hello. Isn't she growing, Sarah? Oh, she's growing out of all her clothes, she... Audrey. Oh, oh. Mm. isn't she lovely? Well, at least she's sleeping now until she starts teething, you know. <laughs> right, I'm off for me lunch, all okay. right. Lunch? It's nearly tea time. Oh, well, that's my fault, I'm afraid. You know, once I get shopping, I'll lose all track of time. Hey, I'll show you what I bought. Right, I'll see you later, Audrey. Oh. Hey, I think, love, could you get back a bit early? Because I've got a hair appointment, half three. Oh, honestly, just look at this social security form. I can't understand half of it, and I was a counsellor. I don't know how other folk manage. Oh, another coffee. Oh, yes, please. I can't believe things can be as bad as the job centre makes out. Oh, they're worse, Emily. Yeah, I even swallowed my pride and went to see some of my old council contacts. <laughs> went cap in hand to one of them in person. No joy. Ah, oh, they don't want to know. 
You know, it's true what that politician said, disraeli or somebody. Mm -hmm. In politics, your opponents are in the other party. Your enemies are in your own. Well, I think it's criminal. It's such a waste, a woman with your drive and experience. I'd employ you like a shot. Oh, well, that's it then. I'll come and be bookkeeper at the charity shop. Now to week and all the old clothes I can eat. <laughs> oh, it's my own fault. I should have thought about a career years ago. You were bringing up Tracy. I'm doing your council work. Yeah, well, that doesn't count for much, apparently. I don't know. What was I thinking about? Well, you were married. Yeah, but I shouldn't have relied on it. Oh, I've just been stupid, living in cloud cuckoo land. Oh, um, would you make the coffee, love? Ooh. Yes, of course. Deirdre Barlow. Oh, yes. Oh, that's great. <sighs> Whatever it is, I'll go for it. I know it. 9.30. Right. Oh, and thanks. I've got a job interview. There you are. I told you. Telephone sales. Telephone sales? Yeah, you know those people who uh, ring you up and try and sell you double glazing while you're in the bath? Oh. Yes. Oh. But Tracy needs 75 quid for a trip to France and a new set of clothes to go in. La la dee, la 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 dee, da 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 da. Ain't gonna need this house no longer. It's getting ready to make a deed. Ain't gonna need this house no longer. Well, there's that much to choose from, in the Classic interiors, house and all. What exactly are you looking for, Vera? Well, something on house decorating, you know. I fancy a bit of class. Class? Well, yeah, insurance money we get for the flood. Our jack and rates, we can... Well, we can get what we like. Yeah, no expense spared. Nice. So, I want to do it right, you know. Mm. Well, this is a good one. Very upmarket, is it? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, French interiors. No, I don't fancy out foreign. I want something British made. Union Jack curtains? Yeah, but I'd have to recover the settee, wouldn't I? No. <laughs> hey, up! Hey, these curtains. They're like yours, aren't they? You know what curtains you have up in the front room? I suppose they are a bit similar, yeah. And when you were doing yours, did you get yours out of one of these books? Oh, well, <laughs> Derek and I explored all avenues, of course, but we knew right from the start the sort of ambiance we wanted to create. Mm. Do you think I could come round and have a look at yours? Give me some idea on how I do mine. Well, well I, honestly, God, I want crib. <coughs> it's just that I've never seen anywhere, you know, that's been designed, you know, posh like. I mean, they're all like mine, you know. Special off a wallpaper, lasted line. From out at bin at back at shop. Oh, go on, I'd love to see him. Oh, well, perhaps sometime. Uh, well, I'll call round tonight, then, eh? Oh, not tea. Not tonight. Yeah, it won't take long. Uh, no, not see tonight. Ya. It's not convenient. Could Derek and I are busy. Oh, hi, you're just in time. Hello. Hi. I found a rather unhappy young lady in the street. Why? What's happened? It was dead embarrassing. Everyone had paid the French trip money except for me and Darren Barrett. And he lives in a caravan and corporation too. Tracy, I told you to tell your teacher. I had to go and see her with Darren. Everybody knew. You'll get the money. When? I've got a job. Well, I've got an interview. Sounds like a cue for a celebration. So? Why don't you two get your glad rags on and I'll treat us all to a slap-up meal. Oh, yeah? Can we have Indian? Red Indian, if you like. Or am I messing up your dinner plans? No, no, it's only salad. Salad? It'll keep. Right, that's settled then. You have got ten minutes to get your best frock on, young lady. I'll be ready in five. <laughs> so, what's the job? Telephone sales. Cold selling? Beggars can't be choosers. <sighs> Look, Deirdre, why don't I pay for the French trip? No, Phil. Just alone. Look, I appreciate the offer, but I'll manage. Thanks. You don't need a job like this. I do if I can't get anything else. But it's soul-destroying. Ringing up strangers, having them slam the phone down on you a hundred times a day. Not as soul-destroying as living on charity, however well-intentioned. Look, Phil, 
I'm a big girl. I can cope. I need to cope for my own self-respect. Thanks for showing us round, Kurt. And I'll tell you what, it's a credit to you. Oh, thank you. But I thought yeah. it was just the living room curtains you were interested it's in. It's made and everything. Do you know I have the art to do, man? Well, not yet, any room. Uh, no, well, if it's oh, inspired you, then it's all to oh, the Oh, I like this. Oh, yeah. Room to work, all the gadgets. Yeah, so I'm sure once you and Mr Duckworth have got oh, yours... Well, when we started out, well, we were like everybody else, I'd know. Somebody give us a table and a couple of chairs. Look, Mrs Duckworth, tomorrow we can talk, but right now I've got to cook the evening meal. Yeah, that's so sentimental, me, you know. I've still got the bed in chest my mother gave us. It's all scratched and marked on the top. But I haven't got the heart to chuck it out, you know. I feel like that about our jack sometimes. <laughs> Time is going fast. Now, oh. You got these from our place, didn't you? Why didn't you say? I could have got you some discount. Oh, well, that's not necessary, really. Mind you, I couldn't serve our Jack out like that, you know. He'd have chips for his breakfast on a morning if I let him. <laughs> well, there's energy in chips. Oh, oh, this... oh. Yeah. well, good night. Mrs. Hey, do you remember that chip on Buttery Street? Uh -huh. You know the one that burnt down? Mm. Oh, our Jack swore blind by their meat pudge, you know, turned him on. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Duckworth, I'm not really Oh, interested. it was a sad day when that went up in smoke, I tell you. No more steak pods. No more. Oh. Right. Well, thanks anyway, Kate, for showing us. Do you know you've been a right pal? We'll have to have another chat sometime. Well, when I've more time. Right, I'll let myself have one. Yeah, that's surprise. Now, two pounds and a half of... Parsnips, one pound and a half. Ain't gonna need this sauce no longer. I'm getting ready to make a claim. Ain't gonna need this sauce. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're wrecking me all. I can explain, I can explain. You better have. And else I'll be wrecking you. Oh, Mavis. Mm. Yes, Derek? I thought I'd sampled the full range of your culinary delights, but that, that was truly marvellous. A real uh, parsnip surprise. <laughs> really? You, you really liked it? Liked it? I loved it. Oh, and, and was it special? Special? Do you know, Mavis, when I came home tonight, through that door, I was a mere shadow of a man, worn down by business and, and the hurly-burly of modern life. But? But that mouth-watering delight that you prepared with your own fair hands, has transformed me. Has it, Derek? Yes, maybe it's transformed me. You are looking at a new man. <laughs> well, I still don't understand. Look, it's simple. I have got the best decorator in town to come round here tomorrow and give us an estimate. What time? Four o'clock. But I'll be working. It doesn't matter, does it? Well, it does. I want to be here to tell him what I want. Look, I'll get him to leave samples, the most expensive stuff he's got. He is kosher, this fella. Kosher? Weatherfield Classic Interiors. Only the biggest dad in the book, isn't it? Mm, classic Interiors, eh? Yeah. And it is British, is stuff. Well, it's British. I mean, classic. It means British, doesn't it? Oh. But that still doesn't explain why you're wrecking me all. Ah, well, that's the masterstroke, isn't it? I mean, when the assessor comes round from the insurance and sees the damage from the flood, we can get the lot done, can't we? All landing, stairs, the lot. We can even tell him the water seeped up the paper in the front bedroom. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> we can bump up the estimate. Right. We could have half a house done. Exactly. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> hey, you should be on mastermind, you. Hi. Come on, then. What are we waiting for? Oh, no, now, now, careful, me. Careful, look. It's got to be. It's got to be done very artistically. You see. Ooh, yeah, very artistically. There we are. Oh, and ball the pit in the ball. You couldn't see past the pit. Oh, dabbing it here, dabbing it there. Paper and paint were everywhere. The kids were stuck to the sea. Oh, just. Oh, morning. Anything for us? No. Thank God for that. You can have one of mine if you like. Thanks, Don. I get plenty like that on my own these days. 
just seems that way with you going through a bad patch. Have you seen the clean blouse, Mom? Ah, it's in the airing cupboard. Right. Never mind. With a bit of luck, I shall soon be rejoining the ranks of the employed, right, Trace? Yeah. New dawn, new day, new laid, I trust. Happy. I'm sorry I didn't get a written guarantee from the hen. It's a joke, Mavis. I'm sure it's perfectly fresh. I know what a canny little shopper you are. Canny little shopper. Housewife par excellence. Oh, domesticated homebody. Absolutely. Oh, you used to see me as a woman, Derek. Mavis? A desirable woman. You once said that I was not unlike Marilyn Monroe. You told me I didn't know the power of my own sexuality. What? Eat your egg. I just thought you got somebody capable. We don't want any of your usual botches. Capable? He was only Fergie's first choice for decorating yourself, York. Don't be down. You know, I You had to tell her, sorry, you're royal York in us, but we kind of boot up. Very upset, you. You're a daft sir. Oh, no, I'll tell you what, I mean, he's done some right nice gaffes. You know, like your mate, Mrs. Maxwell Glover. Yeah, well, that's what I want, a bit of glass. Well, that is what you shall have, my love. It will be a showcase for your beauty. No more than you deserve. Do you know, it's funny how generous you can be with somebody else's foot in the bill. Mm. I've always wanted the best for you, but we've never been able to afford it, have we? Right. Well, right. listen, I'll try and get off work early, but I doubt mm. it. He's had it in for me ever since that trolley dash. Well, mm. never mind. It's only an estimate. I mean, it's not as I'm picking the patterns on out, is it? Well, it should help me not. We'd have it papered in sports in life. <laughs> That's a lovely idea, that me. <laughs> I've decided. Oh, yeah? I hate being poor. Oh, you've decided that, have you? When I grow up, I'm going to have pots of dosh. I wish you'd say money, love. Dosh sounds horrible. Not when you've got it, it's not. You're not wearing that, are you? Hey, what's wrong with it? It's dead old lady-ish. And what are your gearies? Oh, thanks for the morale boost. Just what I needed. Let's face it, you're not very adventurous fashion-wise. Well, maybe I could borrow your Lycra leggings and Andy McDonald's bomber jacket. Brilliant. The interviews for telephone sales, miss. So? So, it's my voice they're going to be interested in, not what I flipping look like. What are you aiming that for, then? Well, I'm not going to get any job going looking like a bag lady, am I? I walk it. Mm. I'm not so sure. What I know about selling, you could write on the head of a very small pin. You used to sell stuff in our Robert's shop. Yeah, and you didn't exactly have to be Victor Kayan to sell Percy Sugged in a jar of mustard pickle. You're not still worried about that school trip, are you? A bit. Look, I've promised you, you'll get the rest of the money. I suppose you think I'm being dead selfish, don't no, you? No, I don't, love. I know how much you were looking forward to it. Phil's loaded, didn't he? I've no idea. Well, he must be. He spent £34 on a curry last night, and that was without service charge. How the heck do you know that? I looked at the bill. Good God. Yeah, I know. Our kids are so dear. We're just practical, that's all. We have to be. It's the same as if, say, you married Phil, then we'd be OK, wouldn't we? <sighs> Do you know what you call me this morning, Rita? A housewife par excellence. Well, that's pretty insulting. I don't think he ever sees me on the rubber gloves and the pinny. I, I could be wearing scarlet lace undies for all he'd know. And are you? What? Wearing... <sighs> Rita. Well, it might perk him up a bit more than parsnip. I take it they didn't work. I don't want to talk about it. Yes, you do. He had his supper. Parsnip surprise. Yeah, on which he complimented me, as a matter of fact. Then he fell asleep in front of the telly, opened his eyes for news at ten, had his usual grumble about the politicians. Oh, never mind politicians. What happened after when you went up to B.E.D.? <gasps> This is all very personal. I don't know why I'm telling you. Because I'm a nosy old cow, that's why. So go on, Anne. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Not even a cuddle? Not even a handshake. Just good night, maybe sweet dreams, like he always does. What really bothers me, Rita, is, is not that. You know, I mean, I, I'm not as... Randy full of romantic illusion as I used to be but well just lately I've got the impression that I'm replacing his mother in his life well I'm not his mother I'm his wife I need to feel that he finds me attractive in that way oh, is that ridiculous at my age not at all 
And I'm sure he does, love. He's probably just a bit weary. Well, so am I weary, but I want a proper marital relationship. It'll happen. Give Parsnips a chance, eh? Oh, that's just a silly old wives' tale. I don't know why I was stupid enough to fall for it. Perhaps because you're a silly old wife. You could always try it red lace knickers. <sighs> Sit yourself down, Deirdre. We're not formal here. You don't mind me calling you, Deirdre? Oh, of course not. <laughs> Lara, my mother had this thing about Dr. Shivago. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly, I can speak frankly. Naturally. Super. I was afraid that being a former counsellor, you might be a touch on the what you might call hoity-toity side. Oh, I hope not. Only that wouldn't do at all in this job. Sincerity. That's the name of the game. Sincerity. Bingo! When our clients pick up that telephone, we want them to feel there's a friend on the other end of the line. A friend who's trying to sell them something. Right. Have you ever done anything like this before? Ah, uh, no, not really, but I am used to talking to people. This is just an indication of the sort of thing you might say. Not a script as such, you understand. We encourage our telesales to inject something of their own personality into the conversation. To form a relationship. With a complete stranger. <laughs> but they mustn't feel you are a stranger. By the time they put the phone down, you're Deirdre. That nice girl who's putting the bargain of a lifetime their way. You make it sound very easy. We're not just selling value for money here. We're selling a dream. Do you believe that every woman has the right to her very own design-fitted kitchen, Deirdre? Ah, uh, amongst other things. Then all you have to do is convince Mrs Average Housewife she has that right. What if she doesn't have the money? Leave that to our salesperson. And remember, every appointment you make is cash in your own pocket. Ah, heck. I used to think little Sally was a busy bee, but you're a proper whirling dervish. Well, I like to keep active, Alf, and you know what they say about God making mischief for idle hands. Uh, not to mention big credit card bills. <laughs> Do you know, Audrey, bless her, she just cannot grasp the economics of running a small business these days. Listen, you don't do too badly. I don't do too well either. Mind, none of these corner shops do. Too much competition, you see. Alf, have you ever thought about opening in evenings? Well, I always used to in the old days, you know. When I was younger, trouble is you can't find people to work the hours. Well, I wouldn't mind. Say a couple of nights. I mean, because Don works most nights, and I in the city, and I'll go to bingo with Vera. So you'd rather be out earning a few bob? Oh, I'd expect to be more than a few bob. But you think, with no off license nearer than that precinct, you'd be raking it in, wouldn't you? Well, uh, enough to pay all your shoe bills. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Could I speak to Mrs. Um, Anderson, please? Mrs. Anderson. We're doing a survey in uh, Dawson Drive and for a limited period only, uh, for a limited period, we are in a position to offer you, we are making a fantastic, oh, flipping egg. <sighs> Good morning, Mrs. Anderson. My name's Deirdre. Stop being such a miserer. Just a quick one then. Find her busy, please, love, and a gin and tonic. Okay. It's all right. If you begrudge me a drink, I'll pay for it myself. I don't begrudge you a drink. It's just that we're overdue at the shop. Ivy can cope for ten minutes. Honestly, you're always telling me how efficient she is. How are you getting on with your understudy? Well, we're two grown women, Betty. I mean, I don't think there's going to be any problems, so long as she doesn't start taking liberties. Not, not pulling her weight, you mean? Exactly. Well, as a matter of fact, she's talking about putting in more hours now. Oh, she can take my shift. Tell her to be my guest. Well, not exactly, no. She wants to... Uh, well, she suggested we work evenings. Well, to increase taking seems to be the best idea. <laughs> well, you can forget that. As it is, you're busy most evenings at your council meeting. Look, now there's three of us, I thought we could work out some sort of a roster. It's worth discussing, anyway. Not as far as I'm concerned, it's not. Do you know, I bet she only suggested that because she knew I would never countenance it. Sure, the little crawler. She's no more intention working nights than I have. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a special offer to certain selected homes. No, no, it's not double glazing. These are craftsmen... <sighs> oh, 
Good morning. Could I speak to Mr. or Mrs. Bailey, please? Mr. Bailey, my name's Deirdre, and I'm called... Uh, yes, I suppose it is a nice name. Anyway, as a resident of uh, Fountain Street, you qualify for our special privilege offer of craftsman-built kitchens at highly competitive... You are? Oh, no, that's great. Uh, no, I'm afraid I won't be able to come round and discuss it with you in person, but uh, I can arrange for our sales representative to call and show you and your wife our complete range, which will be tailored to meet your individual requirements. Yeah, <laughs> look, Mr. Bailey, I really don't... Look, I really can do without this. No, I would not. Oh, get lost. Oh. Turned up yet? Nothing brilliant. Does not take you down a peg of three when you realise you're in the eminently unemployable bracket. Tear away. Bright girl like you. Oh, don't kid yourself. I'm a not very well educated woman with no real office skills and scant practical experience. I tell you, when people with university degrees can't get jobs, what chance do I stand? You used to run Len's office. Eey, that was a thousand years ago when we were both young and innocent. <laughs> well, you were. Uh... You ever think about him? Len, I used to. Not so much now. It fades. I still think about Ray sometimes. Just the odd moment when I look at Tracy. Something about her eyes when she frowns, just like he did. One thing I do remember, Len always said you had your wits about you. Oh, you need more than wits in this go-go high-tech world. Well, couldn't you take a course, study something? I shall have to, but... In the meantime, I've got a, a growing daughter to clothe and feed, not to mention myself. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. Talk about morning mini. Oh, give over. You don't have to put a brave face on for me, love. You see, being a counsellor was the first time I'd ever really amounted to anything in my own right. I just feel as if I'm not a person anymore. You remember that game show they used to have? Will the real Deirdre Barlow please stand up? I'm still waiting for the silly cow to do her stuff. Wait, you're too hard on yourself. Come here, let's have a look. Now, don't suppose you know how about repairing washing machines, do you? Thought not. Hey, seriously, how about this? Urgently required area sales rep, top salary, plus company car. Oh. Go on, they want five years' experience. No, oh, it's for Ingram's. I mean, you might be desperate for a job, Deirdre, but are you desperate enough to work for Mike Baldwin? Right, Medine? Well, now then, we have had a flood, you know. Oh, not to worry. Silk purses out of sow's ears. That's our job. Well, they pulled a face for let me off. <laughs> Is this him? Aye, Lou Crowther, the wife. Wife, Lou. We've met British Legion Dart Snatch. I warned you. Now then. Just because we've had a couple of pints together does not make Lou a cowboy. We're talking quality here, right, Lou? Right. Oh. Right, so come on, then. Talk quality. If you want the best, love. We do. Well, one option's your rag rolling. No rags, Lou. Oh, don't show your ignorance, Jack. It's that speckled effect. I've seen it in magazines. Go on. Uh, then there's your uh, hand-printed papers. Oh, hand-printed, eh? How much? Well, you're talking about 55 for your top-of-the-range stuff. Have you got now more expensive? Go off Richter scale with your Chinese silk wall coverings. Well, I set you back 40 quid easy. 40 quid's now, is it? A metre? Hey, are these your samples? Uh, mind you, with your pricier stuff, uh, walls would have to be cross lined. Oh, first. yes, yes, cross lined. Yeah, put that down, right, son. Yes. Yeah, what does your best paint cost? Mm. High quality paint, about 15 quid a tin. Then there's your undercoat. Mm -hmm. Plus, if there was any water damage, well, your woodwork would need a primer where it was sanded off. Oh, it will, yes, will. Yes, bung that down some. Primer. 
Ceilings are a bit of a mess, aren't they? Mm, stains would want treating with the damp proof in. Mind you, while well, we take the whole stuff off, we might find all what's replastering and relining. Oh, it will. It will, definitely. Right. Yeah. Come on. Let's have a look at the lobby. Right. There we are, so. He's got enough on his plate without taking on more. I was only trying to be helpful. Oh, help him to another heart attack, you mean? He's more likely to get ill with stress, worrying about his takings being down, even if his expenses are. He's always worrying about his takings down. Doesn't mean you have to stick your nose in making stupid suggestions. Ha-ha! Just what we need, eh, Nicky? A gaggle of grannies. You what? Oh, you know, a flock of sheep, herd of cows, gaggle of grannies. Yeah, it's all right, all right. <laughs> What can we do for you? Well, if you take one of these off my hands, I'd be very grateful. Only me and the lads are going to have a kick around down on the wreck. And uh, little Miss Prissy doesn't want to come. Well, of course she doesn't. Yes, we'll have her. That is, if it's all right with you. Yes! Of course she can stop. Mm. Where's David, then? He's outside, fast asleep. So, is uh, everything OK, girls? Yes, yeah, fine. Why shouldn't it be? Oh, no reason, no reason at all. No, it's nice to see you settling down as a team. I mean, after all, you've got so much in common, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, like these little rebels for the start. Come on, Nicky, come on. <laughs> hey, his mum says she's going to chuck us out if we get Kate's in mud, you know. Personally, I think she's a bit of a spoiled sport. Sit <laughs> down. Hi, Ellen. Weatherfield Classic Interiors. The painting and decorating specialist. Specialist, they I love you, see? Not all my mates are rubbish, are they? <laughs> yeah, well, certainly seems to know his onions, mm. but... Well, 900 quid, Jack. You don't know where it. Well, they might beat us down a bit, but I've got to shell out for a majority. The bloke on the phone said as much. Yeah, and you didn't want to bother with no insurance policies. Aren't you glad that I made you keep paying them premiums? Over the moon, all light of my life. Go on, say it. You were quite right, V. You were quite right, V. You always know best, V. You won't. Hey, now, come on, watch it quit while you're at you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just walking past and it hit me like a blinding flash. That's the house where the kettle's just boiled. But then people have always told me I was psychic. All right. Blimey. I've had warmer welcomes at the freezer centre. Sorry, Phil. If it's jokes you're looking for, you've come to the wrong shop. I've had a lousy day. I take it these are all no-goes? Whatever it is I'm cut out for, it certainly isn't telephone selling. All it takes is a bit of feminine chatter. Oh, yeah, I tried that. You'd be surprised where it got me. Well, maybe you wouldn't. Oh, don't tell me you phoned your own heavy breather. It's not funny, Phil. It wasn't him. He was just pathetic. It's the sheer indignity of the whole thing, lining yourself up to be insulted every time you dial a number. So, what are your other options? There are one or two. Like the job I offered you? Out of pity. That's your story. Look, Phil, I can't just go on ricocheting from one safety net to another for the rest of my life. I've got to create something solid of my own. If I don't now, when will I, for God's sake? Fine, so you carry on flogging kitchens. If not that, something else. Like what? You don't think I can, do you? You'd be happier if I came crawling to you. Hey, steady on, lady. I'm not your inadequate husband. I'm not threatened by a woman who can stand on her own two feet. There's no need to bring Ken into this. He's already there. It's still two fingers up to Kenneth time with you, isn't it? You're still trying to prove to him how brilliantly you can cope without him. Well, I'm sorry, Deirdre, but I don't have any truck with those sort of games. If you change your mind, you know where I am. Mavis. <laughs> Guilt offering. Oh, thank you. They're lovely. But what have you got to feel guilty about? Upsetting you this morning. <laughs> You didn't. And I, I'm sorry if I was a bit touchy. No, I know I'm not the easiest person in the world to live with. Angela used to say... Oh, sorry. But I, I know I do have some, some irritating little habits. But you must tell me about them, Mavis. I mean, that's what a good relationship's about, isn't it? Communication. Being honest with each other. If there's anything in particular that annoys you, I want to know. There isn't. Promise. Well... It's not so much And likewise, annoys. if there's anything that annoys me, I'll be completely frank with you. Oh, like what? Well, nothing. Well, well, there must be something or you wouldn't have said it. Nothing major. <laughs> Only silly little things. <laughs> like uh, you squeezing the toothpaste from the top and uh, pairing my socks incorrectly. Uh, I see. Is there anything else? Oh, maybe. 
Let's not go into this right now, eh? Hey, something smells good. It's curried parsnip soup. Parsnips again, eh? Well, I can open a tin if you prefer. No, Mavis, I love your soups. I love everything you do. Oh, do you really, Derek? Do you know when I come home of an evening and I see your dear little face all flushed as you prepare our evening meal, do you know what I want to do? I want to get down on my bended knees and thank heaven for my good fortune. <laughs> At marrying a woman who's as good a cook as my poor dear mother. God rest her. General description of property lost or damaged. Entire downstairs decor damaged by water. Nice word, that decor, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know it's right what they say here about an ill wind? Even Mrs. Maxwell Glover ain't got Chinese silk on her walls. Oh, I shouldn't bank on that. It's not easy to pull up. Well, you said you were the expert, didn't mm. you? But do you think it's a bit over the top for round, do you? Yeah. I mean, look, do you like this instead? Not a ten quid a roll, I don't. Well, insurance are paying out there. Well, so you'll keep saying. They are, but why hand over all of the 900 quid to somebody else when I can do it for half myself or even less? Do it yourself? Yeah, materials. 200 quid, top whack, labour, nout, profit. 700 quid. 700 smackers for us to do with what we want. What do you say about that, my little stocking top? <laughs> oh, hello. Is that Ingram's? Good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to ring so late, but I've only just seen your advertisement. Yeah, the area sales rep. I'd, um, I'd like to apply. Oh, lads, you got a minute? What's up, Daz? Oh, you big, strong lads there. Can you give me a hand to get a table at one of my boat? Sorry, mate. School, I'm afraid. Oh, we daft. We've got loads of time. Of course we'll give you a hand, Daz. Great. It won't take a minute, honest. I'll tell you this, I sometimes think she's mental, that Audrey Roberts. I really do. Coming out with things she does. Aye, all right. The way she goes on at out in that corner shop. She don't care who is, you know. And she's proper sharp with it, I know. Hey, you can do your bit. Oh, not like her, Don. No, go on. I wouldn't go running my husband down in front of all and sundry like she does. There's got to be a reason to everything. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't talk to a dog the way she talks to Audrey. Ivy, I've heard all I want to hear about what Audrey says it's shop. Oh, all right, all right. There's no need to shout. Yes, there is, because it's the only way I can get you to take a blind bit of notice. And I'm telling you, you're going to talk yourself out of a job. The same way you did at Ingram's. Give up. I'm not likely to do that again, am yes, I? Yes, you are, because you're doing exactly the same thing again. Name-calling the boss's wife. Last time it was the boss's boyfriend, but that's the only difference. Only to you, though, Don. I've not said a word to anybody else. Well, don't even say it to me. Give over, I can tell you. God, it's bloody enough keeping quiet at work while Lady Muck's prattling all over. Surely I'm allowed to get off my chest when I come home to you. Well, if you take my advice, you'll rise above it. Let it bounce off like water off a duck, all right? Well, it's not going to be easy, Don. Well, oh, nobody said it was going to be easy. But if it's too hard, pack the job in. That's it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got it. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Right. Hey, that's smashing that, lads. Couldn't have done that on my own. Gonna put it in, screw it down, so it doesn't move when we're afloat. You going on the sea? In this? Might do, yeah. Eventually. Wouldn't put anything rougher than a stretch of canal myself. And even then, what a life jacket. Well, that might look a bit decrepit now, but once I've done it up properly, we get the sail around the world in this, mate. Well, sooner you than me, Des. Reminds me of that gag. You know, what you get if you cross the Atlantic with the Titanic. But oh. halfway across, yeah. I've heard it. It's ain't no notice of him, Des. I think the boat's sound. Ah, a man with judgment and perception. You can come on the maiden voyage. I don't mind having a butcher's inside if uh, that's all right. Yeah, come on board, have a look around. Steve, school, the place we've got to go Monday to Friday, remember? Yeah. Uh, sorry, lads, don't let me make you late. Um, thanks again. I owe you one. Cheers, guys. See ya. See ya. See ya. Come on, madam, time you are moving. I've got bags of time, but listen, about this French trip, am I going or not? Because the money's got to be handed in soon. Mais certainement, mon enfant, is that right? Not far off, but am I really going? Well, I think so, Trace. I, I hope so. Fingers crossed, eh? 
Look, listen, I've got a feeling in my bones our luck is about to change. Does that mean it'll get better? Oh, it couldn't get any worse, could it? Look, don't worry, love. We'll scrape the money together somehow. I'll get it. Oh. Yeah, she's here. It's for you, Mum. It's Mike Baldwin. Oh, um. Ah, listen, you get off. Yeah, okay. Bye. Uh, take care, love. Hi, sorry to keep you. Yeah, that's right. I rang about your ad for a sales representative because I. Because you want the job, aren't you? Well, I wouldn't be applying for it if I didn't, would I? Fine. Do you want me to come round to Ingram's? Well, let's make it a bit informal for a start, shall we? Um, there's a pub on the dock there, um, the ship. Do you know it? The ship. I know it, Mike. Well, how about half past twelve? Twelve thirty's fine for me. Right. Look forward to seeing you then. Okay. Bye for now. Time, lady. Do you know it's five past nine? Oh, I'm sorry, Vita. You were supposed to be here at eight o'clock. I said I'm sorry. Not as sorry as me. I've been mowed out in there. I mean, shot full of school kids, and then in the middle of that, soft drinks fella arrived early. I'm telling you, it's just easy enough now. Yes, well, I've said I'm sorry, and, and, and I am, really. I mean, I would have been here on time, Rita, and, well, Derek can be very masterful on occasion. Can you buy it? Yeah, I mean, it just began like any other Monday morning and I was getting ready in plenty of time, but, well, Derek had other ideas. Now, to make up for lost time... Hang on, hang on. Have I got this right? Did Derek suddenly, um... Well, you know how I always like to be punctual for work, Rita. I mean, Derek prides himself on his timekeeping as a rule, but... I did demur at first, but in the end I was quite overborne. I've never known him so insistent since. It's a bit embarrassing, really. No, no, I think it's wonderful. I'm very pleased for you. I, mean, I did point out that it wasn't a very convenient moment because she'd been here in the shop on her oh, own. Oh, forget it, love. You know what they say, never look a gift horse in the mouth. Oh, you did right. And Derek did right from the sound of it. You've been shoving parsnips down him all weekend. No, I don't put any credence on that parsnip business, Rita. I mean, I dare say they're nourishing enough. So they struck off the menu now, then, are they? Well, as it happened with having them in the house, uh, Saturday night, I, I mashed some up with some carrots. It was a very nice mixture, actually. Yes. And then Sunday with the joint, well, there were still a few left over, so I... I roasted those. And you're trying to tell me they had no effect. Now, come on, admit it. I bet parsnips are going to be a permanent part of your shopping list from now on, eh? Rita, I think we should talk about something else. Something more uplifting. Do you know this gate's open? Oh, hello, Mr Sugden. I'm just saying this gate's not bolted. Anyone could come in. So I noticed, yeah. All they have to do is push the gate and walk in. Handy like that gates, aren't they? And doors. I don't know. Before someone thought of them, I suppose people just went around bashing holes in each other's walls when they were visiting. See, I'm trying to make a serious point here of, uh, you know, about security. You leave that gate unlocked, it's as good as an invite to any light-fingered layabout. But I am here, Mr Sugden. But that's not the point, is it? Certain things you should always do. Securing gates and doors is one of them. It's a question of inculcating sound habits of mind and body. Oh, yeah? You get in the way of doing things. You know, all the time. As regular as clockwork, and then you end up safe. Not sorry. What else do you do like that there, uh, Mr Sugden, besides doors and gates? Oh, all sorts. Like, last thing at night, I put my trousers uh, over their anger, all folded nice and neat and with the creases in alignment. Good one, good one. Good yes, and I make sure that all lights and appliances are switched to the correct off position. I've got one like that before I get into bed. Oh, yes. Always try and make sure I'm in the right house at the right time. Sometimes I forget, like, because I... Yes, yes. Some people, you just can't take advice. You can't, uh, you can't tell some people. How long is this contraption going to stay here, eh? Well, not much longer now. But you miss her when she's gone, won't you? Yeah, but over. It's an eyesore. Books look all wrong when you're out of the water. She'll be on the water soon. Ever fancy that, Mr Sugden? Just getting away from it all on a little boat? I'd a fancy for it. I have an old lad. 
And I've done it. Oh, yeah, that, thank the Lord. Dunkirk, this was. When it came to the finish, I were in a boat that made this look like a Cunard liner. Two days we'd been waiting. Two days. There you are. Said I wouldn't be long, didn't I? Have we uh, been busy? Busy? I bet they've had more customers at the undertakers. Uh, yeah, well, it's early, isn't it? Oh, I mean, look at us. All three of us just hanging about, study, wasting time. It's pointless. You're absolutely right. I agree with you. Wonders they'll never see. You see, what it is, the staff is not deployed properly. What it needed was somebody coming in from the outside and stating what was glaringly obvious, just like Ivy did. She's dead right, you know. We should be opening at night. Now, don't start all that again, Al. Listen, I've just been to the bank. There's shops and businesses closing all over the place. Desperate days need desperate measures. Ivy, how are you fixed for tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, well, I could work if you want me to. Right. We'll make a start then, then. Listen, I'll, I'll make out a roster. Well, if, I'd be grateful if you would have, because uh, then I can fit it in with Don's work. Yeah, well, I'll make out a roster, and uh, that's what we need. Yeah, well, it? I hope you don't think I'm going on your flaming roster. Look, Audrey. Alf, now listen. You only took Ivy on because you reckoned that we hadn't got enough staff to cope with the hours that were open now. Now you're going to open every night as well. It's madness. Audrey. No, Alf, it's time I put my foot down. All this talk about late night opening is just damn silly. Now, let's just get one thing straight, shall we? This is my shop, my business, and I'll run it the way I want to, right? It's me that built the business up, not you, and I'll go on running it as well, because if I'd have listened to you, I'd have been in Queer Street long ago. We're opening at night from now on, and if you don't like that... Hard luck. Sit down, I'll get you a drink. No trouble finding the place, eh? No. Hang on a minute, though. Uh, we were here a few years ago, weren't we? Quite like old times. Excuse me, can I have a gin and tonic, though? Sandwiches, please, Betty. Chicken, if you've got them. Right. You're not working today? Yes, but not at the betting shop, though. Um, Only a couple of days. No, I'm out in the fresh air for a change, making a start on my boat. Hey, if you're going to be doing round-the-world cruises, me and Betty will look after the catering for you. What will love? Oh, yes. thank you. It was a right temper, Al. Hey, hang on. What's this late-night opening she's morning? She moaned whatever it were, Audrey. No, let me get this straight. Are you telling me that you're going to be working nights? Well, more like an evening shift, love, and only one or two nights a week. And we're a bit look, I can work it at the same time as you're working, and then, well, you won't be sat in house on your own, will you? Oh, I don't know. It sounds a bit much to me. You put this idea in Alf's head? Well, you might have said something to me first. Can't do right for doing wrong today, me. I take it as quite a compliment, you know. Busy executive like you taking time away from his desk to come and have lunch with me. Oh, in an ideal world, maybe I would never leave your side. Derek, <laughs> an old married couple like us. I don't feel like half an old married couple. I feel like a newlywed. Hey, have we got time to go home? Go home yes. now? Do you mean? Oh, well, Derek, and you back at the cabin, and, and, and I mean, you're expected at the office. What is this life? It's full of care, maybe. We have no time to stand and stare, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. I've got a buyer coming at two. Oh, well, never mind. We'll make up for it tonight. We certainly will. Come on, come on. Give over, you two. You're making me blush. Have you said anything? You know, to... She's just jealous because I've got you. <laughs> you know, all that time on the council, I thought you'd been meeting influential people, valuable people who could offer you a job. I suppose things are tough all over these days. Yeah, I know, but I mean, uh, I still think you should have had a few offers. Well, I haven't. I know. Times aren't less when things go wrong, you lose an election. That's when you find out who your friends are. I know from valuable experience, that is. Anyway, this job I've got to offer, it's about selling. Do you know anything about that? Not really, but, well, I think I can be persuasive. 
That's one thing I learned on the council. And I'm not afraid to tackle people. That's another thing I learned. You know, when you didn't get elected, I couldn't believe it. I was going to phone you. I need a job, Mike. A real job. I'm not looking for what Percy Sugden calls a cushy number. I know. I'm a hard worker. I know that too. I'm not asking to come on board for an easy ride. I just want a fair chance. Same as anyone else who's after this job. I'm not asking for any favours. I understand. And what role friends for? I'm glad you came to me. I mean that, did you? Hi, Steve. What are you doing out of school at this hour? Clearing away? Snow. I'm off this afternoon. Uh, must be great at school these days. They're paying you to turn up next. Uh, I was wondering, what you help with the boat? You're serious? Love it if you give me a hand. Right, right. Where do you want me to start? I did not go begging him for a job, Emily. I never said begging. As good as. I just think, well, considering your previous experience with Mike Baldwin, I mean, why did he want you to meet him in a bar? That's not a job interview. He's making it into something else. That's just his way. It doesn't mean anything. It's a job I'm looking for, nothing else. What happened, happened a long time ago. We're two different people. Mike Baldwin isn't different and never will be. He'll always be an unscrupulous opportunist out for what he can get. You know that. Yeah, well, I don't see him the same way you do. I never have. You've never worked for him. No, not yet. He's obviously going to give you this job. Well... I hope you don't regret it. I'll regret it if he doesn't give it to me. Listen, he knows I'll work hard and do the best job I can. He knows I'm not looking for charity. It's just as well. Mike Baldwin doesn't give any charity. Hello, love. Is it that time already? Oh, you've done well today. Yeah, because I've got new staff, you see. Meet the cabin boy. I see. As you can see, Des here likes to think he's captain. Don't be fooled. All he is is my first mate. So you've been helping out, have you? Yep, I think the boat's great. Right, lad, this. I prophesy a big future. How's your mum? She's still in Northern Ireland. Yeah, but well, she should be back any day now, you see. My grand's getting a lot better. I hope she comes back soon, though. I mean, my dad can cook, but, well, you know. Why don't you have something to eat with us? Can we find this lad something to eat, Steph? Of course we can. You're welcome, Steve. All right. Thanks a lot. Why don't you pop home and tell your dad? Say they're making you something. All right, well, I'll just pop round now and tell him. Good little worker, that. He's been beavering away all afternoon. There's laws about exploiting child labour, you know. It's not labour, is it? He's fallen in love with a boat, which you can understand. Yeah. Make a good team, you and him. Pair the little lads together. So always keep your stock sheets handy because that makes for efficiency. Oh, I think you're right, Alfie. Yeah, I know I am, love. I think we're looking to rejig it here and all. Yes. Hello. Oh, hi. Oh, well, I'd be glad to get home. I've had hell of a day. Oh, join the club. Still, when I do get home, I can just flop. Marty's doing the cooking and put the kids to bed and all. I am going to flop. Oh, well, it's nice when you can look forward to getting home. Mind you, I think I'll be seeing very little of my home from now on. The way things are going, he'll be setting up a couple of camp beds and we'll be sleeping in this blessed shop. What are you going on about now? That way you see, Gail, if somebody starts banging on the door at two in the morning for a bag of sugar, we'll be quizzing. Yeah, you see, what it is, Gail, your mother is moaning at me because I want to run an efficient business. Late night opening. That is his latest brilliant idea. No, no, I tell a lie. It's Ivy's latest brilliant idea. Yeah, and it makes very good sense, doesn't it, Gail? Go on, you tell it. I'm saying nothing. No, I'll just say this. Good night to the lot of you. Uh. Oh. oh, no. Oh. Oh. Have you had enough, Steve? Oh, yeah, plenty, thanks. Well, I, for one, fancy a pint. You always fancy a pint. True. The doctor said I wasn't to repress me urges, so are you coming? No, but I might catch up with you later. All right, then. Hey, Steve, thanks a lot. Great job. No problem, Des.
So how's things at school? No, don't ask. That bad, eh? Yeah, complete waste of time as far as I'm concerned. And it's me that's wasting their time. I used to think that in my last year or so. But now I'm older and I can see things straight. <laughs> I still think that. Yeah. Not much longer, is it? Soon be exam time and then you can forget it. I might as well forget it now. I've not much chance of passing and there's no point in swatting. Not that I am doing. Not really very much point in taking them at all. Oh, you never know. Yeah, you do. Sometimes and this is one of them. Is your Liz getting back then? Sometime this week, I hope, Daddy. Fingers crossed, anyway. Do you think she'll recognise the house when she gets inside? Hey, you no, know, an old soldier always keeps his living quarters clean, you know. I bet your lads don't keep their bedroom clean, not unless you stand over them. Well, you see, my lads are at a very difficult age. Mind you, so am I. <laughs> to be honest with you, Betty, I've yet to find an easy one. Evening. Hello. Oh, will night. you get your man a pint there, please? Cheers, Jim. Jim. No, not at all. I assure you, this for feeding Steve. You must be joking. It's me that owes him. Give me a big lift today. Good with his hands, your lad. Yeah, his brother's got the brains. Yeah. Right. Ah, hello, my love. I'll have a vodka and tonic, please. Are you having one with me before you get busy? Oh, I well, will, sir, very much. How was uh, Maeve this afternoon? Has she been given the wrong change? Not that I've noticed. Why? Well, she was in here this dinner, you know, with Derek. She's in love, isn't she? With her own husband. Shocking, I call that. It's a bit obvious, isn't it? What, watching them this dinner? All lovey dovey. They were more like a couple of kids in a shop doorway. Yeah, well, she's found the secret of how to put the passion back into your marriage. Oh, I mean. mm. All down to parsnips. Parsnips, mm. eh? That's similar to a vasectomy. <laughs> the vegetable. No, she read this piece in the magazine how parsnips are supposed to be the food of love. So ever since, she's been bunging them into Derek like there's no tomorrow. Mashed, roasted, fried, you name it, he's had it. And she reckons it doesn't trick her. Well, you know, maybe she can talk herself into anything. Oh, all in the mind then. Oh, dear. I wonder if I could get Alec to eat parsnips. Do they do it in a juice, do you know? Derek, you're home. I was just about to light the candle. Oh, Mavis. Derek, what's wrong? Are you ill? I don't know. Perhaps I am. I hope I am. Oh, how do you mean? What, what's happened, Derek? Has something awful oh, happened? I just don't know how to tell you this, Mavis. I don't know how to say the words. Oh, Derek, don't keep it from me, please, whatever it is. Let me help. You won't want to help, not what I've told you. You won't want to know me, Mavis. And you'd be right. Oh, Derek, whatever it is, please. Well, I, I was working late at the office. I was the last to leave. Well, the last except for Mrs Shaw. Mrs Shaw? I don't think I know her. The cleaning woman. Oh, Mavis. The cleaning woman? Well, what about her? Did, did she do something? Well, she was in reception with her dustpan and brush when I came past, down on her hands and... I don't know what came over me. I was... I was seized. I was in the grip of some primitive instinct, some power stronger than myself. Oh, Derek, what happened? Well, as I went past, I... I slapped her BTM. I... I say slap, Mavis. It wasn't that. It was... It was a tap. I, it certainly wasn't a fondle, Mavis. I want you to believe that. Oh, Mavis. Mavis, what am I going to do? Oh! Right, love. 
Well, I'll see you well, when I see you, eh? Exactly. That's the $64,000 question, isn't it? You're working this morning, I'm working this afternoon, you're working tonight. Now, nah, come on, if you're not going to that one, we get it sorted. No, once we get the swing of it, I mean, it'll just mean that I'm working late when you are. Excuse me, love. You see, Alf's not going to be opening late every night, is it? Yeah, well, just make sure that Alf Roberts knows exactly where he stands right from the off, cos give now for chance. He'll have you chained to that till 24 hours a day if you think there's a few bob in it for him, believe you me. Hey, lovely, we've been through all this, haven't we? We've both agreed we'll give it a try. Yeah, I know, I'm just saying. I mean, Audrey's not exactly falling over herself to do a whack, is she? Well done, love. I've made it perfectly clear to Alf when I'm prepared to work and when I'm not. And what it's going to cost him. Listen, if Audrey wants to play silly beggars, that's Alf's problem, not mine. And don't you worry about me. I'm more than capable of standing in my own corner. All right. Mm. See you later. Yes, I'll leave you some of the over for your tea. All right, love. You know what time it is, Derek? Yes, I do know what time it is. Well, I thought you wanted to be out early with Victor coming over this morning. Yes, all right, I'm going. Now, how I'm going to look Mrs Shaw in the eye again, I don't know. Look, I'm sure you've got nothing to worry about, Derek. I mean, you did apologise. That's not the point, Mavis. The point is that I did it in the first place. A man of my maturity and position in life slapping a middle-aged married woman on the buttocks. Like some irresponsible teenager at the office party. I can't think for the life of me what came over me. Well, you've just got to try and put it out of your mind. How can I put it out of my mind? How can I be sure it's not going to happen again? Oh, it won't, Derek. I know it won't. How can you say that? I would have sworn it could never have happened in the first place. But it did. Come on, Tracy. What are you doing up there? All right, I'm coming, aren't I? What are you doing? It's nearly quarter to. Oh, I've been looking for my maths, but Mrs Sims is going to kill me. We have to share as it is. Would this be what you're looking for? Oh, where was it? On the side of your chair. If you did your own work properly at the table, you might not lose it. You could have told me that you found it. You told me what you were looking for. I might have. Now, come on, get your skates on. Yeah, all right, I'll see you. Bye bye, love. Oh, yeah, and good luck. Hey? With the interview at Ingram's. Oh, right. Thanks, love. What time are you having it? Eleven. I'll be thinking about you. Thanks. See ya. Bye bye, love. Hiya. Hi, Trace. Come on, Steph, I haven't got all day. If you want to lift, you've got ten seconds. Uh, Dreamboat, are you coming or what? Uh, no, I'll catch you up, all right. Hey, Steve, I wanted to talk to you about something. What? About the boat. What about it? Well, I might have some free time on my hands today, so... Yeah, great. If you're not mine, if you've not been there. Oh, he's on the boat. Feel free. All oh, right, cheers. Last, I thought I'd never get to work. Hiya, Steve. Hiya. Um, can we drop you somewhere? Uh, no, no, you're all right. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. See you, mate. Parsnips? Do you mean all those parsnips you've been feeding me? Well, because you... You and me... Oh, Derek, please don't go on. If you'd any idea how I feel... How you feel? How do you think I feel when my wife tells me she's been feeding me aphrodisiacs? Well, I'm sorry, Derek. I mean, the last thing I wanted to do was make you feel... well... Deprived of my normal male functions? That's what you mean, isn't it? No, Derek, it wasn't like that. And you need never have known anything about it if it hadn't been for you and this Mrs Shaw. Oh, and that would have made it all right, would it? That I didn't know my wife was disappointed in me? That I didn't know she felt the need to stimulate my natural male functions? Derek, don't. It, it wasn't like that. Well, I'm sorry, Mavis. As far as I see it, it was exactly like that. There must have been something very seriously wrong for you to embark on a search for the elixir of life I, for me. I didn't embark on anything. And, and if Rita hadn't spotted that article... Rita! Do you mean Rita's in on this as well? You've been discussing our most intimate details of our personal relationship with Rita. Who else is in on this? The Barneses, the Duckworths, the Gilroys, no. the entire street? No, Derek, I, I swear it. There's no one else. You've got to believe me. Oh, Derek, 
How can I, how can I make you understand? What, what can I do? What can you do? I think you've done more than enough already. Don't you? That's set me and you straight up to end of last week. That's right, and I wish I could say the same for all my customers. So, tonight's the night then? Yeah, that's right. Do you know, I wouldn't have thought there was much call for late night shopping these days. Not round here. Well, I don't know. Mr Patel don't do too badly. True. Well, good luck anyway. Hey, hang on. There might be a bob or two in it for you. For me? Yeah. If late night shopping catches on at house, once folk get into habit, might be worth your while to open a bit later. Thank you very much, Mrs. No Craig. chance. By the time that clock gets to six, my feet are screaming at me to get them up them stairs. I'm telling you, if there was a queue of folk from that door to Commercial Road, you'd not catch me staying open late. Not unless Mavis wants to volunteer. Sorry. I get it. See, I have enough trouble keeping her in the land of the living as it is. See ya. <laughs> Tomorrow. So are you today. I mean, you've been like somebody off another planet. Here, you've not been overdoing it, have you? Overdoing it? You've not been overdosing Derek with parsnips, have you? <gasps> now what have I said? I never want to see another parsnip as long as I live. Victor! Hope I haven't kept you waiting long. I was here nearly an hour ago, Derek. That is half an hour before our appointment, not half an hour after. Uh, yes, quite. I'm sorry about this. I really am. I had to stop off on the way to see a client. A very fruitful call, I might add. Uh, and then I wanted to see a member of my staff, my cleaning staff. I'll, um, I'll get some coffee laid on. I've already had enough coffee to float a medium-sized liner, Derek. And it's not very flattering to know that you place a member of your cleaning staff higher in your priorities than you do me. It wasn't like that, Victor. I didn't see the woman anyway. I couldn't find her. This cleaner wouldn't be a Mrs Shaw by any chance. Well, yes. Well, in that case, you wouldn't have fired her. You fired her? On the spot. Told her to take her things and get out. Not a minute too soon, either. I've never met such a vindictive woman. But why? Well, don't look so surprised, Derek. We've been talking about cost-cutting for some time, as you very well know. And on a first-in, last-out basis, she had to go. So I gave her a fortnight's notice, or I tried to. But the way she reacted, well, I, I had no choice but to send her packing immediately. The way she reacted? Well, yes, she flew straight off the handle. Said she knew exactly what the score was. Started talking about victimization, wrongful dismissal. She even had a go at you. Me? Yes, accused you of sexual harassment. <laughs> you? I mean, would you credit it? Well, I gave her marching orders on the spot. Had no alternative. I mean, the woman was out of her mind. A very dangerous woman, Derek. I've done you a big favour there, believe me. Well, I think perhaps now we'd better get on. I think we've wasted more than enough time on Mrs Shaw. So, you ran your own business for 12 months? With Mrs Bishop, yeah. Well, you seem to have had quite a bit of secretarial experience. But you haven't had any actual selling experience, have you? Well, no, not really, but... Uh... Except herself. Sorry? Well, she'd hardly have survived being a counsellor for four years without some power of persuasion, would she? No, hardly. Well, is there uh, anything else I can tell you about myself? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think we've heard everything we need to know. Unless Mr Baldwin can think of anything else? No, no, not at all. Well, thank you for being so frank, Mrs Barlow. Particularly about your personal circumstances. Well, I've always felt honesty is the best policy, Mrs Ingram. Well, thank you for coming. We'll be in touch. We've got one or two other candidates to see, but... Uh... Well, thanks for seeing me, Mrs Ingram. Goodbye, Mrs Barlow. You mean the woman wasn't lying? Of course she was lying. But you just said... Exaggerating, exaggerating. Derek, either you did make amorous overtures to this woman, or you didn't. I didn't, not amorous. Nothing approaching amorous. I merely... Merely what? Well... Patted her on the behind. Patted her on the behind? It was a good-natured, gentle pat. I don't know why I did it, I just did it. And I apologised immediately, of course. Never expected. You did lay hands on her, Derek. Hand, Victor, hand, hand, one hand. And just for a second, a split second. And as I say, I apologised immediately. I'm convinced that would have been the last we'd have heard of it if her employment hadn't been terminated. Well, her employment has been terminated, Derek, most definitely. 
And it appears that I've put my head well and truly on the block, doesn't it? Sorry, I wasn't expecting you. You weren't expecting me? What are you doing here anyway? Doing the boat. Dad said it'll be all right. How long have you been here? What about school? And what about school? Shouldn't you be there? Well, I'm in the sixth form now, so everything's changed. I know that. You haven't answered my question. Well, it's only revision, so I mean, I can do it any time. Well, I'll have to take your word for it, won't I? Look, I'm not missing anything important. Honestly, I'm not. Go on. I believe you. Not got much option, have I? Anyway, what are you doing back? Thought you'd be at work all day. Yeah, so it seems. Well, it just so happens you've caught me on my half day. Have you had any dinner? No. Nope. I'm making myself a sandwich. Do you fancy one? Yeah, great. What do you reckon? Great. I'm glad I had to smoke salmon now. <laughs> I'm talking about the job. All oh, right. Well, when it comes down to it, there's not a lot of choice, is there? There's only Mrs. Barlow and that younger girl, Carol. Uh... Uh, Morley. Carol Morley. Right. As far as I can see, we can forget the rest. Agreed. Well, my money goes for Mrs. Barlow. She does have that degree of maturity we're looking for. She's used to responsibility, motivating herself, she's honest, and she'll have a good reason for keeping the job done. Mm. Well, she may be a bit too mature, as you gallantly put it. And she's had no selling experience, has she? Well, no, but I'm sure she'd be a quick learner. Well, so are Carol Morley. And she's already done some selling. She's younger than Mrs. Barlow, and she has no home ties. She'd be more mobile. Yeah, and quicker to run off to a job somewhere else at the drop of a hat. Mm. Well, perhaps we do need a bit of time to think about it. Though I had hoped we'd both instinctively go for the same person. You know, I don't understand what you've got against Mrs. Barlow. I'm sure she's quite capable of doing the job, and I'm sure... I've against Mrs. Barlow. I just happen to think that Carol Morley is the better candidate. It's more potential, if you like. Mind you, it is a first impression, and you do know Mrs. Barlow better than I do. Well, certainly you've known her longer than me. She was a friend of yours before I ever came on the scene. Perhaps you know things about her that haven't come out at the interview. If you do, tell me. I'm willing to be persuaded. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Oh, here's an example to us all, isn't he? I mean, all the ailments he's got, and he still manages to keep smiling. Ah, you're right there. There's plenty worse off than us in the world. Yeah, I cop for that. Thanks. I'll get it. Hello, Cabin. Oh, Derek. Oh, I am glad you've called. I've been thinking about you all morning. Yes, I'm listening, Derek. Mrs. Shaw? Yes, of course I remember what you told me. Well, yes, I think so. But why, Derek? Why is it important that I remember exactly what happened? Derek, she can't. Well, I mean, it wasn't like that. Oh, oh, well, I mean, certainly not the way you told me. No, 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 Derek, I, I'm not implying anything. That's all right. Oh, well, right, I, I, OK, I'll see you later then. Bye, Derek. <gasps> so much hope. It was Derek. He's being accused of sexual harassment at work. <laughs> it's all my fault. Oh, 
Hello? Hi, I'm uh, calling about the... <laughs> Fine, eh? You don't waste any time. You've hardly given me time to get me coat off. Well, I said I'd let you know as soon as I could. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you, ha you haven't got it. Oh. Oh, I see. I did my best, honest, but, uh, well, in the end it was down to Jackie. And she didn't rape me? No, nothing to do with that. It's just that she thought there was a candidate that was more suitable. I pushed your case as hard as I could, but, uh, well, in the end, it was her decision. I understand, Mike. I'm sure you did everything you could for me. Yeah, well, uh, there's nothing else around at the moment. I'll uh, keep my ear to the ground, and if I hear of anything, I'll let you know. Thanks. Thanks, I know I do appreciate it. Yeah, well, keep your pecker up. I'm sure something will turn up. See ya. Well, I did tell you to expect me when you saw me. Yes, I know that. There's been no more trouble, I take it. No more? Don't you think I'm in enough trouble as it is? And if you mean there's our one remaining cleaner unsullied by me, you need have no fears on that score, believe That's me. That's not what I meant, Derek. What am I going to do? I've had a horrendous day. I feel that everyone's been staring at me, pointing the accusing finger. Look, Derek, you have to stop thinking like that. You've done nothing to be ashamed of. Out of what you did, quite a lot of women would be flattered by. And you did apologise immediately. And you think that's how the story will come out? A flattering little pat on the backside? Well, it's the truth, Derek. Yeah, I know it's the truth. But you know how these things get blown out of all proportion when the tale starts going around? Maybe it mustn't get out. Not even a hint of it. If it does, I'm ruined. I'm ruined. Promise me you won't breathe a word to anyone. Not to a single living soul. Thank you, love. Is that it, Ken? For now, yes. Right, yeah. That's uh, one sixty-five. All right, thanks, Ivy. Thank you. So, how's it going then? Hey. This uh, late opening business. Well, it'll take a bit of time for folk to get to know we're open. I mean, it's bound to, isn't it? Meaning it's been a quiet night so far, I think. Well, quite a, yeah. Well, as you say, when people get used to the idea, who knows? <laughs> Oh, hello, Ken. Hello. I'm glad to see you making use of our extended hours. This late opening's for people like you, you know, people who are out working all day. And very much appreciated it is, Al. Saves me having to track round to Mr Patel. Right. I think a lot of people are finding that out. Uh, yes, so I understand. I've just been asking Ivy how busy you were. Yeah, well, we better than we expected, eh? Ah, there's no doubt about it, Kenneth. People still appreciate the personal service that only a small shopkeeper can give you. Why don't you give it a try, for Al's sake? Gail, if he keeps me on bended knees, I am not giving up my nights to work in that shop. He's not asking you to work every night. Ivy seems to have to do most of them. Yes, well, Ivy can be happy to do all of them. The tin pot out there in the first place. Yes, and if you ask me, that's half the trouble. More than half. Hmm? Oh, come on, ma'am. You've never been happy with Ivy working in that shop. I didn't ask for Ivy to work in the oh, shop, no. did I? No, but you wanted somebody. You never gave Alf a moment. Peace out to Sally. Yeah? I wanted somebody. Of course I did. I didn't want Ivy, did I? Gail, come on. You know how things are between her and me. They always have been. I like chalk and cheese. Alf knows that and all. I mean, of all the people you could have taken on, he had to choose her. I mean, does that sound like the action of a caring, loving husband? And you're telling me I should give this late night opening like a try just for his sake. <laughs> So what do you want? I want him opening ordinary, normal hours. I want some proper assistance, and I want Ivy out of the shop. That's what I want. Can't let a chance of that. Since when has anybody cared what I want, huh? Hey, vodka and tonic large, rice and a slice. Am I right? Got it in one. Thank God you've turned up. It's been like a flaming morgue in here tonight. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I've left me can can proc at home. Do you mind? I don't want to empty the place completely. Oh, thanks a bunch. I take it that Mavis and Derek won't be honouring us with their presence today? Er, uh, no. Uh, better things to do, I shouldn't wonder. Hey, kid. Do you reckon I could disguise these parsnips as chips? It's the only way I could get Alec to look at them twice. If you don't mind, Bet, after the day I've had, I never want to hear another person mention parsnips. And if you don't want separating from your breath, don't mention them to Derek and Mavis. Between you and me, she's beginning to rue the day she ever heard the word parsnips. I never reckoned Derek had it in him. 
Is there anything in the washer? No. Hey, hey! Is that all you've got? Yeah. Steve, can't you wait till we've got a full load on? I mean, that machine does run fresh air, you know, son? Yeah, well, I need these for tomorrow, don't I? Well, just ask Andy if he's got anything else that can go in as well. He does his own washing. Well, it won't do you any harm to ask him, will it? Dad? Andy! What? Get yourself down here a minute, will you? What do you want? Listen, your brother wants to wash a pair of jeans. Have you got any other stuff that can go in with them? Uh, a couple of T-shirts and a pair of jeans, yeah. Good man, I won't get them, will you? There you are now. That didn't cost much, did it? What's the matter? You haven't said two words since I came in this evening. Look, if there's something on your mind, Steve, there let's isn't. be having it. There isn't. Well, is it something to do with your exam today? It wasn't an exam. <sighs> all right, practical. It all counts, though, doesn't it? Look, I don't want to talk about it, all right? Well, no, it's not all right, because I would like to talk about it. I mean, what happened? Did you botch it up again? I'm talking to you, Steve. No, I didn't botch it. I didn't botch it because I didn't do it. You didn't do it? No. Well, how are you going to pass your exam if you didn't do the practical? I don't expect to pass. I'm not taking the exam. Oh. I'm not taking any exams and I'm not doing any recess. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Well, if I didn't get them the first time, how do you expect me to get them now? Look, just listen no, to me. No, Dad, it's no good. It'd be a waste of time. I'm going to leave school and I'm going to get a job. And what kind of a job are you going to get with your qualifications, Well, son? I'll get some, eh? You won't get in until you've done the recess because you're not going anywhere until you've done them. So what's going on now? Oh. This bright spark of a brother of yours has just informed me that he's wasted everybody's time for the last 12 months, not to mention his own life. He's not going to do his resets. I'm not. Well, go on. Go on, tell him. Tell him how important they are. Look, if he won't listen to me, perhaps he'll listen to you. Go on. Well, I can't do that, can I? I mean, it's his life. If he doesn't want to do him, there's nothing I can do to make him, is there? There's nothing anybody can do. Well, we'll see about that. Double eight, two, five. Liz! Oh, what about you, love? Oh, great. Tomorrow? Oh, that's brilliant. No, it's great news. Yeah. Uh, no, our best news I've had in weeks. Aye. <laughs> uh, no, no, no problems. We're all fine. Yeah, well, I can imagine. That's the last thing you want to go through after what you've just been through. No, no, no. Still upstairs, blitzing their room before Mum gets back and discovers what a slob he really is. Army creases down his pants, but they still end up on the floor like everyone else's. Listen, if he starts, I want you to back us up, all right? You are joking. No, I'm not going back to school. I've made my mind up. I just want to make him see what a waste of time resets really are. Come on, Andy, you'll listen to you. Oh, yeah, Steve, that'll be right. Like he listened to me when I went to leave school and get a job. I've had more sense that I Percy sucked him. And where was my back up then, eh? No, well, you were different. You were getting A's all round and chucking them all away. Come on, you see me point, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do, Steve. And going off your grade, you've no chance. Right, we'll just say that. But he'll say, and will, more than once, that you don't know you've made a right mess of them until you've tried as many times they're going to let you. I'm not going through all that again. It's pointless. It's embarrassing. And if he starts... I'll... Hey, hey! What are you trying to move on, please? I'm all right for a bit. Oh, aye. Meanwhile, I'm left to clean the place up for your mother's return, eh? Well, there's not a lot I could do in quarter of an hour, is there? Look, I thought you said you'd only got games this morning. Only? Uh huh. Well, it's not revision and it's not lessons, right? So you can skip it and help me. I'm up to me oxters at work and I want to get this place tidy for your mum to come back to. And what about me? You've got school to go to. I'm not going in. <clears throat> right, get it vacked and get it dusted. Get yourself round to Alf's, buy this, tell him I'll pen this afternoon, right? Okay. Find out what plane your ma's on, OK? I'll see you later. See you in a bit. I'll be back. Mum, I'm off now. I'll see ya. Oh, hang on a minute, love. I'm gonna be late. Listen, it's about this French trip. Can't go. 
If I'd had more luck on the job front, I'd have made damn sure you went. But I can't guarantee the rest of the money. But so it's all wet. Listen, when things get straight, I will make it up to you. I promise, one way or another. I'm sorry, love. I know how much you were looking forward to it. Look, will you quit making out like I'm half a nanny? Well, I'm not the only one that won't be going. There's loads stopping behind. You're not bothered? I'm bothered, yeah, but I'm not stupid. I stopped making plans when you got the gas bill. I've been worried sick about telling you. Yeah, I know. But I won't forget, you know, when you're rolling it and you've got a posh job, I'll remind you. You said you'd make it up to me. I want, I want. Come here, you. I'm gonna be late. Thank you. See ya. That's fat on. And 40, Betty, please. I'll tell you what, what beats working for Baldwin by a mile, does this? No buses to work, no apple. <laughs> hey, Bet says they're planning to get wed. Him and that Jackie Ingram. Mm. Of course they are, Betty. Who couldn't see that coming? That marriage certificate is no more than an invoice to a bloke like Baldwin. Mm. Lock, stock and barrel, Betty. She is a fool. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Dan. So this is where you went? Yeah, of course it is. Where do you think I've gone? Well, last time I saw you were in bed. I thought you were working till later. Well, I have got some business on you. Yeah, well, you were working last night. Can't hardly do it. If you must know, Lady Muck is boycotting because she says house hours are beyond the bounds of human possibility. Mm. Mind you, you know what she's like, <laughs> Betty. She needs an iron lung after she's put her makeup on. <laughs> Listen, I'll see you later if you're popping in for dinner. Right, Trod on. Try on. Try Try on. Try on. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Well, I woke up and you'd gone. Well, I thought I'd let you sleep in, look, cos you were on late, so I turned alarm off. Yeah, I'm on late, so you're on early. Well, I hope he's paying you for this. Don, we both know this was my idea, and Al's got enough on his plate cos she's playing silly beggars. Yeah, well, she might have more sense than you credit her with. Meaning what? Well, Al's not exactly God's gift to working practices, is it? Give him an inch, you'll take advantage. Don, I like this job. And it soaks me. And if you haven't got out of bed wrong side, I'll try telling your wife. Hey, have you seen her, Andy? Yeah, he's down at Boston, uh, Cheers, Jim. Look. I think he's trying to decide if you're handwriting, last I saw. So, did you want to bail? Oh, no, no. I'll, I'll see you at dinner. If you get one. That says Marjorie. Marjorie, what in Russian? Look, what about Steve? How do you mean? Has he gone to school or what? Oh. Andy? No, he hasn't. But listen, listen to me. I want you to talk to him, all right? Me? Yeah, yeah. He'll listen to you, right? Just tell him what a prat he's been, right? Because if that lad leaves school without making his mark, he's damn sure not going to make it in the working life. And that is a fact. I know, but it's not as even if he was close last time at his exams. He was right out. Well, that's all the more reason for him to put his head down and do something about it. I know. And I want him to know that before his mother walks through the front door. Well, I'm about. Has she phoned yet? Yeah, she phoned. She'll get a cab, but Right, listen. I'm on my way then. I've got a bloke coming to look at that Kawasaki. Now, listen, will you please try and talk some sense into him? Yeah? Good lad. Bye. Thanks, bye-bye. Do you know what I miss, Rita? No. Halter neck tops. I mean, I've got the back for them. I think it's quite rejuvenating showing your back. Well, judging by some of them magazines, you have to show a lot more than your back to look 18. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean, don't you? I mean, they say fashion turns a full circle, and I mean, it's been, what, nearly 10 years since halter necks. It's a shame when fashions just disappear, isn't it? You mean like hot pants? Oh, now, don't knock them. I had a full diary during hot pants. Oh, give over. I were joking. You must have been well past the age of consent then. I'm a great believer in that saying, you're as young as you feel, especially if you're as young as you feel to somebody else. <laughs> 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 See, Audrey, my. Hey, you feel sorry for Alf sometimes, don't you? Oh, I find her too gauche to be funny. Oh, you should talk with a husband accused of touching up the cleaner. That is not funny, Rita. What news there, anyway? Well, it's not for public consumption. Cross me heart. Oh, well, there have been new developments. Oh. Victor sat the cleaner. He sacked her? <laughs> what for? Well, cut backs. Though Derek was always complaining that she never pulled her weight. Was this before or after Derek got friendly with her? Oh, well, after, obviously. You know, no offence. But when Derek talks about his job, it's like watching paint dry. When you talk about it, I reckon it's good enough to watch on telly. 
well, I'm just hoping that's an end to it all. Derek's not the same at home when work's troubling him. Derek! Victor! Again! Sorry? Well, we're not normally so honoured. Two visits in one week. I've not previously found it that necessary. Ah, oh, no. The Carlisle order's coming along nicely. Ahead of schedule, I'm proud to say. You are? Yes. Mrs Shaw, the cleaner? Uh, yes, yes. I've already briefed Mrs Catlow to widen her province. She's getting to grips with the gents at the moment. Uh, Mrs Shaw? Not missed one bit. An exercise in economy. Mrs Catlow manages perfectly well on her own. And, if I may say, she's rather more familiar with the mechanics of a hoover. Uh, that, good. That's some compensation, of course, but then compensation could be rather more of an issue than at first envisaged. I beg your pardon? Mrs Shaw is taking us to court for sexual harassment. What? Correction. She is taking you to a tribunal. Read that. Oh, good grief. That's a tough solicitor. I'm banking on you to meet the rhetoric in your reply. Me? Well, it was your impulsive behaviour that started this thing. If you hadn't slapped their backside, we wouldn't be in this position. I didn't slap. I tapped. If that, and I didn't sack her. I'm attempting not to make this my problem, Derek. You are employed for diligence, delegation and diplomacy. I would like to see those in action. Just the once. You're back? No, no, not till later. Oh, right. Tell her I've fetched her these. There's half from me as a welcome home and t'other half's from Ali, cos when are you coming back to work? Oh, it's nice and clean. She'll be glad of that. Yep. We've only been at it all morning. Everything all right, love? Yeah. What's the face for? Me? Oh, come on. I've seen happier faces on the wrong side of a grouse hunt. <laughs> That's a bit complicated. Do you know, I think that kettle's just boiled. Ah. There we go. That'll put hairs on your chest. Well, whatever works for you, Betty. Hey, watch it, Malms. What I was saying, Don, I spend a third of my working life in that bookies. I put a lot of effort into my work and one mistake and the boss is down on me like a ton of bricks. What kind of mistake? A three-minute one. Three lousy minutes out of 40 hours a week times so God knows how long. I mean, is that fair? You took a bad bet. What's 100 quid when I earn him a fortune? Lost me concentration. Let one of the regulars have tick. Not seen him since. Yeah, well, like you say, they take no notice if all you're doing is a good job. Hold right on. All right. All right. Uh, can I have a pint, please, Bet? Do within a sec. Yeah. Finish a council meeting, then, have you? Oh, aye, it makes sense. You never heard waffle till you heard Weatherfield club in council. I'm not kidding you. I'm gagging here, love. Hey, hey, let me get rid of these oh. first. Yeah, well, if you've got many more books, I'm going to have to find myself a new drinking part. <laughs> hey? I'm waiting for Ivy. Ivy, she's in the shop, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, I know. She's been there since early morning without a break. I'm going to meet me for dinner. Oh, I'll go relieve her. Never mind that pint, Betty. All right. Senior management, that's a joke. Every time we hit a problem, Victor shows about as much leadership as a tapeworm. Well, what's going to happen? It's only we when it suits him. Hit a crisis, he gets out the company mascot. Wilton, the sacrificial lamb. It's a mess, Derek. Your mess. Well, if she still had a job, we wouldn't be in this bother. He sacked her. Have you done with these, oh, love? yes, thank you, Betty. Oh, there was nothing wrong with it. Oh. Derek's just not up to it. No, I found it rather bland, frankly. Well, actually, it did taste quite different. I didn't think you'd notice it was Bet's idea. I mean, I wasn't so sure, but it seems to be going very, very well. The parsnips, you know. Oh, very funny. Right? Well, that's just about the level of this place. It's not parsnips, Mavis. That's not the secret ingredient. It's laughing stock, thanks to you. Oh, Derek, I don't... Oh, excuse me. I don't think Derek... What have I said? Oh. Are you going to talk to me or what? Well, no, that depends on what you've got to say, son. I'm not going back to school. And if you'll hear me out, I'll tell you why. Oh, I see. I've got that privilege, have I? No matter that it's a heap of nonsense because you had a disappointment with your first exam. I missed by a mile. So try again. Oh, yeah. Easy for you to say. Oh, it's easy for me, is it, eh? Well, let me tell you this. I reckon by the time you guys got to this age, I wouldn't have to lecture you like a pair of wee lads. Oh, come on, Dad. Give us a break. He's only trying to put his case forward. And you started this, didn't you? Yeah, a couple of months ago with your poncy ideas about leaving school. Oh, come on. This is different. Look, 
can neither of you just be satisfied with the luxury of an education? Dad, will you please just... Hello? Right, stum, and you put your fist right. Oh, how you doing, love, Hi. eh? Hi. Oh, put the kiss down, give us a cuddle there. Oh, Jess. Oh, I've missed you. I've missed you too. Mm. Oh. Come on, on in here. Give us your bag there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Got you back. Hiya. Oh, that journey has half killed me. Well, and I'd almost forgotten what this place looked like. <laughs> All right, I'll put the kettle on. Give the lad a medal. So, you're all in one piece, then? Hey, did you think we'd fall apart since you left, eh? Well, something like that. Well, yeah. we've coped extremely well, haven't we, son? Oh, yes. Got on like a house on fire. Uh. Brilliant. And, uh, school? School? School's fine. School, yeah, school's great. Good. Cos I'm worried about you. Mm. You leave the door open so I can get some fresh air. Thank you. I could murder you. Pardon? Don't you ever do that to me again, Rita. Because if you do, I will just go. I will, I will go. But what's the charge? Parsnips in the hot pot. Oh, hilarious. My husband has just left work in an unfit state to drive because you and your so-called friends find other people's problems entertaining. What are you talking about? Parsnips in the hot pot. Bet told Betty because you had told Bet. So they made us a dish specially for us. Wasn't that nice? Now half of Weatherfield is sniggering at the inadequacies of my private life. And no doubt about the sexual compulsions of my husband at work. This of you, I said nothing of the sort. Rita, this is serious. Derek could suffer terribly if this gets out. <laughs> if he's as good as hanged now. Will you listen? I said now to sort. To better anybody else, as far as their parsnips are concerned, just ask yourself whose magazine you got that information out of. The Parsnip Path to Passion. Whose? Bet's. Now, you didn't have a monopoly on that idea, you know. Bet paid for that magazine along with thousands of others. I mean, we had a laugh about it being in the magazine, but that's all. Well, Betty made specific reference to Derek and me. You're not imagining this, are you? You're not getting paranoid, are you? She implied she'd made it specially. Just for you two, in a busy bar. Is that likely? Well, no, not no, really. No, no, well, now then. Easy breathing. Get yourself a cuppa and go and phone Derek. I'm just sniffing out on an errand. It won't be there yet. Well, count wine gums till you calm down. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. I just feel it's all my fault. I, I wish I'd never set eyes on this feature on parsnips. I'm sorry. I accept it. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you later, then. <laughs> Make you laugh. I wish you could have seen his face. <laughs> I wish I'd been there. I wish I hadn't. She set me up. <laughs> Poor Derry. Oh, Navy, so though. She did report improvements after she'd fed him about 500 weight of parsley. Oh, <laughs> hey, I want Spanish fly on the soup of the day today, Betty. <laughs> Right, <laughs> Beck Gilroy, that is the last time you have my confidence. I'm sorry, Rachel. I couldn't resist. I don't care. That girl's nearly in tears over there. It meant a lot to her. I don't know how you could do it. Oh, you got on there, Come on, well, I'll oh. that. We'll crack them oh. off. Let's have a drink on, maybe. Oh, oh, look at it. Oh, 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 you wicked. Oh, oh. Well, welcome oh. home, Liz. Oh, thanks, Rita. Oh. I can't wait to get back to work. Jim's mother's <laughs> sense of humour stops at getting the photo album out. Oh. So she's getting better, then? Oh, she's fitter than I am, I tell you. Though she'd crack on, she couldn't lift a spoon. It never stops, does it? I mean, you're back in the deep end, isn't at home? I mean, Vet was saying, with Milado chucking school. Andy? Oh, no, that is all sorted out, thank God. No, I mean, Steve. I mean, Bet was saying that... <laughs> what? Excuse I've me. just changed my mind, that's all. And have you? Or is there something the matter? Well, I don't really get on with Mrs. Hinks. I don't fancy spending a fortnight in France with her. Oh, fair enough. Well, I'll get my money back. <laughs> I've really no idea. You'd have to speak to Mrs. Hinks about that. 
Okay, I better go. Mum wants these spuds. I'll right. see ya. All right, bye now. So why didn't you tell me? Well, it was your first day back. Oh, so you all pretended nothing had happened. That was for my benefit. We had enough on your plate, Dad said. Uh, never mind what your dad said. I want to know what you've got to say. I just can't face going back. I'm, I'm not like Andy. Come on, you can't say I didn't give it a fair chance. So have you been rowing? Oh. Uh, do you think I could say something here? I mean, I think I sort of agree with Steve. If his heart's not in it, he's not going to get anywhere, is he? Nobody wants you to be unhappy, Steve. Couldn't wait, could you, eh? Jim. Your mum's been looking after your grand for two months and you couldn't wait one day. He didn't tell me. And I'm not guilty. Just cut it out. Anyway, that's not important. I'd a right to know. Listen, Steve, <sighs> nobody wants to make you unhappy. I just want to know that you've thought it through. Of course I have. <laughs> Daisy, off lemon, boo. Waste of space. Go on, upstairs. Do we ever take more than two steps forward without taking three backwards? Jim, calm down. He's just looking for an easy route out, and the more rope we give him, the less future he's going to have. Listen, right now my main worry is you. Just climb down, can't you? And stop treating them as if they're a pair. Andy had his reasons for wanting to quit school. Steve has different ones. And they're not that unrealistic. Yeah, but they just quit so easily, love, and you know it. Yeah, all right, but just hang fire, will you? They're not rookies who need a boot up the backside to move them forward. They're intelligent kids. <laughs> Steve! <laughs> Stop it! No, I won't, love, because that's my point. Andy's going to make it because he's bright. Steve, for all his charm, he's going to need paperwork, exams, certificates. Yeah, well, screaming pitch won't bring him to his senses, will it? Yeah, all right, I realise that now. That's the nearest thing to water this thing will get. Hey, don't knock it. Have a look around and take stock. No one else has got one. No, Des. They've got gardens. Mere ornaments. And this is? This is uh, lots of things. It's a bit of texture. It's a sculpture on an urban landscape. It's an um, open air love nest. You what? Oh, at least it can be. Nice little cabin. Go on, I dare you. Don't dare me. It's childish. Persuade me. You've had a hard day at work. People non stop yakking. What you need is uh, someone to treat you gently. Bedroom stuffy, filled with Phyllis's perfume. You're doing a pretty good job so far. <laughs> Those stairs, wench. <laughs> cool. mm -hmm. Hiya. Hiya, Steve. I'm just in time. You can give us a hand. Des! Oh, I'm gonna get some brushes, we can start work. Yep, I'll give you an. Anything to get away from the Lance Corporal. Your dad giving you a hard time? Yeah, but my mum's back now, so at least to get a word in edgeways. Ah, uh, well, it's only cos he loves you. Yeah, could do with showing it a bit more often. Now, I'm looking for names for me boat, Betty. Draw one out the hat, winner gets the privilege of its maiden voyage under new management. How about I saw, eh, Betty? No, I think I'll pass on that. I'm not good on water. Now, I think I'll call it Steph the Third. Not the third. After the three great loves in my life, Betty. First me boat, second me car, step the third. Ooh! <laughs> I had to bring him out to give the kids a break. God knows how long they've been at each other's throats. Oh, but listen to me going on. I haven't even said how sorry I am. Sorry? About the election. I hear Alf won his seat back. Yeah, he did. Were you really disappointed? Well, naturally. Mind you, I thought that was as bad as things could get. What do you mean? Try trading on ex-counsellor to get yourself a job. No way. It's been a quick lesson for me, I can tell you. Oh, Deirdre, I am sorry. Is there nothing? Oh, yes, I found my niche. Selling kitchens down the telephone. <laughs> I'm making that much. I've had to cancel our Tracy's French trip. Oh, God. Well, look, we can't cry into empty glasses, can we? Where's he got to? 
Fair enough, man, to coffee. Well, I'm not. Well, you were pretty smart this afternoon, weren't you, eh? Dragging your mother in. I didn't. Look, you were exactly the same when Andy said he'd had enough. Yeah, look at Andy now, eh? Ready to sit his exams, ready to see it through. Why can't you just take no for an answer? Because you won't consider the options, son. For the last time, I have. Fine. You want to hear my last word on the subject? Out! Right? If you want to chuck your life away, I'm having no part of it, son. You can do it out of my house. If you're stuck for something to do, you can always work on the boat. I'm not proud. I accept help from anyone. I'm try a psychiatrist. One specialises in obsessions. So you don't appreciate the difference between dreams and obsessions? Dead. I might have my dreams, but I'm certainly not... Is somebody not... on it? What? There's somebody on boat. I just saw, you know, a movement. Oh, yeah, now who's dreaming? Look! Again? Stowaways? We're not even launched yet. We've got stowaways. Yes, be careful. Right, come on, then. Let's be having you. Morning. What do you mean he's not he there? He hasn't been in all night. Doesn't look like it. His bed hasn't been slept in anyway. Would you believe it, eh? Again? I thought we'd been through all this before. Right. I thought we'd put it behind us. Has he taken her life? <sighs> Don't know. What is it this time? Another girl or his exams or what? Don't know that either. Oh, you're a big help, aren't you? <laughs> look, don't start blaming me. So what do we do? Ring the police again? No, 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 no. We're not doing any is ringing the police business. The only ringing I'm going to do is ringing the lad's neck when I find him. Got it. Right. Hello. Oh, good one, Steve. Running away again, yeah. Right, I'll just have a quick word no, with him. No, I'll talk to him. Right, well, let me speak to him after you. Steve? Where are you? I'm just across the road. Selecting Desmond's desk back garden in the boat. You slept in a boat? <laughs> hey, the Lake District again. Yeah, that and I've been working on. Tell your mum I'm making you some breakfast. But why? Just what do you think you're playing at? Well, Dad told me to get out, so I Your Dad said what? You told him to get out? Well, of course, I, mean, I said lots of things. Oh, I'm just going to have some breakfast, sir. Well, you can come over here and have your breakfast. Well, Steph's already making it. Can I have a word? Liz? Hiya. Look, he's all right. He don't seem to come to any harm, and uh, we're just having a breakfast anyway, so... Well, I don't want to put you to any trouble. You know? And he's not going to be going anywhere afterwards, are you? So he'll be here when you want him. Well, yeah. I suppose if you don't mind hanging on to him. No, he's fine. Right. I'll see you later. Bye. Thanks. Bye. So where is he, then? At the barn. Oh, well. He slept on that boat they've got in the back garden. On a boat? What a clown! Right, I'll just pop across, have a quick oh, word no, with... Oh, no, no. I'll go. But not until you've told me what you said to him. All I said, love, was no more than anyone else with any common sense would have said. That he should get out. That he should work out what he wants to do with the rest of his life, love. You've got to see by the sounds of things. Quiet to you. Look, I told him if he continued to upset you with all this nonsense about leaving school, you might as well do it properly and leave home as well. Well, that sounds like a good one, Dad. Shut up. Don't you ever think. Don't you ever think before you open your mouth. Wait a minute. This is my fault now, eh? Well, by the sound of it, yeah. Well, fine. If you know so much, you sort it out. I shall keep my distance and see if you can do any better than I did. Goodbye. Were it like this all the time I were away? Not all the time, no. Well, I certainly won't go away again. Or if I do, I shan't bother coming back. Oh, hello. Mrs. Um, Naylor. Uh, my name's Deirdre, and I'm ringing as part of a national survey we're doing into kitchens. Uh, kitchens, yes. I wonder if you could tell me, do you, do you have a fitted kitchen? And if so, when was it installed? Oh. 
Oh, I see. Well, um, I wonder if you'd be interested in our professional designer replanning it for you. No obligation to buy. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. I thought you was going to give this up. Oh, so did I, but since nobody else seems to want me. Can I get some breakfast? Yeah, of course you can, love. Oh, listen, did you manage to tell your teacher about not being able to go on the French trip? Not really, no. I didn't get a chance. Hello, Mrs Needham. My name's Deirdre, and I'm ringing as part of a national survey we're doing into kitchens. <laughs> well, yes, I do represent a firm of kitchen specialists, but... OK, bye-bye. <sighs> They'll want to know, though, won't they? Well, I'll tell them as soon as we get back into school. Oh, please, love, cos uh, if they can get somebody else to go, we might be able to get our deposit back. Anyway, it's only fair to let them know. Hello, Mrs Needlesham. My name's Deirdre. There's an article here. It says pickle beetroot's very good for perking up your love life. Oh, thank you, Rita. I'm not interested. No? Well, I made it up anyway. So, has she done out yet? This woman that's threatening to sue Derek. Oh, it's not Derek, it's the firm. And she's not suing, she's going to a tribunal. Right. And I, I don't want to talk about it. Suit yourself. Except, I will say that I think there's something wrong with a system that allows a woman like that to persecute somebody like Derek. Right. I mean, Rita, he's not sleeping properly. It goes to bed and it just lies there. Well, that's how all this started in the first place, isn't it? Oh. Do you want any help, Stan? No, you're all right, Maeve. I'm just browsing. All right, you're welcome. I'm trying to keep out the house for a bit, only I've got visitors and I think they're best left on their own. Relations? To one another, yeah. Look, you know what your dad's like. He didn't mean any of them things. And so why did he say them? Because you got him annoyed with all this talk about leaving school. It's not just talk, I mean it. OK, but your dad worries about you. He wants you to do well. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do well, am I? I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not. Well, I'm not at school, no, but you can make a success of your life in other ways. And your dad knows that. It's what he did. He was no great scholar. You should hear his mother talk. Yeah. And he really doesn't want you to leave home. None of us do. Well, I was only across the road and I was only there for one night. Yeah, well, we didn't know that, did we? We didn't know where you were. Well, you do know. We do now. So can you get back to work? What work? On the boat. Hey, I'm sure Des and Steph don't want you hanging round here all day. Don't mind me. Do you mind if I carry on working on the boat, Steph? Well, no, but... Uh... See? Sorry, have I said the wrong thing? No, no. Just don't want him making a nuisance of himself. He's not. He's done more work on this boat in two days than Des has done in two months. He's uh, just had a bit of a falling out with his dad. You know what they're like at that age. Maybe it's... Oh, Derek, I wasn't expecting you. Uh, oh, it's all right, you go on. Uh, no, 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 that's what I've called for, to say that I won't be um, calling. Uh, that is, I won't be able to take you out to lunch. I'm sorry, but I'm going to see Mrs Shaw get this ridiculous business sorted out once and for all. You're going to her house? I am, yes. I know you think that's asking for trouble, but if there's going to be any trouble, I'd rather meet it head on. Well, there's so much in that. I mean, to be accused of sexual harassment, I resent it. And the more I think about it, the more I resent it. Well, don't you let her upset you. Upset me? <laughs> if there's going to be any upsetting to be done, I'll be the one doing it. <laughs> Wish me luck. Mm. <laughs> Bye, Rita. Bye. 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 Oh, it's such an ugly term, isn't it? Sexual harassment. I suppose it's meant to be. And to apply it to Derek. I mean, it's the other way around, isn't it? She's the one doing the sexual harassing. I tell you what, we'll shut up shop and we'll both go and have some lunch. <laughs> Thought I might find you here. Well, everyone's entitled to a break, love. As long as it's not a break from me you're after. No, you're all right. Hello, love. Nice to see Hiya. you again. What are you doing that side of the back? Get round in, get your sleeves rolled up. I've had enough of these evening shifts. All right, I can take a hint. How are you fixed better now, my little tumbleweed? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I know that. What I want to know is what Victor's part in all this. How do you mean? Well, why ain't he sorting this woman out? I mean, he was the one that sacked her, weren't he? Oh, yeah, but I think Derek feels it's a matter of pride that he does it. 
Victor's letting him. Ooh, yeah. Now, him, I could see being guilty of sexual harassment. Victor! Oh, now, Crude, he's just the sort of bloke I wouldn't like to be indebted to. Oh, hiya. Listen, let's have two halves of lager, please, Betty. Please and a uh, pint for me, please. Okay. Uh, I won't interrupt. Yeah. But, uh, can you just spare a minute? Oh, oh yes, yeah, sure. I'll be with you in a minute. OK. So, listen, have you sorted that daft young son out of ours, eh? Well, I went across and had a word with him. He seems all right, really. I think he just wants to get <laughs> on his own a bit. Yeah. Well, I'll make my peace with him tonight. I mean, I presume he is coming home. He'd better be. Mm. There you go. Thank you. Uh, she didn't just come telling tales. They just came out. Yeah, well, I don't mind you knowing. I can't afford it. It's as simple as that. OK, but uh, I can. So what I want to suggest is, will you let me pay the balance, please? It's not right fair on you, though, is it? Well, you already pay maintenance. Oh, come on, that's not meant to cover trips to France, and I can spare it, and I can't leave anything I'd prefer to spend my money on. Well, she does really want to go. No. Oh, OK, then. Thank you. But don't feel you've got to Deirdre, make I don't feel anything. Except our daughter wants to go on this trip, and between us we can manage to send her, and I think that's how it should be. Yeah, I suppose it is. Anyway, yeah, I'll you, you get back to your friends. It was a moment's thoughtlessness, for which I immediately apologised. I'm not denying that. And I hope you'll agree there's never been any other occasion where you've had cause to complain about my behaviour. No, I can't say as there has. Well, then. Still lost my job, haven't I? Ah, uh, yes, I, I know, and I'm very sorry about that. Very sorry indeed. But believe me, Mrs Shaw, this isn't the way to get it back. Happen not. So, what I suggest is that we forget all about this unpleasantness. You withdraw your allegations, and for my part, I'll be quite happy to give you as good a reference as I possibly can. Well, I suppose... Oh, well... This will be my husband. Ah. <laughs> oh. This is Mr. Wilton from Pendlebury. Mr. Shaw. I see. This is the one that gave you your cards, is it? No. No. Uh, this is uh, the other one. The other one? Yes. Well, I'm surprised you have the nerve to show your face. Mr. Shaw, I've not come here to argue. So what have you come for? I've come to explain. Then explain to me. Explain how my wife can come home one day telling me you've been laying hands on her, then come home next telling me she's been sacked. Explain that if you can. There's no connection between my behaviour towards your wife and, and the unfortunate fact that she lost her job the following day. You expect us to believe that? Well, it's the truth. Do you believe him? Hey, I don't know what to believe. It was just an unfortunate coincidence. Unfortunate? Aye. Unfortunate for who, though? Unfortunate for my wife, I'd say. She, she's the one that's lost her job. That's entirely out of my hands, I'm afraid. And so is she. And that's the way she's staying. Oh. No, I'll tell you what, this is Mr... Uh, Wilton. Wilton. This is no coincidence. This is a cover-up. Old pals act is what this is. No, I assure you... You misbehave with my wife and then your Mr Pendlebury comes along to clean up after you. Mr Pendlebury wasn't even aware. Is my dinner ready? Yes. Uh, yes, I'll get it out. You see, I might not go to work in a suit, but that don't mean to say I've no between me ears or that I can't tell right from wrong. If you could just talk to your wife... Oh, I'll talk to her. Aye, I'll talk to her, which is something you won't be doing any more of in the future. Now I'll thank you to get out of my house before I forget myself. Uh, yes, look, there's no need to be like this, Mr Shaw. I must be getting soft. No. Most men wouldn't have had you through the front door after what you've done. But what else can I say? You might try offering her a job back. Short of that, you can do all you're saying to our solicitor. There you go. Oh, cheers. I hope Des is paying you for all this. No, I'll be joining it, aren't I? Even so. Yeah, I'll have to pay you back for uh, letting me stay, don't I? <laughs> you only stayed one night and we didn't even know you were here. <sighs> yeah, well, say I wanted to stay another night. If that's all right. I thought you and your mum had got things sorted out. Doesn't mean I want to spend every night there, does it? And I don't want your mum and dad thinking we've got you chained up here as slave labour. 
Maybe I should tell him. Ask him. Ask him, then. Well, if you do, and if they say it's all right, I don't suppose there'd be anyone else leaving in it, would there? Yeah, I can go. Well, it's all sorted out now. What tonight? Well, we'll ask me mum, but I don't see why not. Oh, hello, stranger. Hey, I've been trying to ring you for the past two days. I haven't been able to get through. Oh, it's this telephone selling I've been doing, or in my case, telephone non-selling. Are you sure your mum says it's OK? Oh, I see. Got your apprentice on now. <laughs> no. Hang on, I'll just ask mine. Mum, can I go round to Lindsay's for my tea and step over? Well... Her mum says it's OK if you do. Oh, go on. It sounds as if you've got the pair of us stitched up between you. Yeah, so, she says I things on the job front? Oh, yeah, okay. nothing. Not only can't I sell kitchens, I can't okay, sell myself you. either. Hiya, Phil. Hiya, kid. You all right? Yeah. I'm going to France. What, now? No. I've just been telling her I can't afford it, and now Ken's chipped in with the rest of the money. Good for him. Yeah, it is. Hello? Oh, hello. Yeah, well, that's probably because I haven't had anyone show any interest. How many? Um, I'm on page three of that sheet you gave me. Well, I think that's a bit quick. I have tried, but what can I do? If people aren't interested, they're not interested. I can't force them into... Well, yes, I suppose it might be my telephone manner. Or it might just be that folk have got more sense than to buy kitchens off somebody they don't know talking to them on the other end of a phone. Well, fine. Yeah, and goodbye to you two. Another non-sale? Biggest non-sale of all time. I've just been sacked. Really? That was Mrs Warren from the agency. Wanting to know why there haven't been any referrals and then suggesting that it might be my telephone manner that isn't suitable. Oh, dear. It's not funny, Phil. Mm, sorry. That was all I'd got. Right, I'll see you. I've just been sacked. They don't want me doing telephone selling anymore. Well, you weren't that good at it anyway, were you? No. All right, I'll see you. All right. Have a good time, love. OK, bye. 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 Trouble is... You won't accept what fate has in store for you. You keep trying to fight it. Oh, yeah. What does fate have in store for me? Working for me. Phil, we've talked about that. Well, let's talk some more about it. I'll take you out tonight. No, not tonight. I, I don't feel like it. OK, I'll come round here. I'll bring a takeaway and a bottle of wine. What time do you want me? Phil, I need a job. A real job, not favours. Hey, we said we'd talk about it tonight, right? Not now. Tonight. So anyway, I dropped Yvonne at her parents and thought I'd call and see how you were. Oh, that was very nice. What did Rita mean, though, that she was half expecting me? Oh, you have to take no notice. She says silly things sometimes. It was nice of her to let me off early. Mavis, can I ask you something? Now, I know I'm Derek's employer, but I hope you see me as something more than that. Well, yes, as a, as a friend. A friend, yes. Are things all right between you and Derek? Yes. What, what sort of things? Well, I'm thinking about this business that's blown up at work between Derek and this cleaning woman. Yeah, well, he is very worried about that. But it hasn't made you see him in a different light. I mean, some wives might begin to wonder whether this wasn't just the tip of the iceberg. I shall always stand by Derek, in this as in everything else. Good. That's what I hoped you'd say. But has it made you see him in a different light? No, no, I shall always stand by Derek as well. Then we'll both stand by him. Yes. In our different ways, of course. But I told you, your dad didn't mean any of them things. Oh, no, it, it's not because of that. So why? Well, just like sleeping on the boat. And you don't get seasick. Steve, you can't go around sleeping in other folks' gardens. What are they going to think? Mum, they don't mind, they've said. Oh, they've actually said? Steph said I could stay there as often as I wanted, and he's always saying he wants the room for himself anyway. Yeah, that's true. So I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, you're not even going to eat with us? Mum, I'm only across the road. It doesn't mean I'm leaving home. Oh, what a shame. Well, I don't know what to say. But I don't think your dad'll be right pleased. Well, at least we won't be rowing all the time, will we? And Steph really said she didn't mind. Mum, she said I was welcome. So I'll see you tomorrow, then. Bye. Bye. Oh, 
Oh, you never I should guessed. never have gone. It was a mistake. Maybe it's a bad mistake. What? To see Mrs. Shaw. Or rather, Mr. and Mrs. Shaw. It turned out he was there as well. And he all but physically ejected me into the street. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh. oh yes, I was. I was in the vicinity, so I thought I'd call and say hello. Uh, I've tried to persuade Victor to stay for supper. No, no, that's very kind, Mavis, but I promised Yvonne I wouldn't be too long. Oh, what a pity. Yes, it is. Anyway, I'll get back to my cooking and I'll, I'll let you have a word with Derek. You went to see her then? Who? Oh, yes. Well, not very wise, Derek, if I might say so. I thought I could have talked to her. What made you think that? You haven't had much success at talking to her up to now. I'll have to do something. No, Derek, I think the best thing is for you to do nothing. I'm the one that's got to do something. Well, what that something is, I haven't quite decided yet. Bye, Mavis. Oh, bye, Victor. The forecast said rain. It'll be all right. Of course it will. That boat was designed to withstand force ten gales. It might have done till it got holes in it. Look, the spare bed's made up is no trouble. I don't want you getting soaked and developing pneumonia. For one thing, your mum would never talk to me again. Well, OK, then. Do you want to bring your stuff in, then? Yeah. I take it his parents do know, do they? So he says. And they don't mind? Well, they could have always stopped him if they'd wanted. But what's the big attraction? Sleeping in our spare room? Well, from what I remember of being that age, it's always a bit of an adventure sleeping at somebody else's house. I thought only married men felt like that. Yeah, well, you would. You know which it is? Top of the stairs, second on your left. Yep. Perhaps his family want rid of him. When I mean, he gets there tomorrow, they'll have moved house, left no forward and address. Then we'll be stuck. No, I'm getting these now. It's uh, three cherry peas and what will you have? Half a bit of... Uh, yes, of course. Half of the sweet cherry, thank you. And then you're going to relax and we're going to talk about something else besides... You know what, I'm not even going to say. Thank please. Only if you stop acting like I've done something terrible. <laughs> well, I'd better get back to ceremony, aren't I? Hey, you were the one who started this by telling him he should leave home. And you were the one who was going to go round and sort it out. And you've had all day to do so, Liz. And what's the result? He still prefers to stay with his neighbours <laughs> as opposed to his own family. Now, man. Now, sit down. You read about these cases in the newspapers. <laughs> Derek, what did I say? No, no, no. You do, you do. And even though the man's not guilty, you think there must be something. No smoke without fire. Well, that's how it's going to be with me, Mavis. That's how it's going to be with your husband. Women will be edging away from me in bus queues. And what have you been doing this bank holiday, Ken? Very little and enjoying every minute of it. Good for you. You know, Beth, I once thanked you for helping me when I needed help. Hey. And you said I probably didn't need it then, but one day you hoped that I would. Well, I think that day's arrived. I don't know anything special has happened, though. Just happen to feel it's not such a bad old world after all. Well, I'm very glad. Are you going to pay me for this? Or are you trying to flannel me into a free drink? <laughs> I'll pay you. So, when do you want to start? Phil, I am not going on your payroll as your own private charity. It wouldn't be charity. Well, what would it be then? A kept woman? Come on, don't talk like that. Well, the people will. Deirdre, I've got plans. You've always got plans. New plans, where I need somebody to help me, right? I need somebody. You'd be letting me down. If I said yes, if... Yes? What exactly would I be doing? You'd be working for your own future, and for Tracy's, and for your share of the good life that's out there waiting. Don't tell me you don't want some of that. Oh, it'd make a change. Right, then. Here's to PJ Promotions. PJ what? My new business, our new business, that's going to make us millionaires before you know it. Come on, to success, to the both of us. Go on, then. our lodger could be up. We've got to sort something out with that lad. Steph. What? We said temporary. It's been three days. Dad, it's half past seven. You tell him that, not me. He's the one who woke us up. You woke me up. Yeah, well, now you're awake, let's talk about it. There's no escaping there, Mother Teresa. 
What do you mean, Mother Teresa? Well, she collects waifs and strays and all. Look, he needs some time away from home to do some thinking. Well, perhaps you can't remember what that's like, Grandad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello. I've, uh, I've brought you some tea. Um, yeah, bring it in, mate. Well, I didn't expect this. Yeah, we'll get down, get dressed, and your breakfast will be ready. Breakfast? Mm-hmm. I know it'll be too long. Oh. Well, that was dead on, love. It's nice to have you back. Yep, and I'll second that. I wish everybody thought so. No, listen, love, you said he could go. You agreed. Just for the odd night. That was two days ago. Look, Mum, don't worry. He'll soon be back. Remember the Lake District? Yes, I do remember. And I don't think this is the time to bring it all up again. Well, why not, love? I mean, it's the truth. I mean, the lad's a dreamer. We've done everything in our part to encourage him and to help him out. We have nothing to reproach ourselves for. Right. Well, I'm going to get going anyway. So I'll see you. All right, see you. And he's right, you know, love. Right or not, it doesn't help. Well, if you can't bear the truth... The truth is, our son prefers living with strangers to living at home. And that's something none of us can afford to take lightly. Right, well, I'm off to work. And if you've any sense, you'll leave it. Listen to Andy. He'll be back. Do you want some breakfast? No, haven't got time. Cup of tea, then? Yeah, I think we could squeeze a brew in. Now, where is it you're taking me, or is it still a secret? I told you, stick with me and I'll cover you in diamonds. Oh, 10 p pieces would do me at the moment. There you go again, selling yourself short. Don't talk to me about selling. You see, it takes talent to recognise talent. Oh, that's where I've been going wrong, is it? Not you, them. All those blinkered people who can't recognise the potential lurking behind that attractive exterior. Look, if this is your way of trying to sweet-talk me into taking some specially created job because you feel sorry for me... Deirdre, it isn't a job. Well, what is it, then? I told you. You'll find out when you get there. Mm. Great breakfast. Mm. Yeah, well, I knew you like cooked and Steph didn't, so I had to guess at a grapefruit. It's delicious. I didn't put any sugar on it because I thought you might be watching your weight. So. <laughs> well, not that you need to. I mean, it's just. It's a very nice lot. We well, could always put some more toast just on Just sit it. down and relax. Well, some more coffee. I mean, it's not going to take. Look, it. I'll get the coffee. I don't want you to think I'm sponging enough. You I mean I can pay me way, you know? Look, well, it's all right. Just relax. Oh, my mate. Hiya. Hiya. Well, never in bother. <laughs> Ah, you're going up for the boat earlier this morning, aren't you? Steve's helping Des on the boat. Oh, I see. Well, I won't disturb your breakfast. I'll go upstairs and start at that room. Oh, you're all right. I can do that. You what? It's clean. You don't have to bother about that now, Amy. Um, no, no, you help me on the boat, Steve. Uh, Phyllis does the cleaning. That's why she's here. That's right. Job, well. Yeah, you're more used to me on the boat, mate. <sighs> right, well, I'll make a start, then. I'll, uh, I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Do I take it that things are not as they should be on the cleaning lady front, Mavis? Things are definitely not as they should be. In fact, things have gone much worse. It's not only the Shaws gunning for Derek now, it's Victor as well. Well, I thought Derek went to see Mrs Shaw and explained. <gasps> yes, he did, but the husband turned up and threatened him. Oh, dear. Oh, and it's all my fault, Rita. If I hadn't been stupid enough to feed him all those parsnips, none of this would have happened. Forget about the parsnips, Mavis. How can I forget about them when he's brought all this on his head? Well, look, all this will blow over. And just because Mrs Shaw's husband threatened her, it doesn't mean she'll go through with it. Well, she won't if I can help it. What do you mean? I'm going to see her this lunchtime. I'm going to explain the whole thing to her. Uh, exactly what are you going to explain? Well, that Derek's a gentle, caring man who, because of my selfishness, was exposed to a powerful aphrodisiac, which then brought on him feelings over which he'd no control. You're going to tell her about the parsnips? Well, yes, of course I am. I'm going to confess that I gave them to him because we were having... Well, we weren't having... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I've got the drift, maybe, but... I'm sure that'd be best kept to yourself, along with the parsnips. Well, what else can I say to her? Well, um, appeal to her common sense. I mean, she knows Derek. She knows he wouldn't normally take liberties with anybody, least of all a woman. Tell her it was a silly joke that went wrong, a mistake. And do you think that would work? Well, anybody that knows Derek, even slightly, recognises he's no bluebeard, including Mrs Shaw. You could be right, Rita. I mean... 
He did say that he felt he was making progress before the husband turned up. Well, then, you go and talk to Mrs Shaw, then chat Victor up and see if he won't give her her old job back and everybody will be happy. This. Hang on a minute. This is the stars. This is a very small corner of my universe. Come on, I'll show you the launch pad. Now, bear in mind, first impressions can be deceptive. <laughs> I should hope so. The boys have been using it to doss in during the tea break, but I'll soon have it sorted. Into what? Office, of course. I mean, get rid of the garbage, liquor paint, new desk, filing cabinet, chair, phone, fax machine, even a rubber plant. We can call it the executive suite. Well, I wouldn't like to be the executive installed in this particular suite. Oh, that's a pity, because I was hoping you would. Doing what? PJ promotions. Gambling? No, not gambling. No, sit down for a minute. <sighs> what I want you to do isn't even connected with slot machines and amusement arcades. Don't tell me you're getting out of PJ Leisure. Oh, no. No, PJ Leisure's my bread and butter. What I'm interested in, what I really want to do, is develop the promotional side of the entertainment business. And this place is going to be the centre of that operation. And you seriously want me to run it? No, I want you to be a full partner. Oh, Phil! Look, I'm flattered, but I know nothing about promotional work. So, you knew nothing about being a counsellor once, but it didn't stop you having a go. Yeah, this is a bit different. Well, not really. I mean, I'd say it called for similar skills. Dealing with new people, new ideas, thinking up new projects, making them acceptable, attractive. But I know nothing about business. You're used to spending other people's money, aren't you? I mean, I thought that's what you counsellors did all the time. Uh, well, yes, but... And you're attractive, mature, just the sort of honest image any successful company needs. <laughs> if you say so. Yes, I do say so. So, all we've got to do is fix this place up and we're in business. Fixing things takes money, Phil. I haven't got the sort of money to invest in a partnership. You don't need any yet. I've got the capital. I just need the right sort of person to come in with me and run it effectively. We can sort the money out later. Come on. What do you say? <sighs> I don't know. It's all so sudden. Not for me, it isn't. And you're a free agent now. Promotions. It's for real, Deirdre. It's not a favour. It's not a handout. OK. Partner. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, give us a light tail, Betty, for Betty's sake. Do you know, if I go in the crying, I'll crumble to dust like her in that story. Who's that, then? She, you remember, her shaman dress took her part. A woman a thousand years old. She only looked 21. Hey, do you think she'd let us in on the secret? <laughs> hey, I won't have to go and chase Percy. I'd set my sights on something a lot younger, like some folks I know. Oh, all right, that sounds very interesting. Mm. There's people in the street who'll have to watch for their own, if you ask me. What exactly do you mean, Phyllis? I mean, her and that lad of hers. What, Andy? No, to the one. She's been sleeping. He's been sleeping across the houses. Hey. Well, he's a kid, isn't he? He'll enjoy and keeping out on a boat. It's a bit of an adventure for him. Well, if he were keeping out on a boat, but he's not. He's been sleeping in the spare room. <laughs> and don't tell me there's nothing going on there. <sighs> Looking good, son. I can see the attraction. I'm not going back to school. Hey, I'm not asking you to. What sort do you want? Oh, just pop around for a wee word, you know? Sort a few things out. Do you mind if I come aboard? <laughs> I 
to be killing me, don't you? Oh, it's all right for those with their feet up, isn't it, eh? Now, listen, I've earned this, Martin. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Hey, Nicky, don't mess around you? with them. Your granddad out for good crackers. No, it's all right, as long as he's careful. Just don't drop it or muck it about, that's all. Er, uh, you don't fancy doing me a favour, do you, Audrey? I've got to go into town. I've got to pay some bills. I don't mind lugging David round, but I don't fancy dragging these two round with this Yo, as well. No, it's a pleasure. We'll find someone to do, <laughs> won't we, kids? Great. Right. Well, sound. Um, I better go because he's fast asleep in the car. Hey, you two, behave yourselves today, right? And uh, thanks again, Audrey. Much appreciated. Martin, it's no problem. Now, you know I always love seeing them. It'd be nice to have some intelligent conversation for a change. Hey, I'll tell you what, son. Very nice. Bit more money spent on her and she'll take you across the channel. No problem. <sighs> yeah, probably. Oh, aye. Aha! Uh -huh. So, you do your cooking in the wee camper stove here in the kitchen? Galley. Sorry, Galley. Now I eat in the house. Oh, well, very nice. What? You sleep in here, Steve? I well, was doing it. But the uh, staff let me have the spare room. Oh, very generous of her, eh? Hey, you get your feet nicely under the table there, eh? They've been good to me. What, and we haven't? This is different. Well, I know that and you know that, but I'm afraid your mum doesn't know that. You left home at 15. True. So? Well, my mum was just as upset as your mum is. It didn't stop you, though, did it? No. But then I didn't go and live with another family, Steve, did I? You always said the army was your family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I suppose I did. I'm not doing very well at this, am I? <sighs> Look, I like it, him. They treat me like an adult. I don't get any hassle. All right, so come home, we won't give you any hassle. Listen, Steve, I know we've made mistakes with you, but parents do make mistakes, you know. Your mum's taken this awfully bad. She thinks she's let you down. Yeah, we can, we can tell her that she hasn't. I, I didn't leave home because of mum. No, you left home because of me. Because you wouldn't listen. Because you think I'm too young to make my own decisions. We're just anxious that you don't take a decision that you're going to regret for the rest of your life. Yeah, but it's my life, and it's my decision if I do. Oh, look, I knew I wasn't going to get me resets, so what's the point in taking them? All right, so come home, and we'll forget the resets. No. Look, you can still live at home and work on the boat, Steve. Yeah, I could do, but I don't want to. What about the Barneses? Look, they're going to get fed up with you eventually, you know. Yeah, well, I'll think about that when it happens. Right, well, I'm not going to beg you, son. Look, just as long as you know, we still love you, Steve, all right? Yeah. Right, well... You know where we are. You need us. Mavis Wilton. So? Well, Derek Wilton's my husband. I'd like to talk to you. You'd better come in, then. They're going to break up on the street, Grant. Grant. Look, stop now. Don't you, Nicky, while I'm serving? I'm sorry, Mrs. Stop. It's boring in here. Go and keep an eye on your sister till I finish. Then you can. Oh, kids. You're Daphne, what are you doing? It's not funny. It's dangerous, come on. Right, thanks, Mrs. Thorpe. Bye, bye, bye. Well, I'm going to make myself a cup and what do you want? Pork Can I go milk? play football? Oh, yes, I'll get you one, Daphne. Come on. Oh, here we go. Oh, put the fingers on. Right, there you go. Thank you. You're finished early, aren't you? Yeah, well, I just finished a big job and I couldn't be bothered starting another one, so I just thought I'd call it a day. On your own? Well, if you mean it's Steve back, the answer's no, love. And I don't think you will be, as far as I can see. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. I've decided to go across a bit later and have a word. Well, I think you're wasting your breath, love. Well, I'm not going to issue ultimatums. I'm going to tell him he can come and live back here, but still work on the boat. I've already tried. What? Well, I popped over at lunchtime and had a few words with him, you know. You did what? Well, listen, I knew how upset you were. You were the one who kicked him out. 
Well, all the more reason for me to go around and ask him to come back. Hey, don't worry, Liz. I didn't shout. I didn't lose my temper. I told him that we loved him. And as far as I was concerned, if he came back home, we'd forget about the exams. But he wouldn't budge. He wants to stay with the Barneses. Why? Why, though? Well, I suppose they're nothing more than a bunch of kids themselves. I think he feels they treat him like a grown-up. I knew I shouldn't have stayed in Northern Ireland that long. Well, Northern Ireland's got nothing to do with it. It's all part of growing up. And he's right. When he's fed up, he'll be back. I hope you're right. Of course I am. Well, I suppose there is a limit to how long you can sleep on a boat packed in somebody's back garden. Yeah, well, he's not, uh, he's not, he's not sleeping on the boat anymore. They've put him in the spare room. What? Well, not that I think it'll make any difference, love. Oh, don't you? No, look, this is just something he has to work out on his own, in his own time. He'll be back, really. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure I'm prepared to take that risk. I hear what you're saying, Mrs Wilton, and I know it can't have been easy for you to come round, but the fact remains that your husband took liberties with me that any decent man wouldn't have. Oh, but he is a decent man, Mrs Shaw. Derek's just about the most decent man I've ever met. And how do you account for his actions? Because believe me, Mrs Wilton, there's absolutely no doubt about what he did. Oh, yes, I know. And, um, well, I, I have to confess, I haven't really got an explanation. Are you sure, Mrs Wilton? Well, yes. Only they do say, what a man can't get at home, he'll look for elsewhere. Well, I, I beg you to drop this, Mrs Shaw. I mean, Derek's in such a state. He's totally lost his self-respect and his confidence. I've lost my job, Mrs Wilton. Oh, yes, I know. Well, I'm sure Mr Pendlebury can be persuaded to reconsider your position. I can see you're a decent woman, Mrs. Wilton. Oh, and Derek's a decent man. Oh, I do beg you to think again. I'll give it every consideration, Mrs. Wilton. Oh, yes, well, I, I expect you want to sleep on it. And I'd like to discuss it with my husband. Oh, yes, of, of course, but I, I do beg you. Please impress on him that it was just a, an aberration, a moment of madness. And. Well, I have to say, having met you, Mrs Shaw, although I know what Derek did was absolutely unpardonable, well, I can see how he might have been tempted. Oh, really? I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that. <laughs> anyway, I won't take up any more of your time. I'll go and, and I'll leave you to think it over on your own. Well... Thank you for your time, Mrs Shaw. I'm really grateful that you listened to my side. Oh, hi, Liz. Come in. I'm afraid if it's Steve you're after, he's gone to the pictures with a couple of mates. No, it's not Steve. It's you and Des I want to see. Des is out and all one of his mates is getting married. Will I do? Yeah, I reckon you will. Do you want a drink? No, no thanks, Steph. It's not really a social call. Oh. It's about Steve. When I said he could come here, and it is good of you to put up with him, but to be honest, I didn't really see him stopping for more than a night, maybe two at the most, just till he'd got his dad out of his system. Oh, it's fine. He's no trouble. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear it. But that's not the problem. What is the problem? Me. I can't cope with it. With what? With one of my sons living with another family. It's only temporary. Maybe. I hope so. Well, of course it is. I mean, it's just his age, isn't it? I remember me and my dad used to squabble. It's not just that, Steph. It's more than that. This time, I feel we might lose him for good. And I couldn't bear that. You see, the thing is, I feel inadequate. I feel as though I've failed him. Don't be daft. I'm not being daft. You're not a mother. How could you understand? Hey, come on, I'm sorry. Oh, no. It's me who should be sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. Look, I don't quite know what to say. I mean, shouldn't you be talking to Steve about this? I'm just the one who's providing a roof over his head. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to see you about. I want you to tell him it's time for him to leave. 
He'll listen to you, he trusts you. And I think if you tell him to come home, he might just do it. Yeah. Well, if that's what you really want. It is. Right. Well, I'm not sure it's the right thing. I don't care whether it's the right thing. I want him back. I'm sorry to have landed you with all this. Maybe you'll understand how it feels when you've got kids of your own. Thanks. Well, the end of another eventful day for some. I'd give anything to have an uneventful day. Well, from what you said, tomorrow may be just the first of many. Then I shall have to get myself in some sort of scrape, otherwise we'll all die of boredom. You know, she did seem to be a very reasonable sort of woman. But no match for you, by the sound of things. No, I, I made quite a good account of myself, I think. I can see why he was tempted. You know, Mavis, I do believe you're learning the true art of survival at last. I do hope not, Rita. I'm not proud of that particular piece of deception. But it was like the final card played in a most unpleasant game, and the game's not over yet. Ah, but you played it with real style, Mavis. I think so, from what you said. Well, maybe I did at that. <laughs> Night. Good, Phil? Yeah, not bad. Look, uh, don't let me disturb your programme. Nothing special. Do some cocoa? No, you're all right. I had a drink on the way back. Oh, did you now? Not sure I want to know about that. Don't worry, I only had one. I had a visitor tonight. No? Your mum. Oh. She was a bit upset. She said, would I ask you to go back home? No. Well, I said I'd ask and I have done. Well, she had no right coming round asking you that. She was upset. So that's not my problem anymore. All right. I mean, they brought it all on themselves, you know. Look, Steve, you don't owe me any explanations. I just thought you ought to know. Isn't it time you were in bed, anyway? Bed? Look, I know I'm not your mum, but it is late, and you did say you wanted an early start on that boat. <sighs> OK. And you're right about one thing, Steph. What's that? You're not my mother. You're much more to me than a mother. Try and get through today without an row, shall we? Just for once. You don't start rows up unless I'm provoked. Well, there you are, you see. Everybody knows how easily provoked you are. Oh, no, starting oh, around. Sorry, sorry. Andrew, it's not easy keeping your temper when you're working with someone as incompetent and totally unsuitable as I be. Right, come on. <coughs> It's defrosted. Oh, everything's ruined. How could this have happened? There must have been a power cut in the night. A power cut? I don't believe it. What's wrong? Somebody has switched the freezer off. Switched it off. Have a look for yourself. Oh. Well, don't look at me. It wasn't me. Well, it certainly wasn't me. I wasn't even here after lunch. I got out to a meeting. Oh, I didn't switch the freezer off. Well, who did then? King Kong? It's off to work I go. Right. Unless you want me to take the day off. Mm. Well, I just thought you might need a chaperone here. You what? To protect you from your young swain. Funny. Still, uh, you probably imagined it, like you used to imagine I was dotty about you long before I condescended to take you out. Look, Des, this is serious. He really has got a crush on me. I'm certain of Oh, I'm... you think anything in trousers has got a crush on you? Morning, Steve. Hiya. Sorry, Mum, like. No problem. It's not as if your porridge is going to get cold, mate. Steph doesn't know how to make porridge, like most things. I think Steph's a great cook. Have some cornflakes? No need to ask. Hey, if he thinks you're a great cook, he must be smitten. I've got one piece of advice for you. What? 
Don't give him any raw meat. See you at lunchtime. Ciao, Steve. Yeah, see you, Dad. I'm running to work today. No, I've got a day off. Well, that's good news. There you go. Brilliant. Thanks, Mum. You're welcome. Post. Yep. Yeah. Eggs and bacon, eh? Hey? Can't be bad. Well, there's more than I got. Well, you know what she's doing, don't you? What? She's compensating. Compensating? Yeah. Giving me more attention to make up for losing Steve and telling him I'm quids in it. Oh, you're working hard to be number one in this family, aren't you? Well, Maggie's legacy to us all, Dad. And anyway, we're not losing Steve. Holiday brochure for the Isle of Wight. We should be so lucky. What were you two whispering about just now? Whispering? Whispering? We weren't whispering when we did. No. Anyway, right. I'm away to work. Now, am I coming home for my dinner or what? Yeah, I'll leave you something. All right, see you later. Bye. Cheerio night. Do you know what I think, Andy? I think she's lured him. Lured him? What, you mean as in enticed with her physical attraction? Yeah. She's always struck me as a little tramp. Well, he's easily lured. He's our kid, anymore. I mean, a couple of sultry looks and that's your amber, and then zap, Lake District. Exactly. And she's old enough to be his mother. Oh, no. Don't say that. Well, maybe we can refreeze the greens, but all this other stuff. Is... Ah, it's ruined. I don't know what you're going on about. It's insured. Well, I'm not sure about that either when I tell them what happened. I mean, somebody turned the freezer off. Somebody turned a freezer off fully. I mean, it's beyond comprehension. Mm. Well, if you must employ amateurs, elderly amateurs at that. Hey. I didn't switch the freezer off, Alf. Now, we've got that straight, Oh, well, so you say. I do, sir. Yeah, we're back to the phantom, then, are we? Oh, Alf, you know, I'm loath to say this. I'm the last person in the world to start making accusations, but who was the last to leave last night? I mean, who shut up the shop? You did. No, I didn't. Ivy did. But you're saying that Ivy deliberately switched it off. Is that what you're saying? No, she does that. How do you know? Well, she goes round at home switching off all the plugs before she goes to bed in case it starts a fire. I mean, the kettle. Who's told, told her... you that? No, I've heard her say so. I mean, she's that kind of person, Alf. She's a fuss pot. She likes everything just so. I mean, you've only got to see her put a tablecloth on. She likes it dead centre without one end sticking Look, out. Look, I don't believe it. Ivy would not be that stupid. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. You were quick enough to think I would be that stupid, weren't you? Oh, no, you have to stick up for your precious Ivy. I mean, you took her on, so she's fireproof. Well, just think about this. Everything were fine when I left last night, but not this morning. So unless we do have a poltergeist, who else could have switched off the freezer but your precious Ivy? Doesn't take a Miss Marple to work that out. Ooh. Rita. Mm? Do you think Derek and me give off mutually destructive vibes? Come again? Well, ever since we got married, like since we became a, a couple, we, we just seem to jump from one pan of hot water to another. I mean, disaster could be our middle name. Well, I must say, you do seem to have more than your fair share. Yeah, well, I know we both have this tendency to attract vicissitude. Oh, I wish you'd talk English. Well, adversity. Yes. So perhaps getting married has doubled that tendency, so we have twice as many downs as ups in life. Maybe she do come up with some poses. Where have you dreamt that up? I've not seen that in any of the agony columns. No, it was just during another sleepless night. Now, that's one thing Derek and me don't have in common, because he can usually sleep through flood, fire and famine. Maybe it's this present little crisis that you're in. It'll all resolve itself for the best. You see if it doesn't. Well, I've done all I can. I mean... It's not easy going to another woman and trying to persuade her that your husband's not a pervert. Oh, I can imagine. But I'm sure you have. And Mrs Shaw will drop her silly accusations and Derek won't lose his job. Do you think so? I'm sure. <sighs> but what's the next product of this malign chemistry between Derek and me going to be? That's what I ask myself. Hey, Tracy, are you happy? Of course I am, I'm on holiday. Oh, well, you enjoy it while you can, because after about 16, there's all these vicissitudes waiting to ambush you. I remember that. Toralo. Hi, Hi. Hi. 
Grandpa, have you heard about my mum? It's brilliant. Well, she's written her memoirs, my years in power on the Weatherfield Council. She's not only got a job, she's a partner. A partner? Yeah, with Phil Jennings in his new business. I've got to go. I'll see you. Uh, bye now. Yeah, do you want me to put this stuff away for you? Hang on a minute, Steve. It's all right, I know where it all goes. Uh, sit down. I want to ask you something. Yeah? I want you to do me a favour. Oh, of course I will. I want you to go back home. Why? What have I done? Nothing. It's not like I that. I don't want to go home, I've said. I know you don't, but I think you should. Well, why? Do you not want me here? Please, Steve. I like it here. I could just chuck you out, you know. Well, chuck me out, then. You and me dad, both. Look, you can't stay here forever, you know. Well, I can't see why not. We're not into having Roger the Lodger, even if it is you. You only live across the street, for goodness sake. You can pop in any time to work on the boat or play a tape or have a chat. You're always welcome. So what's the difference? There's no point upsetting everybody with just sleeping here. It's daft. Oh, so that's it. Me mum and dad have been getting at you, haven't they? Well, they don't care about them. Of course you do. Don't say that. And I'm not asking you for them anyway. I'm asking you to do it for me. Yeah, but I don't... Please. Just you're going to tell the insurance company that you saw some of the damage done? Well, of course I am. Oh, just check it. The thought of making a sly bob or two just never entered my head. No, of course it didn't. It's just that I hate waste. Oh, I know. Anyway, what we don't sell today, we can eat tonight, you and me. I thought you were taking me out for a meal tonight. Well, it depends how good a saleswoman you are, oh, isn't it? Oh, come on. Hiya, Alf. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I only spilt my Uber bag right all over my carpet. Okay. I'm only a few minutes. Mm. I think the tea must be brewed by now, Alf. What's the matter, Alf? Look, you see all this? Yeah. What's he doing out of the freezer? It's all defrosted. Defrosted? How? Somebody turned the freezer chest off last night. Well, it weren't me, if that's what you're suggesting. No, oh, well, you were the last one here. You locked up. I know I did, but I didn't touch no freezer switch. Come on, I'm positive about that. I won't be that daft. Oh, well, if Ivy said she didn't do it, we must have what? a poltergeist. After all, they are, though. I've got to say, I'm very disappointed, Ivy. Very disappointed. Oh, now, Alf, come on. Anyone can make a mistake. Especially when they're new to the job, like Ivy is. What are you going to have for your dinner? I don't know, Mum, but I'll think of something. Go to the corner shop for something. Cutting butter sauce, that's what I love. Anything you like. Right. You know, I think you've lost weight while I've been away. I thought Steve had as well. I hope he's eating properly over there. I bet she thinks a square meal's a slice of toast. <laughs> that's somebody coming in. It'll be dark, won't it? For yet another brew. Hey. Oh, can't remember ringing the rack catcher, can you, Mum? Hello, love. I'm back. So I see. Tough, because I've lent your bed to a page three girl. Shut up. Let's go and get me things. Steph throw you out, yeah. Can't stand the smell. I know what it's like. Andy. What about your resets? I'll flaming kill you. Still not decided, Mum. It's up to you. Do you mean that? Yeah. You're going to let him get away with it again? I don't believe it. Keep your nosy nose out! Mm, good smell. What's happened to the sardine sarnies? Burgers. Great. We'll be having them for tea and all. Alf's got a sale on. A sale at a grocer's? It's deep freeze, deep frosted. Well, should happen more often. So, uh, where's your toy boy? He's gone back home. How would you manage that? Let him see your tattoo. Actually, I persuaded him. It was easier than I thought it would be. I told you, you're hallucinating. Yeah, well, I hope he concentrates on cricket or whatever else young lads get up to in the summer. I never played much cricket. So has he not said why he's decided to come back yet? No, and I haven't asked him. I don't know. Just changes his mind, walks back in, eh? I don't know. Kids. 
They change gear in a flash. No sense of guilt, no sense of regret. Just leave it, Jim. He's back. That's all that matters. Do you know what gets up my nose? What? I was never a rebellious teenager. I just got on with it. Oh. I mean, it makes me think as if I'm missing out on something. I'll see you. OK, I'll see you later. Hello. Yes, Kenneth. Uh, pint, please, Beth. Drink. Drink. Still got ten minutes of my lunch break left, why not? Bye. You'll be joining a union next news. How long have you been working? A couple of days. We have our rights, you know, as business women. Get her. When are you getting your exec briefcase, kiddo? Yeah, Tracy, tell me about a new job. Did she? Partner, eh? Uh, I'm not sure in what exactly. Does Mr. Jennings know himself? No, Ken. Sorry. Mr. Jennings brings out the sarcasm in me. Excuse me, Ken. Can I have a quick word? Sorry to interrupt. You know what? It's about Steve. You know he's already ducked out of his recess. No, I didn't. Yeah, he has. I just wondered if you'd have a chat with him. Tell him how important his GCSEs are. I think he might listen to you. Oh, well, you're flattering me, but uh, yeah, OK, I'll have a go. Cheers, thanks. Right. Oh, you're only all done? You know, I am bet. I'm a latchkey adult, me. Oh, I hate going on to an empty house. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. Think of the money Ivy's coining in. What, working for Alf Roberts? I'm thinking of putting the low-pay unit onto him, I am. Give it a couple of weeks, he'll give her a rise. She'll have made herself that indispensable if I know Ivy. Mm. All right, change. Mm. Thanks very much. Excuse me. Mm, sorry. It's not going very well, you know, all this defrosted stuff. Keep telling Ivy to push him. I have been doing. You didn't mention it to that last customer. Yes, I did. Mm. Do you know what I think your trouble is, Ivy? What? I think you're finding you've got too much to think about in this shop. You know, prices, where stock is, change. It's getting you all confused, hmm? Mind you, not surprising, for goodness sake, at your age. Don't you agree, Al? I am not confused what? about anything. How do, family? How do? All right? Hi. Hang on, you're never that pleased to see me. In fact, no one's ever that pleased to see me. What's going on? Oh, hey? Hey? go on with you. You're never serious, man. <laughs> what? I don't be. I might sink into a permanent depression. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's very convenient having you all in one spot. It means I can report on how young Dave is doing in one fell swoop, doesn't it? Today's clinic bulletin reads, uh, weights 18 pounds, 2 ounces, lungs abnormal, eyesight lynx-like and hearing truly amazing. <laughs> In fact, he chucked his plastic duck about three metres today, which makes him a budding Steve Backley, according to Gail. No way! Do you know, he's very muscular for his age. Oh, muscular, another couple of months he'll be onto the ornaments and then onto wrecking the house oh. completely. <laughs> Just like the other two tried in here yesterday, <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> Is it something I said? No, no, it's just I didn't realise the kiddies were in here yesterday. Oh, yeah, Audrey had them all afternoon, eh? An act of heroism beyond the call of duty. Thanks again, Audrey. Sorry. Listen, I've got to go. I'm going to run out of nappies. Bye. See ya. Bye bye. What are you staring at, both of you? It was one of the kids did it, wasn't it? It was one of them that switched it off the freezer. How do we know that? Well, it's obvious, isn't it, if they're messing about in here? A fact that you conveniently forgot to mention. Oh, Alf! You would believe it was anybody before you'd believe it was her, wouldn't you? Huh? You... Ivy, I'm very sorry. It's quite all right, Al. Oh, drat, I've lost count again. Mavis, why don't you go home? You're neither use nor ornament when you're in that oh, nervous just... state. I keep thinking that no news is good news. Well, you've only to look at headlines to know that. Murder, rape. Eight-year-old woman robbed of her life savings. Yeah, I think Derek would have phoned if the... Hello, Mrs Shaw. Hello. Um, what can I do? Well, oh, uh... it's all right, love. Uh, I've not got my deaf aid switched on. And she's my best friend. It's about what you were saying yesterday about your husband not being, well, the sort, really, to do what he did to me. Oh, he isn't, Mrs Shaw, really he isn't. I must admit, I've never noticed he was that way inclined before. You can usually tell when a man's an animal. Oh, you can. So, I've decided, with my husband's approval, to give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh. I'll forgive and forget this time, but he's got you to thank for my change of mind. He's a very lucky man to have a wife as loyal as you. Oh, thank you. Uh, there was one other thing. Uh, yes. You know what you were saying about Mr. Wilton losing some of his power? Well, I, I don't think I, I uh, actually... What I find works wonders for my husband. A pinch of nutmeg in his rice pudding.
Oh yes, you definitely look the part. Very cool and very businesslike. Yeah, but what part? I'm still not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. All in good time. The next step's stationary. Stationary? PJ promotion stationary. And what do we do with it when we've got it? Flood the town with it. Well, a lot of the town anyway. And the message is, are you satisfied with your profile? I've never been satisfied with mine. Because if you're not, PJ Promotions can do something about it. Can we? Of course we can. Believe it. I do. I believe it. So, what am I going to do till the stationery arrives? Um, look decorative and answer the phone. Will it ring? Deirdre, talking of profiles, mine is very high in this town. It'll ring. So, what do I say when it rings? Tell whoever it is where I am and when I'll be back. I'm putting a plug for PJ Promotions. Improve your own profile. Well, I think I can manage to do that without screwing up. Just one thing. Be a bit selective with your information about my whereabouts. Selective? Well, the VAT man and the tax inspector are not really in my gang. Ah, just a man. You uh, got time for a chat? You're going to have a coke or something in my flat. I've, uh, I've got some of them. I, uh, I hear you're ducking your recess. Be mother. Not a very clever thing to do, is it, Steve? I mean, if you've done the work, you might as well sit the exam. If I've done the work? Well, you never know. You might have done enough. You might even surprise yourself. They're worth having, you know, GCSEs, particularly in the present economic climate. No, I'll see. Why not make it a more positive, I will? I mean, what's going to cost you to sit? Nothing, except the ink in your pen. I'll see. Mmm. There were a lot of prawns in that risotto. Alf should have a disaster with his freezer every day. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I shouldn't say that. You shouldn't wish bad luck onto people. It strikes out of a clear blue sky without much prompting, as we well know. Oh, we do. But have you noticed, Mavis? It doesn't have us by the throat for very long. We bounce back. <laughs> I mean, take today. This morning, all doom and gloom, Mrs. Shaw persisting with her ridiculous allegations. My job on the edge of the abyss. Tonight, Mrs. Shaw has a rush of common sense to the head. Job secure again. <laughs> Do you know what I put it down to? What? Us. Us? The fact that we're a team, presenting an irresistible force against adversity, shoulder to shoulder. Like the Spartans at Thermopylae. <laughs> We couldn't do it alone, no, could we? We'd be swamped by bad luck as individuals. But as a married couple, we're invincible. <laughs> Don't you agree? Oh, yes, Derek. Almost makes you look forward to new catastrophes to conquer. Well, huh? I don't. Huh? Uh, nothing. <laughs> what for afters? Mm, rice pudding. Fantastic. Hiya. 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 Well, I never said thank you. Thank you. Well, when I left this morning, let me stay with you. Oh, there was no need. We were only too glad to put you up. Well, I've uh, bought you a present. <sighs> you shouldn't, Steve, really. Well, it's nothing special. Thanks. Thanks very much. You do, uh, you do like chocolates, don't you? I'm a chocoholic. Des is even worse. Oh. Well, thanks again. It was a very nice thought. Nothing's changed. Oh. At home. Mum says it's up to me whether to do my resits or not, and then she goes and gets Barlow to put the pressure on, which is just the same as saying I'm not capable of making my own decisions. I'm sure she's only doing it for your own you good. You would have done that, would you, Steph? Look, Steve. You think I'm capable of making my own decisions, whether to do my resits or not? You don't look at me as a kid, do you? <sighs> I dare say you'll be glad to get home today. I know I will. Yeah, well, it has been a bit difficult, hasn't it? Look, I'm sorry, Ivy. Look, I've told you, Alf, it's all over and done with. Although... What? Well, I'm wondering if it's better I jack it in. Eh? Well, it's obvious I'm like a red rag to a bull as far as Audrey's no, concerned. No, 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 look. It was me that asked you into this shop. I want you to stop. And what I say goes in this shop. Yes, Alf. Listen, I can't stop late tonight because I promised... That's that all I'd... right. Audrey can do it. Right. Oh, no, she can't. Well, you can do one late night, can't you? No. Well, I'm telling you, you've got to do. Really? Well, I am telling you, Alf, I have had this shop, you and your little assistant, up to here today. 
I've more or less been called a liar. Nobody said any such... Anyway, you were a bit economical with the truth. Was I? But I'm now going to be economical with my presence and all because I am never, ever setting foot in this damn shop again. Oh. And you and your little assistant deserve one another. I still can't stop late tonight, Al. <sighs> it's all right, Ivy. I'll do it. It'd be better than going home anyway. <laughs> 